Today, it's your boy Copperfield Genius, and I've survived thousands and thousands of days of hardcore Minecraft, and I have compiled them all together so you can experience these epic adventures alongside me. It has been an amazing three years, and I can't thank you enough for the support. You've changed my life truly. So, without further ado, let's go. I'm going to survive 100 days on a raft in hardcore Minecraft. In this challenge, I'm surrounded by a bunch of items floating on the ocean surface, and amongst this floating loot, I'll have the chance to retrieve special items that will help me survive, like this fishing rod. So on day one, I started the day hooking and grabbing the floating items. I caught some stones, some leaves, and I also found this barrel. Now, I assume if I put this down inside it... Oh, okay. That seems like some crazy luck at the start. We've got some iron ores, iron nuggets, some food. This seems way too good to be true. Thank you, Minecraft gods. I'm going to keep the barrel here because it aesthetically improves the raft, which is pretty cool. Now it's a real raft. Also, I've noticed that the durability on this fishing rod seems to be infinite. Is it going to last me forever, which is pretty neat. There's not much else I can do right now other than just keep throwing my fishing rod into the ocean and bringing the items back into my inventory. Now, I wonder if as the days go by, the items that float improve because it looks like the spawn rate is pretty low and if I want to start building my base up, it's going to take a while. But we're in it for the long game. We don't mess around. Now, I wonder if I can actually jump in the water. Is it going to hurt me? Okay. Okay, cool. I don't die in the water. Wait, Barrel, come to me. What do you carry? Oh, let's go. Okay. Fish, duh. This is perfect. Oh, wow. Let's straight away lay down some dirt. And we'll pop a little bit of dirt here and place a sapling. Do I have enough wood to make a crafting table yet? No. Can't make any bone meal either. Let's see if we can... Is there any wood out here? Damn, no. Yeah, items are pretty scarce. Eh. I'm quickly realizing this challenge is going to be a lot harder than I anticipated. And the sun's going down. Oh, what if this drowned, bro? I'm so vulnerable. Please grow. Please. You know what would be perfect on a raft right now? A sweet hoe. Yeah, I need a hoe right now. Because then if I can hoe this up, I can plant my carrots and we'll have a sustainable source of food. <gasps> more items. Grab some more cobblestone. Hop back up on this. How much wood do I have now? Hey, we have a crafting table, but no resources to actually use you. But do not worry. I'm sure tonight things will spawn. Now, string is going to prove quite useful out here. With enough string, I can make wool. And with wool, I can make a bed. And it would be nice to sleep upon this raft. Damn, looks like our luck with the barrels has run out. Yes. Oh, a barrel. Come to me. Praise the holy barrel. Boop. What we got? Wood, string, iron. Oh, and more saplings. Well, it's safe to say I'm not going to struggle for wood at all when that grows. Speaking of growing, come on, do your thing. Okay, I think I have enough wood now to make a hose. So let's make a couple of sticks. Unos, dos, tres. Woohoo. Okay, I'll plant my two carrots and then let's plant some potatoes too. Grab that. I'm hoping by the end of this challenge that I get a lot better with this fishing rod. Is that what I think it is? It is! The holy barrel. Boop. Oh, this is perfect. Dirt is good. Hoe you up. I love my hoe. Potatoes are going to take me a lot further. Any more dirt? Oh, yes. String. <laughs> you smell that? Yep, that's not my stench from three days without showering planning this video. That, my friend, is a bed on its way. Sheesh, the progress. We'll pop this here. Let's watch the sun come up together. Look at this, guys. We're bonding. Feel that warm glow on my cheeks. Wait, hold up. I feel that warm glow on my cheeks. Let's make a shovel. Right, let's try and find ourselves some dirt. Any dirt around here? Grass, grass. Dirt's on the short side. All right, let's switch up the plans. Let's make a furnace instead. Pop you there. Put coal in you. And then get to smelting some iron. All right. Progress. Uh. Uh. Okay. Yes. Just what we needed. Right, well, first of all, let's get some sticks. Obviously, we'll grab the iron. Cobblestone pickaxe. If I can get underground somehow, that would be perfect. Damn, that tree is taking forever. What kind of sapling did I plant? Have I messed up there? Yes. Oh, let's go. All right, let's collect all this dirt. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Let me just head back to the raft real quick. Hey, the carrots are growing. Is that what I think it is? Oh, it is. As the sun sets on day two, we are rewarded with a barrel. I feel like I want to keep every barrel I collect. I feel like that would be cool. And by the end, we can see how many barrels we were gifted by the Minecraft guards. Okay, what we got? Look at this. Right, we'll put the iron in the furnace. Plant an oak sapling. I feel like oak sapling are the ones that grow the quickest. I have a bunch of oak leaves, which you can walk on. Yeah, let's just use these up. Let's surround my raft with oak leaves. There we go. You know what? Let's spend tonight just fishing. Once we have enough wood, I'll make myself a door. Then that will allow us to mine a little more 
efficiently underwater. Let's just wait for items. I spent all night sprinting in circles on my leafy padding and fishing for items. I don't know why I do this to myself. As you can see, this is a very slow and painful process. I'm also completely forgetting I can actually use this thing as an actual fishing rod. Like, I can fish. <laughs> I just completely forgot. So, we might get some different items. Let's see what we're getting. Ooh! What is this? I have never seen this in my life. What is this? What, is, what are you? Plenty fin. Can I cook you? Oh, I can. Let's find out if this thing kills me. <laughs> Anything that's green has to be poisonous. I guess we'll wait until I'm hungry and we'll chance it and munch on it. I do really need dirt though. Hold the front door. You're a dark oak sapling. You need a bunch of these next to each other for you to grow. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Hey, look at you. Didn't even have to fish for you. Another barrel. All right, what we got? Obsidian, a bunch of coal. Cool. So eventually with enough obsidian, we can head into the nether. As you can see, I have more than enough wood to make some doors now. So that is the ultimate gateway to the next step. Now, where's that ravine? Okay, I found it. Let's find that little dirt patch. Oh, get out of the water. Oh, let's go. Our first tree. I could cry. Boom. Boom. Oh, this is good. This is going to offer plenty of space to grow trees, seeds, food. Create ourselves a little air pocket and we shall shovel all of this dirt. I'm just going to keep going until my shovel breaks. Whilst I'm down here, before I head back, let me grab this iron. Although the barrels do give me this, it's just way quicker if I grab all of this myself. Come back. Hold up. Oh, I thought it was a shark then. That's a dolphin. Don't do me like that, bro. Oh, looks like there's a storm a coming. Is that a barrel? That is a barrel. We'll pop you here. Right, let's craft ourselves an axe. Grab all of this wood. You'll drop a bunch of saplings. And the cycle begins. Let's break this and extend this by quite a large amount. This is only going to be temporary. Boop, 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 boop. And place all of this. Okay, cool. Let's hoe all of this. Oh, hey, buddy. I thought you were a shark earlier. You're lucky I didn't kill you, wherever you are. Ah, oh. All right, don't make sounds for the rest of the 100 days because you get quite annoying, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> now, let's fill all this up. You've been great, but you're a little bit annoying. Yeah, I know. But please, I'm trying to I'm trying to make a video here. I'm trying to make 100 days on a raft. It's all right for you. You live here. This is hard for me. All right, let's eat this. Let's eat whatever this is. Okay, I didn't die. Cool. Let's grab these. No, bro, you're making my life harder. Bring that back to me right now, bro. No. I have loads of iron nuggets. So let's make ourselves a bunch of torches. And let's use all of the nuggets I have to make a bunch of lanterns. So we have a little light now. I think we're in a good position here. We got a bunch of trees ready to grow. We got seeds doing their thing. Oh, yes, please. I think the best next thing is to head underground and start going mining. Definitely need to craft myself a sword. I think I might make a chest piece just so it keeps me a little more protected. Grab some food. Let's go look for a cave. We'll make our way down in a little strip mine here. It's like day three. We're finally going mining. I'd feel a lot better if I had a full set of armor on right now, but it's okay. I'm a risk taker. Been a risk taker from birth. Dirt. What is this? An earthworm. Can I eat the worm? I don't know why that's the first thing I thought of, to be fair. <laughs> Not, let's put it back into the wild. It's, can I eat it? <gasps> what is this? I'm in the aether. Oh. Oh. Hold up. Anybody else see that? I think you did. You and I just saw a minecart with a chest inside. If we keep mining in this direction, I think we may head into a mine shaft. Anybody else find it weird that I have worms in my pocket right now? Nope. Just me. Okay. I'm hearing mobs. We're close. We're close, Captain. I can feel it. Come on. My coffee senses are tingling, bro. Is it above me? Oh, <gasps> what a guess. I don't know how I knew, but I just knew. Oh, no, I forgot to make a shield. Bro, it, it literally occurred to me in that split second. Let's make ourselves a shield. Cool. Can I eat the worm? Oh, I can. I can eat the worm. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, bro, what did I expect? Right, we learned a valuable lesson today, guys. Don't eat worms. Let's see what we can find. Oh, some blue lapis. We'll grab this coal. All right, let's go. Look at you. We got diamonds, guys. We got diamonds. Bro's lagging. I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to make it quick. What we got in here, then? Gunpowder's always great to have. Name tag, in case we get a villager. Good stuff. Munch on my cooked salmon. All right, let's... Uh... Huh! Okay, I'm not going to need dirt, like, ever again. Oh! Oh! Today's a good day. Bro, you can't get me in, a, in any better mood right now. Six diamonds. And all this dirt. Ain't nothing bringing this kid down. I'm in a good mood. Oh, and more worms. Diamonds. Ores. Worms, what a day. Grab this redstone. Are you, are you joking me right now? This is the most, oh, this has to be a joke. 
This is insane luck. 12 diamonds. It's only a mine shaft, bro. This place is like a treasure vault, bro. All right, I think we're done here. Let's hop back down here and let's head back up to the raft. Uh, we'll navigate this maze-like strip mine. Eh, 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 eh. And look at that. The trees are growing. It's a very busy raft right now. <laughs> All right, let me break down my next steps for you. I'm going to be collecting as much wood as I humanly possibly can. This will allow me to do two things. Firstly, it will allow me to start extending my raft. And secondly, I'll finally get to build a mob farm. Building a mob farm is an absolute necessity when it comes to challenges like this because it gives me access to a bunch of items. And it saves me time going mining to grab all of the items individually. Whilst I extend the raft on that side, let's plant a bunch of dirt this side and just fill it with trees because the more wood, the better. Let's make this raft nice and big. I don't know how this is going to look. I want to make sure that the original raft stays like a hub for the whole 100 days. I don't know how big I'm going to make this. Now I've squared it off, I kind of want to make it look sort of circular. So from this platform, you'll be able to go in either direction and it will lead you to, I guess, a place of importance, whether it's an enchantment table or storage room, mob farm. I want it all, bro. Oh, no. Oh, you're going to be annoying. I really don't want to be dealing with these guys, so I'm going to bed. All right, let's go ahead and make a shovel and finish off this area for like the millionth time let me get a little more wood all right let's use this wood to start working on the build as you can see i've kind of hit a bit of a wall i've run out of building materials the trees aren't growing it's late at night i don't know what to do with myself so i think i'm just going to grab a bunch of sand i think a couple stacks will be more than enough we definitely need to build a mob farm because the bone mill that i'll get from the skeletons in there are going to speed up the process of growing trees big time all right let's turn this sand into glass uh do i have coal yes i have plenty of coal at this point i feel like i should have a counter for the amount of wood i've grabbed let's finish off the first floor on this tower it's just looking better than i anticipated all right let's go ahead and use this glass to fill in the floor then you know what i'm gonna chuck a few lanterns in here for some light all right let's make some ladders pop these here i have loads of string right yeah let's make a bed real quick pop this here all right let's get the second floor finished bro this is a disgusting amount of saplings oh my god it feels so illegal to put them this close to each other <laughs> Oh, God. All right, let's finish up grabbing all this wood, and then we'll work on building the second floor. I'm going to build it about four blocks high because I don't want it to be huge. All right, so second floor done. I'm just missing a roof. Let's make some shears. Let's grab all of this. I'm going to use all these leaves to sort of create a treehouse tower look. I think it'll look really cool. This is kind of cool because the items in the ocean are like spawning underneath my house. I can visibly see the items, so I can decide whether I actually want them or not. I think this looks pretty cool. Before you guys start kicking off, he's cheating! I got these iron ores in a barrel. Let's just put these here temporarily. I will keep them though, like I promised. Let's make a bunch of furnaces. Let's make a sort of kitchen area here. So we have a bunch of furnaces. Oh, my hoe! Yo, baby, I'm so sorry for disrespecting you. Let's turn to my farm. Let's cook the potatoes up. Let's move on to our next job and start working on the mob farm. Oh, barrel. I need stacks and stacks and stacks of materials, so let's go ahead and grab those. Also, I'll definitely be investigating whatever this is later. I'm pretty sure after this, I won't be needing to chop any trees down whatsoever. <laughs> All right, I only need a few more trap doors. Oh, I'm mad hungry. Damn, this weather ain't picking up. Let's put a couple of barrels here, get to them quickly. I can carry the majority of it. It's just a few things I need to put back. Uh, we want to put two double chests down. want to cover those in hoppers. Yeah, nice. Then I've got to cover these with slabs. And then you break this block. Yeah, nice. And then we just create the giant tube that the mobs fall down. So we just need to build up 21 more times. So it makes a total of 22 high. All right, let's go ahead and start working on the base of the entire mob farm where the mobs will spawn. Oh, wow, look how beautiful the ocean looks with the shader pack. Oh, I can't wait to make a boat and get out into that. I still want to know what you are. All right, now the base is done. Let's go and slap a roof on this bad boy. Last thing I need whilst using this mob farm is for a creeper to fall down, explode, and kill me. So let's cover the roof in slabs so it stops the mobs from spawning. We need these guys in the giant mob cage, not outside of it. We have mobs. Oh, we have bones. Oh. We get bone meal from that. I mean, it's only two, but still, it's a star. And another skelly. Wait, where is my shield? You can stay down there. I, I guess you could say you can stay down here and drown... <laughs> Let me feast upon my potat. I came back down here for slaps. Boom, 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 boom. Let me hear you say way ho. <laughs> Let's start slapping down these trap doors so mobs can fall down them. Then we just slap some water in here and this will push the mobs down into the hole. 
What's happened there? Why has that happened? I'm angry at myself. We should be back in the game, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I had too much water. That's why I had four. I'm swapping this wood out for glass blocks because I want to be able to see through here and see if a zombie villager has spawned because, of course, we want villagers on this raft. All right, after all that, let's get some sleep. Look at this. I see mobs. Oh, look at this, guys. Hey, guys. Boom. Bones already. That's what we love to see. Some gunpowder. Oh, perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Obviously, the most efficient way is just to leave it for a bit and the mobs can stack and then I'll get a bunch of XP and items rather than just sitting there all day. Let's get on to more pressing matters. I mean, I don't know if, if there are any pressing matters. I'm on a raft with literally nothing else to do. However, we got to find a way to get to the stronghold and kill the ender dragon. So for that, my friends, I think it's time we prep for the nether. All right, how much obsidian do we actually have at the moment? Three. We can grab some more of these from the barrels. I still have a bunch of building blocks left over from the farm. Don't need the ladders, don't need the stairs, don't need the trapdoors, keep a water bucket. I'm hungry again. Oh, I'm so dumb. I've wasted all my iron making lanterns when I should have made a full set of iron armor. Let's make some trousers and a helmet. Oh, oh, more obsidian. Any barrels under here? Nope. No barrels spawning. Right, let's hope we get a bunch of barrels with a bunch of obsidian in. Maybe removing the items makes space for more to spawn. That would make sense to me. But then again, most things that make sense to me don't make sense at all. How am I not reaching that? Bro, come on. Barrels seem very, very scarce, so it doesn't leave me much choice. Let's head underground and find a lava pool. Grab a bunch of obsidian. Oh, grab some coal while we're here. We were running a little low back on the raft, so it's good to top resources up. A little more iron. Hello, mate. I have such a temptation to remove the pearl from your body, but I'll spare you this once. I seem to have hit the gold mine by just mining straight down. I'm in disbelief. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Too close, too close. Don't like that. Looks like we're visiting the nether sooner than I expected. All right, let's go. Oh, oh my God. What am I doing? My pinky finger slipped. <laughs> oh, get in the water, get in the water. I'm going to go for 20 pieces of obsidian because that's way more than I need and I don't really want to be coming back. I have spotted diamonds whilst I was mining the obsidian, so... Come to Pappy. All right, before I head back and head into the nether... Oh, look at that. Two diamonds over there. I'm seeing a bunch of diamonds over here. Look, I can't go back just yet. All right. Oh, I messed up. I, I messed up big time. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh my God. Oh, God. you know, you're just so stressed. You can't think of words. Let's go back and get those diamonds. Why am I scared? I play this game for a living. Ah! Of all the mobs in this game, skeletons are the worst. If you agree with me, comment. Let's get up to these diamonds. Hey. And the other one. That is so many creepers. Oh my goodness. Nightmare fuel, bro. Oh. Ah! No, not my diamonds. Oh, that was too close for comfort. Let me just grab all these diamonds. Right, let's head back and build ourselves a nether portal. Let's use the diamonds we have collected to make a new axe. Let's build this. One, two, three, four, ten, eleven, twelve. This might look exceptional or absolute dog sh Now let's add the nether portal. Okay, it kind of looks good. It just needs a roof on it. I'm thinking... We <gasps> oh! Yeah, that's cute. Barrel. Let's give this a go. <gasps> ah, okay. All right, well, let's put some other random trees at the back here. Hopefully we get a tall one. Oh, <gasps> that's huge. All right, gravel, 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 gravel. Wonderful. I knew I'd find you. I don't need a diamond shovel. We ain't about that. We live a humble life. Iron shovel. Grab all of this. Turn you on. Lovely. So mobs shouldn't spawn because I covered it in lanterns. All right. Let's get a little more prepared. I mean, diamond armor, diamond weapons. Y'all know the deal. Ooh. Barrel. I got you, buddy. Okay. So now we have a full armor set. And I have enough diamonds to make a diamond sword, which is what we need. Oh, you know what I will do because I can't be bothered with the grief. I need to use that gold to make myself just literally a pair of boots because I don't want to have piglins attacking me. And while we wait for that to do its thing, let's just grab a bunch of food. Hopefully we get a good spawn. Sweet. Well, it's obligatory that we need to grab ourselves some nether quartz while we're here. I guess I'll just kind of like strip mine this way. I can hear little piggy noises. Ah, well, let's dispose of you. So squeaky. 
Right, let's focus up. We gotta find ourselves a fortress. And I'm not seeing one in my vicinity. We're on the same team, bro. I've got gold on. I got the Versace, bro. Let's try not to fall in the lava pit. Let me guys fill you in on the beef. This little piggy went to the wrong market. I'll tell you that now. I am deep in this forest. Hold up. Yeah, I see nether brick. Let's get across here. I'm sticking to treetops because the hoglins will attack me and it stresses me out. My doctor says I got to keep my blood pressure down, so not to do anything that's going to make me like sort of panic. <gasps> We're in. Found ourselves the blaze spawner. Let's go. All right, grab the blaze rod. You don't scare me. All right, we need to find ourselves some nether wall and then I'm pretty much done with this fortress. Let's check all the way down here. Mm, yeah, this fortress is tiny. There's not even any wither skeletons, you know? It's not even like I can use this place to start gathering heads ready for the wither. This is the most useless fortress I've ever set foot in. We gotta get out of Dodge. At least we have blaze rods, so we haven't got to kick around spawners. I've been walking for so long, bro. I cannot find a single th- What's that? Oh, it's a bastion. That's not a fortress, it's a bastion. I mean, I guess we don't have a choice. Beats walking on netherrack for like another hour. Let's crack into this bad boy. Please don't fall, please don't fall, please don't fall. All right, let's break our way in. Let's get rid of these guys. Let's get ourselves into the middle. So I've created this barrier because the magma blocks were like jumping up and I don't want the piglins hitting me with their crossbows. These guys pack a punch, so I have to be as careful as possible. There we go. Is that all of them? All right, now we're talking. We got some good loot. Ooh, I didn't even notice that. We got another ingot. And of course, we have all of this gold to grab. You know what? Let's eat this pork chop. A little bit more substance to it. A little bit more spice. Why are these guys going crazy for? Oh, we have loot. What do we got? Ancient debris. Yes, please. All right, let's get out of here. Let's find that fortress, wherever it is. I have not seen a fortress for a very long time. All I need it for is nether wall. If even a chest somewhere could just give it to me, that would be fantastic. There we go. All right, let's crack into this bad boy. I already have the blaze rod. I just need the nether wall. Oh, of course, I'm not going to pass up any loot. All right, now we're talking. Here's the room that I care about. All right, let's get out of here. Where's all of the endermen? I need the pearls. They spawn in these biomes, right? Oh, there's one. I heard him teleport. There he is. <gasps> My shield broke. <laughs> I do not want to be out here with no shield. You know what? I have so many materials in my inventory. Let me store everything back at home on the raft because I'm sick and tired of having to ration everything. Right, let's make a boat. We'll make another shield. And now we can finally grab ourselves some pearls. I've done what needs to be done. Without their sacrifice, I would have never been able to survive on my raft. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. Let's go back home and I'll cry myself to sleep with guilt. All right, cool beans. All right, let's stick all the important things in this chest by my bed. So we have the blaze rod, all the pearls we collected. That's pretty much it, isn't it, for the ender dragon. I'll also grab the ancient debris and netherite put it in there. I don't know what to make. Do I make a netherite pickaxe, netherite sword? I'll think about it. In the meantime, though, let's sort all of this out. Before killing the ender dragon, I just want to take this day to improve the raft. We'll grab these last few logs, pick up this sapling, and start making some improvements. First of all, let's make these bridges, actual bridges with, you know, light and prevention from falling into the ocean. I'll even do it for the mob farm, too. Sheesh, look at the amount of mobs in the mob farm. I want all of your XP, thank you. All right, now I'm done with the raft improvements. I'm finally gonna jump in this boat and go check this thing out. I put it off for too long, let's see what we got. Hopefully some good loot. It is literally, it's nothing. It's, it's literally nothing. Absolutely pointless. Not completely pointless though, as I think, oh, hey, okay. My bad, my bad. I almost left then. <laughs> okay, uh. Coal, axe, and a fishing rod. Wow, amazing loot. I need like a ton of glass for an idea back on the raft, so let's just take all this sand. Well, I'm already in the boat and out at sea, so I may as well spend the rest of day 30 exploring the ocean. Although right now, it's not looking like there's anything out here. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. There's land? Slap my cheeks and call me Uncle Bill. It's a sandy hill. I can get so much glass out of this. Oh, let me break this block. All right, some wheat. Coal. Oh, is that oh, sugar cane? Let's grab this. Let's explore around here just a little longer, then we'll head back. Looks like we got a shipwreck over there. That's a full ship. That ain't even wrecked. Let's have a look. Moss block. Oh, bamboo. Let's go. Carrots, paper. Damn. Okay. This is really, really good loot. Is that it? Is it just the one chest? Let's have a look around. Oh, nope. There's more loot in here. Let's go. Oh. Lots of iron, blue lapis, and a bottle of enchanting, which I'll just throw down. There has to be something else, surely. What is that? Let's make a run for that, eh? More sugar cane? Now, what on earth is this? <gasps> is that a villager? That's a villager, bro. What? 
Two villagers. What? TNT, fire charges, apples? Very random. That's cool, though. Can I take this? Let's grab all these fish bones because they look cool. <laughs> I have absolutely zero way of getting you back home because the boat's all the way over there and it almost feels like cheating. I gotta do this the right way, guys. I gotta transform a zombie villager. I'll leave you two be. Pleasure doing business with you fellas. Yo, the sun's rising. We've been out here for quite a while. There's my trusty little boat. All right, let's get back to the raft. Home, sweet, floaty home. All right, whilst I tend to other jobs, let's get to work putting all this sand in the furnaces and making a bunch of glass. No way. I was literally just about to say that seeing those villagers makes me want a villager. So I was going to sit and wait for a zombie villager, but look at the lot that we have. Do I, I'm just going to break the hopper. Oh, okay, the creepers, the creepers have also escaped. Perfect. And he has a hat on as well. So he's not going to burn in the sun either. Hold up, he's burning in the sun. Quick, come this way, come this way. Look what look what's happened here. Place my hopper back on there. All right, repair job done. I got so excited. <laughs> Oh, you can't help but laugh in these situations, you know what I mean? Let's sit here and wait for a zombie villager and transform him. Now, you're probably wondering why I haven't gone to the stronghold yet, even though I have everything I need. But I just really want a villager on my raft, bro. I want to go and take on the ender dragon, knowing that there's somebody here to look after things in case I don't make it. You know, the mob spawns dried up, bro. Wow. What can we do while we wait? Let's do something with this. As you notice, I have random barrels just darted everywhere. Zombie villager? Nope. Let's get rid of all of this. All right, now all of the dirt is removed. Let's just pick up the loose pieces. Look at the amount of saplings we have. I am never, ever, ever going to run out of wood on this raft. All right, let's get this finished. Let's keep the circular theme, and I also have to make sure there's space for sugarcane. Look how beautiful those fish are. They glow. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted, but look at you. Can I capture them? Oh, I can. I'm keeping you. I have a lot more dirt than I thought from all the barrels I'd collected so far. Plus everything that I had shoveled up from the mine shaft. Plant all this sugar cane down. Plant down a couple of bamboo. Now let's just build a wall around this thing. Let's use a mixture of wood, cobblestone, logs. As you can see, I use the fish burns. Let's get all this sorted and we'll hoe this last chunk. Now, of course, we'll just plant our food. Still waiting on that villager. It's not looking hopeful, but still we have much work to do. I have run into a bit of an issue though. I don't have any trees now except that one. So I think we should probably build a tree farm, otherwise I'm not going to have any wood. Let's start placing the dirt where I'll place the saplings. And let me grab some of this bamboo and add some decoration around this tree farm. Let's grab this bone block, turn it into bone meal, and grow these trees. Oh, okay, sugarcane's growing a little bit quicker than we expected, so let's get all of this down. So we're back in the game when it comes to wood. Let's check on our mob farm. Hold up. <gasps> That's a zombie villager. It is, it is, it is a zombie villager. Okay, we gotta play this cool. This time, I'm gonna build myself some shade. I'm gonna build a boat. Let's just, <laughs> let's just break this. I only need a few more blocks. So if I kill all the mobs and leave... Yes, okay, this is working perfectly. I kill all of them, leave the villagers alive. <gasps> no! Are you joking? What? You saw what I saw, right? Let's get this guy out of here before anything else spawns. I can't believe that. Over here, bro. Yes, get in that. Yes. All right, good. Let's patch this up. There was two of you. There was two of you. I literally had the best luck on the planet. Minecraft did me dirty. I know for sure I have a name tag. Let's grab enough iron to make an anvil. These big old caves got plenty of ores. You stole my iron from me. I'll take back what's rightfully mine. Thank you. Let's shove all of this iron inside the furnace. I'll take a quick sip of my coffee whilst we wait for this last few pieces of iron to cook up. Ooh. I love it. I love it. I didn't call myself coffee fueled for no reason. I'd be needing that. I'd be needing that coffee to keep me fueled up. If I did a blood test, I'm pretty sure I'd be 80% caffeine. And it's all YouTube's fault. <laughs> Let's grab this iron, make some iron blocks. Uh, that's it, right? How do you make an anvil? It's not like I'm a Minecraft YouTuber or anything. With enough research, I realized I was doing it right. I was just doing it upside down, all right? Give me a break. Slap this down. Now, what do I call this guy? Wilson, because he's the only thing I have with me on this raft. If you get the reference, 
Fingers crossed I don't get sued. I'm coming, Wilson. Yo, Wilson, look at me. Let's get you in a house, bro. Let's grab some wood. And then I think I'm gonna build Wilson's home right here. Let's get to work. Been a while since I pulled out the old fishing rod. Let's clear this area. First of all, let's get the foundations nice and solid. I laid down four points. At least that gives us a good canvas to work from. <laughs> Bloop, build up. Obviously, it's going to be connected to the rest of my raft, but I kind of want it to be like an independent, like, lodge house where the villagers can live in. Now, we just need to fill in this square. All right, now that this has been filled in, I want to have two levels to it. So, let's say from here you climb up, and then the second level of the floor goes here. I can't believe I'm already running low on wood. That's all I've used on this raft is just so much wood. Yeah, I think we're making a good start. Wilson's going to love this. Oh, wow. I thought I'd slept. Boys, I'm well-rested. I'm a well-rested individual. Why are you coming at me, bro? Oh, just you wait until you hear from my lawyer. Well, let me kill you because you dropped phantom membrane, and I'm a little bit more equipped to take you boys on now, so... Boop, 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 boop. Triple kill. Let's jump into bed so I haven't got to deal with them. Make a bunch more slabs and carry on. Let's get this second floor finished. All right, second floor done. So now I'm thinking we build the actual house here. I always build four up. Three, four. Let's join these so the foundations of the house. <gasps> I'm out of logs. Let me grab this. <laughs> Look how bad it looks at the moment. <laughs> oh no, I really hope I can turn this around. <laughs> oh no. Day 38, let's get this finished. Let's fill in these walls. And then what if we turn these into strip wood? Yeah, that looks cool. And then fill this in. I'm pretty sure I have loads of glass in a barrel back in the main house. So let's make 32 panes. Let's fill in the windows with glass panes. Oh, Wilson's gonna love this. Nice and cozy. It's coming together. Now my least favorite part of any build, the roof because I'm terrible at building roofs. All right, it's day 40. The build's almost done. I think this looks pretty good. There's just a few things I wanna add, like decorations, so we'll go ahead and do that. I have a plant pot, and then I could put maybe like a leaf there. That looks weird, but good at the same time. And then of course, we can add like a few leafy additions. Makes it look nice. I wanna add somewhere I can leave my boat, you know? Like a mini docks or something. <gasps> Is that a barrel? That's a barrel. I haven't seen a barrel in a hot minute. We'll make a bunch of lanterns. And we'll hang one here, one here, a couple on the corners up here, and maybe two on the edge here. Oh, and I have a spare one. Let's put that there. Let's build a bridge right here. I'm terrible at building bridges. Here we go. This looks like I planned it. I didn't. I just kept going and going until I thought it looked good. Like, look, this doesn't even match. But I think that's cool. It's rustic. It's 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 rafty, you know? <laughs> look, come on. I think this is going to be sick. Wilson's going to love this place. Right, now the beds. Let's, let's just make as many beds as we can. Three beds. More than enough. Uh, we'll stick a lantern in here for light. And let's make a little sign. Hmm, I don't know what to name this place. I'll leave it up to you guys. You guys comment below. And then if the video pops off, I'll do another 100 days. And I'll switch out this sign for one lucky winner down in the comments below. So get to commenting. Hello there. Now, of course, all we need to do is make ourselves a brewing stand. Place it over here by the villagers, I think, is a good place for it. Make some glass bottles. Get some blaze powder. Craft myself a golden apple. Brown mushroom. Nether wart. Ooh, raw pork chop. Yes, please. I just need a spider eye, which I don't think I have. Let's see if the mob farm has a spider eye in it. Hello, lonely creeper. Goodbye, lonely creeper. Oh, hey, Wilson. Uh, nope, no spider eye in there. Damn. We're gonna have to get ourselves a spider eye. I'm sure we'll find a spider down here. Hey, yo, found one. Let's go. Oh, two. Ah. I was not expecting two of you. Hey! Oh! You couldn't ask for better luck than that. Right, let's get out of here. Can't we just talk this out, guys? Okay, fine. Now, the final ingredient we need is a sugar cane for a little sugar. Lovely, jubbly. So let's go ahead and ferment that spider eye. Boom, boom, boom. Easy lemons. And then all we gotta do is place the water bottles here, crack some blaze powder in, and then don't I just do this? Hey, okay. And then we just add some gunpowder, make it splash potion of weakness, and then we can finally save this guy. Let's build some shade in case the sun comes up and he's still turning. Let's do this, Wilson. We'll break this. Ow, ow. Damn, Wilson, you do some damage. Slide in here, splash you. 
and start the process. Cool. We got there in the end. <laughs> I've decided Wilson will be a farmer. And then he could do me some pretty sweet deals with emeralds. And then when I get another villager, I'll probably make him mending. I would really like the book of mending. That would be nice. Let's grab some food. Munch, 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 munch. Then grab the ender pearls. And I think it's time we find that stronghold. I don't know how many eyes I'm going to need, so should we just take 10? Do you think 10 will be enough? Hanging in there, Wilson. I was just about to leave. Right, come with me, Wilson. Wilson, come with me. There's a bed up here. Wilson, Wilson, this way. Yes. Jump, Wilson. What's this guy doing? No, this way, bro. Is this guy actually for real? He's for real, isn't he? Yep, okay. You want to go this way? We'll push you this way. I don't need this right now, Wilson. You can't have the main house if that's what you think you're going to do. Just went to barrels, give jobs. That, that That's not a thing. You can't just make up your own job, Wilson. I'm going to have to literally drag him up there, aren't I? I have an idea. <laughs> it's a really stupid one, but we're going to give it a go. Let's break all of this. This guy. What is your obsession with barrels? Leave the barrels alone. This way. Oh, this guy is a barrel addict. I'm going to have to break all the barrels. This guy wants to do everything but go into that house. I'm so confused. There's three beds. Three unbelievably comfy beds. I want to go and kill the ender dragon. Get in this boat. Now there's no way this guy's getting out. Now this way, bro. Now what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In there, in there. Yes! Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Job assigned. Bed slept in. All right, now we can go to the stronghold. What do we need to fight the dragon? We have a shield. Armor. Check. A few ender pearls. A water bucket. Slow falling potions. Just because when the dragon hits me into the air, it's just nice knowing that you're gonna slowly fall back to the ground. I'm pretty sure if you put that with redstone, it makes them longer. Yeah, okay, yeah. The very last thing we're gonna need is arrows. So let's grab what the mob farm has. We'll hang around the mob farm for just a little bit as it's the quickest way to get arrows right now. All right, which way are we going? Oh, this way. Okay, where'd it go? Oh, there it went. Bro, what are you doing? Jump up then. So stupid. What are you doing? Oh, this guy just really doesn't like his home. He's a grown man. He can do what he wants. But when I come home after I've killed the dragon, I definitely got to make sure that no villager can escape. <laughs> All right. Damn, look at the progress we've made. That actually looks good from this angle. Let's go and kill the ender dragon. Still heading in the right direction. That's good. Okay, so it's sending me this way. Hey, look, it's another one of those weird structures. Hey, guys. Hang on. I might be able to sneak you on this boat, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking them home with me. I'll take at least one of them, and then that means we'll have two villagers so we can start breeding. Where are we going? This way? Okay. Boop. Is it around here then? Oh, no, it's this way. Okay. Where did that pearl go? Oh, no. They must be... Oh, 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 okay. So they were flying behind me. Is this where the stronghold is? Oh, hey, buddy. Where's my shield? There it is. Yo. Obviously, I'm not going to turn down ores while I'm down here. Does this go any deeper? Oh, it does. You know what? Let's just start digging straight down here, which I know is kind of illegal, but I want to get this ender dragon out the way so I can get back and finish up my raft because I have a cool idea for a build with the egg, like a fish tank styled build. And you know those really nice glowy fish? Yeah, I'm going to use them. Well, I only have one at the moment, but I'm sure more will spawn. <laughs> hey, okay. That is not where I expected it to be. <laughs> it's a very cursed stronghold, but we're in nonetheless. That's all that matters. Let's try and find that li- <gasps> Is that a library? <gasps> oh, yes, yes, yes. This stronghold is really messed up. Oh, let's go. Gotta love the library. Let's grab a bunch of this so when we make an enchantment table, when we get back, we can get that bad boy to level 30. This is really handy as it's really hard to get leather when you're on a raft. So thank you, stronghold. You're coming in clutch. I don't need to take every single bookshelf, but I'll take enough. All right, now we just need to find the portal, wherever it is. More iron doors and another library. Okay, let's keep searching. I hear a little silverfish. Hello, guys. Wait. Hey, there you are. Goodbye. I have the perfect amount of ice. No, no, you're joking, bro. How have I done that? There's absolutely no way that's happened. It's got to be up here somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. That was close. Oh, wow. Only that could have happened to me. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Okay, don't misclick. There we go. Let's go kill ourselves a dragon. Ooh, I'm in a box. I'm in a box. Which way do I go? All of my items are running on such low durability. Bro's playing it risky. Hey, guys. I didn't even look at you, bro. I didn't even look at you. Jump scare alert. Right. Get rid of that one. Drink up the slow falling. Eat the food. Good vantage point. Pop some of these off. My aim has to be dead on because I don't have infinity on my bow. Ah! I can get these, surely. Yep. And another one. 
Right, now we can take out the last crystal. I should be able to reach it from underneath this corner, right? Right, now we just have to kill the dragon. Drink up some more slow falling. Come down. Yes, yes, there we go. I'm confused. What's happening there? Why is my dragon doing that? Earth to Minecraft, what is happening? What the? I genuinely don't know what to do. What is happening? The... The portal has appeared. There's a way to explore the end, but the dragon's gone. I don't know if anyone else has had this problem, and I don't know if it's because the, like, a mod pack is clashing, or it's the map, but I'd rather just be completely open with you guys and transparent. Honesty is the only way forward, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, I have no clue what has happened. <laughs> Okay, I don't even get any XP out of this. I've gained nothing from this. You saw that, right? She just, the dragon just kept flying up and up and up and then just, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I can't give you the dragon fight that you wanted. No XP, no egg. We have loads of work to do on the raft, so we'll just carry on with what needs to be done. Where's Wilson? Oh no. Wilson? Oh no. He's gone. No, 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 this can't be. This is some seriously back-to-back -back bad luck. Well, I guess what we can do now to cheer ourselves up is make an enchantment table. So huh. What? Yay! <laughs> Boom. Wilson is not going anywhere. Let's keep him safe in that. That's so... Unless he was, like, around here or something? I don't know. First the ender dragon, now this. Right, let's get to work on building an enchantment table. First of all, we'll actually craft the enchantment table. And then we'll grab a bunch of wood. I'll also make the bookshelves in advance, so I don't have to worry about those later. That should be more than enough, I think. 16? Wow, well, we can always make more if we need to. We definitely need to build something better for storage. But in the meantime, let's crack on with the enchantment table build. Make you face me. Break you. Strip you. Grab these slabs. Strip you. All right, cool. I don't know why that bridge is so different to this bridge. I just felt like doing something a little different. In hindsight, I'm just going to stick to my... Uh, <laughs> My original idea, because I think that bridge is just a little bit too crazy and a little bit heavy on the resources. Now, I don't want this bridge to be too long. Place these logs. Strip those. We build out this way. We could almost connect it with the tree farm. That could work. That'll do. That's as far out as I'm going to go this side. I'm liking this now because... We've been very heavy on the builds this side, but there hasn't really been much going on over here. So I think this is just what we've needed. We'll build out over here. I don't want to go too far out, but I want to make it nice and round. Yeah, this is looking good. This is looking good. I reckon about this far. Now, it may not be even, but I think that's more than enough space for an enchantment table. And then, I don't know, space for an armor stand or something. I don't know. <laughs> Let's get this filled in. All right, now I want to build a roof on this thing. So... These are in line. I just need to do one more pillar. I'm going to leave the sides open. I kind of just only fence it in. I think it'll look really nice. So let's get this roof finished. All right, let's light this place up. Slap some fences down. I don't know whether to just keep that open because it looks so nice. You can watch the sunset from here. That is awesome. Okay, and now what I'll do is I'll throw down these bookshelves. Um, I don't know where the best place for it is. They have to be in a specific order, don't they, for it to work. So let's make a quick crafting table. Slap that down. Let's just make as many bookcases as we can. Five. Let's grab some blue lapis from these barrels so we can at least test to see what level the enchantment table is. That's not going to work, is it? Let's redo this. All right, let's see how this works. All right, so if I place this last one here and then check to see... All right, finally. Sheesh, that took way too long. Okay, a level 13 enchantment table. Cool, we'll add some bushy leaves around it. Nature, man. Chuck a couple of lanterns in there. I have loads of books and wood, so I can get away with throwing a couple more bookcases in there. Even though they'll only be serving the purpose of being aesthetically pleasing. I don't see a problem with that. There we go. Make it a bit more bushy over here. I'm liking that. Let's make some trap doors. We can make a couple of makeshift benches here. Look like that. Yeah. We'll stick down a random fence post and a pressure plate. That looks like a table, right? And then we'll add like a chair here. Cool. It's all coming together. I like that. We'll think of something to do over here. Let's make a few chests because it's always handy. Oh, that works perfectly. Stick a double chest here and another chair so I can sit out here and do some fishing. Let's turn this chest around. It makes more sense to be facing the ocean. No. There we go. Is that going to look weird? I don't think so. I think that could look quite good. It's art, bro. Don't argue with art. I say we're done. Look at that. That's cool. 
I think the last thing it's missing is maybe like a just a simple wall. We'll make it out of log. You can see how my mind works when it comes to Minecraft building. It's just do whatever I think looks cool. That looks cool. Oh, I'm gonna drown. Ah! All right. Cool, so enchantment table section complete. I'm also joining these two bridges together. I was getting so tired of having to keep walking around everything where I, I can just cut through here. I'll probably do the same on the other sides too. <laughs> we'll improve on this a little bit later. Ooh, that's satisfying. You know, even though we didn't get the XP from the dragon, I'm getting plenty of XP from this, so it's not all bad news. Let's get some sleep. All right, what to do on day 52? Yep, you guessed it. We're gonna enchant my stuff. Let's make a grindstone. That way we can disenchant our items and we'll head back over to the enchantment table and place all of this stuff down. Let's put the amble here. We'll put the stone cutter here. Oh, sorry, that's the grindstone, my bad. Let's grab my armor. Hopefully we get some decent enchants. Let's enchant. Uh, chest plate. All right, that's not bad. What are we getting on the pickaxe? Ooh, efficiency, fortune three, and I'm breaking three. That is a amazing pickaxe. Respiration, that's perfect for when you're living out in the ocean. Hold up. Let's go get some XP from the mob farm. All right, that should be enough. So let's pick up where we left off. Let's enchant the rest of my armor. Protection, I'll take that. And the boots. Hey, protection. Oh, and depth strider. And then who really cares about the axe? Oh, silk touch. I mean, I can't complain. It's good to have something in your inventory that has silk touch. Right on. Oh, wait. Right on. Next step is to make a lectern and pop it down here. Now we just need another villager so we can get the Book of Mending. I'll sell you potatoes for emeralds, and then I'll have enough to buy the Book of Mending off your buddy. But we gotta get you a buddy first. And rather than wait for a zombie villager, let's craft a boat and head out to where that stronghold was, because there was a villager there. If you've enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. We are a close. It was just around here somewhere. All right, we're here. This feels so wrong, but I really need another villager, and this seems like the easiest way to get them. Bro, get in my boat. Why is this proving to be so difficult? It's never been this hard. There we go. All right, we got him. All right, home sweet home. I'm hoping you're going to be a little easier to deal with than Wilson was. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare. No, 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 no. If I gotta break the door, I think I have to break the door. Wonderful. And then what do you sell me? I was going to keep doing this until we get mending. Bro's offering every book known to man, apart from the one I want. Come on, bro, you got this. Come on, you got this. Nope. All right, let's see. Yay! Finally! I need you to sell me carrots, Wilson. Okay, carrots. Perfect. So we got carrots for emeralds. Emeralds to buy the mending. Here's a bunch of carrots. Make another baby. Be useful for once. I'm gonna go get some carrots so I can get some emeralds. All right, plenty of carrots. Oh, you know what I do need to grab is the books from the enchantment table area. I'm so chuffed with how this raft is turning out. We still have a little bit of work to do. Oh, sorry, I don't want to wake you up. Whoa, not in front of me, boys. Come on. Tell me when you're done. <laughs> Welcome to the family, buddy. Good job, Wilson. Let's sell some carrots for some emeralds. Keep going. Oh, nearly there. We'll buy the Book of Mending off of you. Let's put my pickaxe with the Book of Mending, and we'll call it something completely original. There we go. Boom. We'll eventually get Mending on all of this. Let's go into the Nether, grab a bunch of Nether Quartz so we can get XP, because it's a little bit quicker than the Mob Farm. And while we're in here, we shall find that fortress again and get ourselves some Wither Skulls so we can kill the Wither and make a beacon. Lots of jobs on the checklist. First of all, let's grab all this Nether Quartz. Get that XP, boy. Boop, boop, boop. I don't have any gold boots. We must sneak around these guys. Last thing I need is being attacked by a group of piglins. And not because I'm scared or anything. Look, I'm not trapped in the nether with them. They're trapped in the nether with me. Nah, I'm kidding. They terrify me. With this shader pack, this wood honestly looks the bee's knees. Yo, Chad, is this real? All right, all right, all right, all right. I feel uncomfortable eating pork chop in front of these zombified piglins. When that green bar below that pickaxe has disappeared, we'll head over to the fortress. Oh, there's a bunch of XP there. Oh, Lord, this is bright. This shader pack got me blind right now. I feel like I'm in an Oppenheimer, bro. Uh, oh, my eyes. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's a nice big vein. 
And there we go. Pickaxe is back in action. Nothing else is almost on its way out. We'll grab some diamonds and repair my armor at some point. I do have another ingot back on the raft as well. I must not forget that. All right. I don't have looting three on my sword, but I do have smite. So killing the wither skeletons should be pretty easy. Oh, too close. Too close. I'm seeing a lot of blazes, but I'm not seeing any wither ske... Oh, okay. Ah, no thanks, bro. Oh, yeah. Two hit kills. Oh, there's quite a lot of you, actually. Oh, no. Come on. Nope. Hello, mate. Oh, there's two of you. With a head? Nope. This way, come this way, come this way. Yes. Yeah. Nope. 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 Please drop a head. Please. Yo, what's good, bro? Nope. I really need looting on my sword, evidently. Because these guys are not dropping heads. Oh, are you joking? It looks like we're not having much luck right now with the wither skeletons. So, let's head back. We'll grab some food. Make a few changes to the raft, and then we'll try again. The beacon could be the last ingredient in this entire recipe. Let's grab some glass. I only have like a stack of 64 glass left, so we'll start placing it here. And then when I run out, we'll just head back over to that sandy hill, and we'll grab a bunch of sand there. Let's make a bunch of shovels. Yeah, that'll do. Let's enchant some of these shovels. Even if I get, I don't know, Oh, there you go. I was going to say efficiency too, so that's perfect. That's better than nothing. Let's make ourselves another boat. And I'm pretty sure, can't you in 1.19 put a chest on a boat? That's a thing, isn't it? Ah, there we go. So we could fill that up with sand. And then fill our inventory up with sand. Yeah, okay, cool. Sweet. Look at that. Little chest boat. I completely forgot you could do that. So that's cool. All right, let's go get ourselves some glass. Well, sand. And then we'll turn it into glass. Ta-da. I pull up at the after party. Bam. Let's get to work. Oh, <laughs> I wish I had a higher efficiency, but it is what it is. Let's grab this. Whilst I'm digging up this sand, let me take the time to remind you guys that I do have a Discord. I relaunched it earlier this year, and uh, it's just a cool place to hang out. I'm in there quite a bit talking to you guys, asking about video ideas, posting builds, just keeping you updated really on what I'm up to. I think it's great to have a community, you see? Someone to talk to in times of loneliness. Because I get quite lonely myself, you know? Sat here, alone in my room. You guys have helped me through some dark times, I have to say. So thank you very much. The link is in the description below. It'll probably be about here I insert a time lapse of about four hours worth of digging into like 10 seconds. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm tired of digging up sand and I have more than enough. Look, I filled this entire chest. I might even have some stacks in my inventory. So, let's go home. The raft looks so cool at night. The mob farm adds some height to the whole thing, but I just feel like we need something here that looks cool. Oh, I gotta go the other way around. Oops. All right, let's plant this bad boy here. I have a disgusting amount of sand, so let's go stick these in the furnaces. Let's wait for all the sand to turn into glass so we can finish up the glass floor. And whilst we wait, I wonder what we can do with this bridge. Is this something we can do with you? I have an idea. It's just going to involve a fair bit of wood. So let's once again, for like the bajillionth time on this 100 days on a raft, grab some more wood. And we'll fill this whole side in with stairs. All right, now we're done with the stairs. I'm pretty sure I have a moss block kicking around somewhere from a barrel way back when we started. And it stayed on my mind there. Now, I'm pretty sure if you bone mill these, they turn everything around it green. And I just feel like I need some more green in my life. Also, while we're here let's grab the glass very very satisfying to see so much glass in my inventory i'm running low on coal though Ooh. let's grab some bones from the mob farm there we go and that'll make plenty of bone meal more than enough let's extend this let's see all right okay it spreads this looks really good this is just what we needed because i just feel like the island was lacking greenery if this was filled in with glass and this had a wall around it, I think that could look pretty cool. You know what? I might bring this in one more level. So let's do that. Break these slabs. Fill this in with dirt. Fill this in. Yeah, okay. Couple of trees up in this mofo. It's all coming together. Right, let's fill this in with glass so I can freely walk around it because it's annoying me every time I get dunked into the water. Oh, I'm going through some serious amounts of glass. I think I may have underestimated just how much glass I'm going to need for this entire project. Uh, let's pop a chest down here because you never know we're going to need storage. Ah, oh, I have not slept for a couple of days, evidently. Let's jump in bed real quick. All right, we're closing in on the end. Let's hurry things up. Let's finish up this glass floor all the way around the island. I think I want to swap this out for dirt. 
So it's like you're walking through a gardens. So let's swap all this glass out for dirt, plant the moss blocks, and then make it nice and green. Now we're talking, look at this. This looks really great. Let's lay down some fence posts. Just adds to the texture of things. We have a very green, healthy, nature-looking area. I've got a little chest in here. I'm sure we can stick some things in there. All right, nice. Before I head into the nether, let's try and get a looting three sword. Just because the wither skeletons ain't be dropping those skulls, bro. So I gotta try extra hard and increase my ch sharpness three again, really? Oh, bro, come on. Oh, now I'm out of XP again. I have to keep going back and forth between here and the mob farm. All right, let's try one more time. What? <laughs> okay, knock back, fire aspect. And looting three. You couldn't ask for a better sword. All right. Now we have a looting three sword. Getting these skulls is going to be a little easier. Oh, wow. There's lots of you. I'm being chased. I'm being chased. I'm being chased. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, get away, get away, get away, get away. I'm going to die. Eat the potato. Eat the potato. Ha ha. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. I must be having like the worst luck ever because I cannot tell you how many wither skeletons I've killed and still nothing. Good night, but. <gasps> Look at that. Finally. This seems to be like the area they're spawning, so I'm just going to keep sticking around here. Finally, we have one skull. Now we just have to try and get two more. Give me your heads. All right, we managed to grab a second one. We just need the final one. How did bro get up there? There we go. We have three skulls, so let's get out of here. Uh, oh, yes, I have the soul sound too. All right. Oh, that took a disgusting amount of time. Wow. Wow. Yo, I love my raft, man. Time to kill the wither. We'll make some strength potions. I have a bunch of shields. Now all we need to do is head underwater and find a good spot to take him out. Unfortunately, I don't have any of mummy's milkies to remove the wither effect. It would be nice to get animals, I'm not gonna lie. I've been keeping my eye out for those chickens that the zombies ride. But thus far, no luck. Let's uh, go as far away from my raft as humanly possible because the last thing I need is the wither breaking up and out of there. Destroying all of these hundred days worth of work. I'd say we could do it in this amethyst geode If I make a long enough tunnel, I spawn the wither in here. I want to make this quick I don't want to spend too much time taking out the wither as I really want to build a beacon This ain't my first rodeo. I'll be honest with you boom and boom place these down. Come on. We got this All right, we got him where we want him Bro is coming at me Eh Eh. This, why is this taking way longer than usual? Oh no, I'm getting to the end of my tunnel. Die, bro. Die, bro. I'm just gonna have to use the sword. Come on, we got this. Oh, just die already, bro. Oh, oh my heart was racing. Ooh, diamonds. That is a fat vein of diamonds. All right, we got the nether star. Woohoo! We just need to build a beacon now. Boom, beacon crafted. All right, let's put it here. That's it, right? And then you just place the beacon in the middle. Hey! And then, I of course have diamonds from that huge vein. So what are we saying? Haste, speed, jump boost. I say we get some speed up in here. We got a beacon on the raft. We got a beacon on the raft. Now that we've done that, let's build somewhere where I can organize my storage and place all of the barrels I collected. Hello there. All right, I'm gonna build it here. I just need to get the foundations of it correct as I wanna build a sort of sphere and then place a bunch of water in it with fishies in. You didn't think I forgot about that idea, did you? Respiration and depth stride is coming in quite clutch here. I think that's a good size, right? I need to regain some air. One, two, three. As you can tell, I do a lot of counting. One, two, three, one, two. I want this to be more like a tower, like the main house in the middle, but with a giant fish tank on the top of it. I think that would look Cool. Fill this in all the way around. Now we just need to fill this in. Uh, how am I going to get up the tower? Because I don't really like the idea of stairs. <laughs> oh, I know. I can just use this and we can put a ladder on it. That's pretty tall, isn't it? Yeah. I need more wood. Sheesh. The speed the beacon's giving me. I'm like the flash, bro. Mine. Neom. Chop. All right, let's get this tower finished. I'm going to use glass panes, wooden logs to add some pizzazz. This tower's gonna look good. And then I'm gonna add a fish tank to the top. Hopefully this looks okay. Okay, now we have the mini fish tank thing finished. I just need to fill it up with water. So I'll just keep grabbing water from here and keep filling it up. Let's take a step back. What is that meant to be, buddy? 
What have I aimed for there? That is pretty atrocious. Enjoy your new home! Hey, buddy! You have this whole place to yourself. Wait, what do you mean it looks really bad? Hey, look, who said I was a Minecraft YouTuber? No one. No one said that. Shh. All right. I think that looks pretty cool. Let's start placing these chests. All right. Let's grab the barrels from the main house. Only trouble here is I'm about to lose a lot of items. Hmm. You know what? We have time. Nothing will despawn as long as I place the barrels quick enough. So, ooh, that's a lot of items. I gotta make this quick. <gasps> My ancient debris. Oh, okay, I have to be super quick. Do not despawn. Where's the other barrels? Any other barrels? I'm sure there was a random one over here somewhere. Where have I moved them? I've moved them. <gasps> quick, 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 quick. 24 barrels. Pretty decent amount. All right, what we wanna do is I'm gonna place them all along this wall. Then, when you climb the ladder like this, you can, uh, like this. Eh. Ow, no, what am I trying to do here? I need to, I'm trying to create a floor. That's what I'm trying to do here. Like this. There we go. See? I place these barrels down. And I'll stick all of this stuff in this barrel quickly, quickly, so I don't lose my stuff. We must act with haste! Oh, grab the most important stuff. This. This. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's just dump it for now. I'll sort it out in a moment. Yeah, this stuff isn't the most important. We got the main stuff over, like the blaze rather than the nether stuff. Right on. And we shall wait for the sun to set. Let's head over to the villagers. Check they're all okay. You guys are okay. We did some decent trades. I'm gonna make you some more beds at some point, guys, so you can reproduce and there'll be loads of you on the raft. The sun has set. And guys, I hate to break it to you, but it's day 100. So I guess I'll just sort those out in 200 days, if this video does well. Woo! Woohoohoo! We turned a tiny three by three wooden raft into this spectacular, cozy, homely base of operations. I'm super happy with how this entire raft turned out. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Imagine being sent back in time to the Stone Age. I will have just 100 days to form the biggest and most powerful caveman tribe in all of ancient history. I will be facing deadly prehistoric enemies, crafting powerful ancient tools, exploring primal locations, and even battling a gigantic T-Rex. Will I survive the bloodthirsty dinos and become the most powerful caveman that ever lived? Let's find out. Day one was extremely intense. I was being chased by a tribe tribe of cavemen, and they were furious. If that spear got me, it would be over before it started. So I took a leap of faith. Oh, 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 you won't get away with this. Over, over. I may have escaped those guys, but there were more cavemen to take on. They were chasing oh, after me. I had no choice but to sprint away as fast as possible. I sought refuge in this small building, found a chest, and grabbed some quick loot. My heart was racing. I was cornered. They attacked me with their spear. Just two and a half hearts. But I managed to sprint away and escape. Woo! So there I was, stranded in the middle of the jungle. And you're probably wondering why these cavemen were chasing me. Well, this is Uga Kingdom, home of the cavemen that will be hunting me down for the next 100 days. Why, you ask? Well, you see this guy? This is the evil Uga, the leader of the Uga tribe. And that skull staff he's holding has special abilities. And I almost got my hands on it until I was chased by his goons and now I'm stuck here, wondering what ancient and powerful abilities I could have had. If I am to attack again, I'm going to need to be way more prepared. So I grabbed some wood, made some basic tools, and began my journey to get that staff. I noticed there was some Stone Age gear to craft, the easiest being the stone axe. So I grabbed some cobblestone, combined it with the string, and made myself an ancient axe, which gave me efficiency. It would allow me to collect a ton of resources much quicker. I can't wait to see what the other ancient items do. Whilst I was grabbing cobblestone, I was ambushed by a triceratops. I had no choice but to sprint away. With just half a heart, I couldn't risk dying, so I headed underground. 
This thing was huge. I headed deep underground where I felt more safe and did what cavemen do best, collecting resources. But then I came across this giant lush cave. This place was absolutely mesmerizing, filled with glowberries and beautiful water pools. This would be the foundation for my new home. With such low health, I needed some food, so I grabbed some glowberries and feasted on their squishy texture. I then headed down to explore this beautiful area, grabbing resources along the way. Whilst I was mining, I heard a strange sound. Somebody was crying. I went to investigate. It seemed to be another caveman. <laughs> Please don't tell anyone I'm here. I'm being hunted by the Uga tribe. Oh, it's you they're hunting. Listen, if you can rescue my brother, I promise to keep your secret. I'll even join your tribe. Wow, thank you. But what happened to your brother? We were kidnapped by a nearby tribe. I got away, but they have my brother locked up in a cage with no food, and I'm not strong enough to take them on. Oh no! Can you remember where the camp is? Yes, they're on the other side of the jungle. You should craft a spyglass. It'll help you get a better view and find where they're keeping my brother. Take this bow too. It's my brother's. It contains an ancient power I've yet to discover. This ancient bow looked awesome, but I couldn't let it distract me from my mission at hand. I promised this caveman I would track down that camp and bring his brother back all in one piece. So it was time to get to work. I headed out grabbing resources, collecting glowberries for food, and I also got stuck under some gravel because I was trying to get flint. Hello? Anyone? I smelted up the oars and crafted a full set of iron armor. Magic. I then headed out to track down some amethyst. It took a couple of days, but I finally found an amethyst geode. Ding -ding 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 -ding. Once I returned home, I sorted my inventory and crafted the spyglass. I will use this to spy on the camp. I was also curious to find out what abilities this bow would grant me. It was time to head out and find the caveman's brother. The jungle is an extremely daunting place, and it's filled with dinosaurs, just like these raptors. I had no choice but to defend myself against these ravenous beasts. I was countering their bites with my ancient axe, picking my shots. The ravenous raptors began to back me into a corner and deal serious amounts of damage. With just half a heart, I defeated two of the raptors, but I had to run away, regain my strength, and head back in to deal the final blow to the final raptor. All that was left of the dinosaur was its meat. I made it to the other side of the jungle and stumbled across this structure with a winged-like creature sleeping nearby. But as I approached, it launched high into the sky and started spitting venomous goo at me. It began to slow me down. I had no choice but to face this pterodactyl. So many dinosaurs, man. Give me a break. I was ducking and dodging the pterodactyl's venomous spit and then striking it with my ancient axe, finally defeating it. I then investigated the area in hopes to find the camp, but there was nothing here. So I decided to get a better look and head up top and use the spyglass to see if I could see something. Into the distance, I noticed a very light array of smoke in the horizon. So I decided to wait until sunset to see if I could get a better look of the nearby camp. The smoke was really obvious now. This had to be the camp that the caveman told me about. So I headed in for a better look. I used my spyglass to scope out the area and try and find the caveman's brother. But all I could see was tribesmen. This place absolutely reeked of danger. So I decided why not use the bow that the caveman gave me and uncover the powers that he spoke of. I pulled the string back and launched an arrow high into the sky. Wow. I was blind, but now I see. This bow's power highlights enemies. This would make my life a lot easier when I'm sneaking through the camp. It was mesmerizing. I waited until the next day before I decided to head into the camp. It was my time to strike. I pulled out my skull bow and struck the first caveman. I then jumped down and continued to bash him with my axe. He was trying to stab me with his spear, but he stood no match, and I struck him down. He dropped a skull that I could use to craft things with later on. With the combination of my ancient bow and ancient axe, I was making great progress working through the camp. I came across a cage, but there was no sign of the caveman's brother. Just this raptor. I snuck through the camp, dodging the enemies, when finally, there he is! I found him! I raced to the cage, told him that his brother had sent me, and freed him from his misery. Woohoo! You saved me, kid! I'm free! Not yet, you're not. We gotta sneak out of here. I explained to the caveman that there's still enemies around, so we'd have to sneak out of here as quietly as possible. We managed to get past the first guard, and when I saw a moment to run, I took it! 
We sprinted as fast as we could away from the camp. We paddled through water and sprinted over land until finally I made it back home. It was so heartwarming to see the two brothers reunite. They both thanked me for everything I'd done and offered to help me get my hands on that skull staff. They also asked me the name of my tribe. So how about you guys comment below the best name you can think of? The next day, I decided to do a little bit of building, so I worked on a small area, a workstation, where I could store the skulls that I'll use later on to craft ancient weapons. It wasn't the coolest build in the world, but it looked okay for now. I then made some slight improvements, adding campfires here and there because cavemen love fire. And that, whoa, 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 is that, is that diamonds? How did I not notice them? They've been here the whole time. I love diamonds so much. The little blue twinkle, it never gets old. After this, I used the little resources I had to craft a brutal caveman club. It looked insane, and I was tired of eating glowberries, so I decided to head up top and try and get a better source of food. My first target was this Spinosaurus. He was colossal in size, but I used my brutal caveman club to bonk him on the head and knock him out. I then continued to collect as much food as possible, taking out dinosaurs left, right, and center, including this guy. I tried to use my bow and take it out from a distance, but I had no choice but to close the gap and defeat this beast. These dinosaurs are pretty scary. After killing it, it dropped a ton of food. A good few days of hunting. As the sun set, I was completely overwhelmed by raptors. I didn't think I was going to make it. I sprinted away as fast as possible. I spent the entire night dodging these <laughs> vicious predators. And once I finally made it back home, I filled my caveman's bellies with dino meat. And also including my own, because I was absolutely starving. If I was going to take out Uga and get that staff, I'd need way more caveman in my tribe. So I decided to head out and start recruiting. Whilst I was exploring, I came across this guy. Oh, help me! Oh, just can you eat me alive? Oh, 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 oh. This poor caveman was being attacked by a triceratops, so I headed in with my caveman club and took it out, saving his life. Oh, wow, thank you. I thought I was toast. Phew. The caveman was so grateful he joined my tribe, so I informed him of the location of my secret base whilst I continued my hunt over the next few days for new members, including these two. You're the only one that got into this mess. How did you not see the trap rope? These guys were trapped, so I freed them with my axe. Uh, oh, nice. Thank you, great one. You saved us. My caveman army was growing each and every day. I couldn't believe it. Things were going smoothly until this happened. I had stumbled across a giant skeleton attacking a caveman. I had no choice but to head in to help. I struck this undead beast with my ancient axe, but it was fierce and it was strong. It was doing extreme damage with its spin attacks. This undead creature seemed immortal, and with one strike, it got me down to just half a heart. I sprinted away, grabbed some berries, and decided to pick my shots with a bow. I finally defeated this ancient creature. I've battled dinos, but nothing like this, so I decided to head after the caveman. Hopefully he could explain where this thing came from. I got too close to the temple, that's all. Temple? Yeah, you know, the one where they keep Scar. Ooh, who's Scar? Sounds kind of scary. Scar is the T-Rex almost a feared Uga, the evil Uga. But he struck him down using that skull staff. And the ancients serve any who wields it, so Uga made him lock him up. He's been there many years, that poor dino. What if I freed him? We could defeat Uga together. <laughs> Good luck, kid. Those ancient skeletons are tough. This was perfect. If I could free the T-Rex from the temple, he could help me get my hands on that skull staff and defeat Uga. So I headed home to prepare, recruiting as many cavemen as I could on the way. It was perfect. They protected me while I collected resources. They followed me everywhere I went. We even found one of Uga's tribe members hunting us, but he stood no match for me and my tribe. I made it back home and I was in awe of how fast my caveman army was growing, so I decided to build a small area in which my caveman could rest up. I had to make sure they were strong and ready to battle Uga when the time comes. But we weren't prepared just yet, so I told my caveman to chill out here whilst I go out and grab some resources. I noticed in the crafting table a couple of ancient tools I could craft with skulls and diamonds, so I headed out to do my favorite thing ever, mining. I spent the next few days mining resources and battling dinos in this beautiful lush cave. Just look at this, it's a caveman's dream home. This cave was riddled with diamonds, so I got to work collecting them up. I stumbled across a mine shaft with chests filled with skulls, so I raced back home as fast as I possibly could, crafted myself the diamond tools, and then used the skulls to upgrade them. And the final result was insane. The skull pickaxe looked awesome, and the skull sword looked 
deadly. The last few days of hard work really paid off. I decided to give my new pickaxe a test, and then it was time to head out and find that temple. I was going to free that T-Rex. So I got a good night's rest, said goodbye to my tribe, and headed out. I clawed through dino-infested jungles for days and still nothing, until I came to the edge of the island and noticed some ancient skeletons congregated. I was close. These little guys attacked me with no hesitation, juking left and right trying to flank me, but I used my new sword to take them down. The ancients tried to conquer me with teamwork, but nothing was going to stop me and my new ancient sword. I took the final enemy down. I then continued my hunt for the temple, and finally, I found it. I headed in. This thing was absolutely ginormous, and the ancients were waiting for me. I was determined to find that T-Rex, so I battled the first few minions. They weren't too difficult, but then things got tough. Be prepared to face death, mortal. This giant undead beast wielded an enormous blade that dealt tons of damage. My ancient skull sword dealt bleeding damage, so I managed to strike him with my blade and watch as its soul poured from its bones. You are weak. The monster towered over me, leaving me with just one and a half hearts. I had no choice but to eat some food, step away and start picking my bow shots. And with strategic moves, I finally managed to defeat the beast. <laughs> It wasn't over yet. I was being targeted by ancient archers, and their bows did extreme amounts of damage. It was kind of surprising for such a small little bow. I regened with food and then chased after this little guy with my caveman club, defeating him. I scaled the giant temple stairway, facing the horrors that the ancients were sending after me. The undead rose from the ground. They were doing everything in their power to stop me from reaching the top, but I was determined to get inside and free that T-Rex, so I took them on with my bow. I cleared the area of the last few ancients, took a deep breath, and headed in. It was freezing in here. This place had been left alone for a long time. <gasps> There's Scar! I couldn't wait to tell him that I was freeing him from this prison. I jumped down. I was so excited to speak to him. Ta-da! I've come to sit! <gasps> this was not part of my plan! The giant T-Rex was trying to eat me alive! Listen, I'm the good guy. I'm trying to help you. I was reluctant to fight back, but the T-Rex left me no choice. But it just angered him even more. <sighs> the voices. The voices. <sighs> ground pound after ground pound. This T-Rex was relentless chasing after me. With a swipe of his tail, he hit me high into the sky. I was losing extreme amounts of damage. The T-Rex tried to swallow me whole. Enough is enough. I pulled out my ancient skull blade and struck him down. Please, I'm weak. The T-Rex dropped to his knees. I explained that I'm not the enemy here and that I've come to save him. I didn't want to hurt you. Too long have I been locked away, trapped and alone. Not anymore. Cavemen all around have told me what happened to you. I want to help you get revenge for what Uga did. I have dreamt of revenge. Uga must pay for all of this. Then let's team up. You get revenge, and I get his staff. I need time to heal. If we are to face his tribe, I must rest. Go craft a saddle. It would be my honor to ride into battle with you. Thank you for saving me, friend. A new ally on this Stone Age journey. I decided to explore the area in which Scar was kept and found a chest filled with skulls. I also grabbed the resources nearby. I guess it's time to head back. Whilst exiting the temple, I bumped into another evil ancient, but I was in no condition to fight, so I hopped down and clutched with a water bucket. I then headed into the woods and made myself a crafting table to check out the crafting recipe for the T-Rex saddle. I can't wait to ride into battle on a T-Rex. Also, who knew mammoths were so aggressive in the Stone Age? I explored the beautiful landscapes and then eventually made it home, headed up to my crafting station, and I crafted a full set of bone armor using the skulls from Scar's prison. Look how amazing this looks! <laughs> the next day, I grabbed some members of my tribe to head out and grab the things I would need to craft the T-Rex saddle. It was a solid few days collecting resources, defeating slimes, and fighting mobs, all whilst collecting diamonds along the way. We made a pretty good team, my cavemen and I. The last component I needed was leather, so I killed a few cows, grabbed some leather, and crafted the T-Rex saddle. We were getting closer and closer to getting my hands on that skull staff. I was so excited to give Scar the saddle I had crafted, so I headed down to greet him. But when I reached the prison, he wasn't here. There was no sign of Scar. <laughs> Sorry, kid. Oh, oh, my head. Ugo's paying us a lot of dino meat for this. <laughs> don't try anything stupid. You don't scare me. Oh, whatever, Ugo. Just 
keep talking while she still have a tongue. <laughs> Uga must be friends with this tribe if he's paying them to capture me. These guys were terrifying. I had to get out of here as soon as possible, so I started breaking my way out of the cage and sneaking past one of the tribal minions. I managed to locate the chest with all of my loot inside. Now all I had to do was escape. <gasps> the cavemen mercenaries were furious. I had to think of a way out. I jumped between them, but then I was completely bombarded by the tribe. It was time to fight. Using my caveman instincts, I managed to defend myself against the first wave, but then the mercenary began to battle me with his giant blade. He struck me and sliced me, hitting me into the air. He may have had brutal attacks, but he couldn't withstand the bleeding effect from my sword, and I watched as he dropped to his knees. He lacked the strength to continue fighting on. But it wasn't over! This caveman seemed to be a conjurer of some sort, and was summoning things from the ground. He used his giant staff to launch attacks at me, doing light damage. He seemed to be regenerating his own health while sporadically spinning that staff high into the sky. His attacks were relentless. I couldn't seem to breathe. I was suffocated by enemies. After the final wave of these encapsulated bugs, he seemed tired, so I headed in to strike him down. After an exhausting fight, I managed to defeat the ones that had captured me. Now it was time to head home through sandstorms. You see, this is why I like the jungle. This is infuriating. The sandstorm was kicking me high into the sky, and every time I tried to make a move, the wind blew me backwards. Once the storm calmed down, I headed home, and it took me days, but waiting for me was Scar. Somehow he managed to find the jungle in which I live, so I headed over to ask him how on earth he managed to find me. I followed your scent, of course. Now, the saddle boy. I placed the saddle on Scar's back. This was it, the moment Dino and Caveman become friends. I couldn't believe it. I was riding on the back of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. If this doesn't make me the coolest caveman ever, then I don't know what will. We made the ultimate team and dedicated the next few days to recruiting even more caveman into my army. How could they say no? There's a giant T-Rex there. The cavemen followed me and Scar all the way home. The fight for that staff and the battle with Uga's tribe was just around the corner. But first I wanted to make a small living space for Scar. I wasn't just going to let him roam around the cave. I kept it pretty simple, terraforming the area, using stone brick blocks, all so Scar could have a cozy area to sleep in. It was time. Time to head out and face the Uga tribe and get that staff. I rallied up my men. My brothers, this will be a tough fight. And some will fall to the Uga tribe. But together we can defeat Uga and we can get that staff. Oh, oh, oh! I headed out with my caveman tribe towards Uga Kingdom. My cavemen were ready and so were Scar and I. We headed in. This was the moment. We had penetrated the perimeter and headed in to fight. Scar noticed enemies up ahead. We headed in and battled the Uga tribe. Men were falling left, right and center. This was a brutal battle. My tribe and I successfully cleared the area of Uga's men. The next step was finding Uga himself and I needed to do this quest alone. I was in the heart of Uga Kingdom now, and I could tell that's where the evil caveman was hiding, so I headed in and defeated the bodyguards guarding him. Their sharp spears weren't sharp enough to pierce the bone armor I had crafted. It was time to head up. The giant evil caveman came stomping towards me from the shadows. Come from the skull staff again, have we? Yeah, but this time I brought an army. Give it up, Uga. <laughs> You think a few cavemen can save you? This time you won't make it out alive! <laughs> Uga slammed his skull staff into the ground, leaving me with just half a heart. He was way stronger than I anticipated, so I had to create some distance and pick my slices. I was slipping and ducking his staff, but he grew in strength. He was relentless, chasing me down at every moment. He was powerful, but I saw an opening and decided to strike him with my sword, dealing huge amounts of damage, and the bleeding effect started to kick in. A few more hits, this would be it, and then I would have my hands on that staff. I defeated the evil caveman. There it is, the skull staff in all its glory. I headed over to pick it up. I couldn't believe I wielded all of its power, but I still didn't know what its ability was. But then a strange sound occurred, and then... I had morphed into a dinosaur! I could fly! This was amazing! I was flying through the jungle, the wind through my hair! I was unstoppable! I couldn't believe this power that I had obtained. I perched myself down on a beach and decided to look at the actual ability of the staff. 
I could morph into any creature, so I tried it out on this raptor. This is unbelievable. This makes me the most powerful caveman of all time. After this, I headed home and celebrated with my tribe that we defeated Uga and I managed to get my hands on the skull staff. But I had one more idea. Seeing I had all this power, I wanted to use it to unite all of the tribes together to create peace. So I disguised myself as each tribe and convinced all the caveman tribes to join together in peace. I traveled far and wide, wielding the power of this staff to morph myself into the different caveman. I even convinced the Uga tribe to join together. They were on board, so they followed me back home. Once I had returned, it warmed my heart to see all of the different tribes in unity. This was beautiful. I successfully ended the 100 days with the greatest caveman army in all of ancient history. Stranded in the tropical ocean in the blazing sun, I'll need to take on some of the most dangerous creatures I have ever faced. I'll need to craft epic tools and mystical armor so I can survive the dangers of the tropical seas in hardcore Minecraft. My journey begins on this raft. With no food or shelter, my first priority was to find a good spot and start getting to work. Otherwise, I might get eaten by giant crabs. Oh yeah, they're out there, and they are ready to feed. So I found a good spot, hopped off my raft, and headed underwater to explore. It was beautiful. The tropical ocean was filled with life. This is the perfect spot to get building. I didn't want to waste too much time though, so I grabbed myself a sea pickle, considering this is the only light source underwater, then headed up, grabbed some air because I wanted to start collecting resources to get building. But as I was grabbing sand, I quickly realized this is going to be very, very annoying. Like, I'm going to drown constantly. But I persevered, headed down, and started grabbing as much sand as I possibly could, all whilst dolphins were protecting me from the drowned. Like, that's so cool. I finally had a platform to stand on, however, it did cost me a few hearts. I felt kind of bad, but I replenished my health with raw cod, and then I noticed something underwater. It was a little squid, so I headed down to speak to him. Hey, little dude. The little tropical creature informed me of a shipwreck nearby, but it was surrounded by danger. So I headed up, replenished my health, and decided I'd go out hunting for that shipwreck. I headed out pretty tentatively, but as I got closer, the coast seemed <gasps> Holy shark! The beast that emerged from the shipwreck started chasing me! I had nowhere left to go! I started swimming away, but it was much faster than I am, and did a ton of damage! And then I started drowning! I headed up to the surface, and had no choice but to fight this monster with my bare hands! Nothing seemed to be killing this beast. I created a little bit of distance and continued smacking the shark, when finally, I killed the creature. Whew, that was a close one. I then headed back to the shipwreck and started looting. Inside the chest was a bunch of goodies, potatoes, iron, and even some crab meat. So I headed up top and replenished my health. I then tried to get as much wood from the shipwreck as I could, but I pretty much spent the entire time drowning. But eventually I had enough wood to head back and make myself a crafting table. And inside, I noticed an oceanic axe, which is used to kill the kraken. Oh, yeah, cool. There's krakens now. Yeah, just what I need. <laughs> I couldn't craft the item just yet, so instead I used what I had to make some basic tools and head back to the shipwreck to get as much wood as possible. Things were finally going a little smoother. I crafted the rest of my basic tools and then headed underwater to try and find some dirt so then I could plant the potatoes. I also grabbed myself a little cobblestone and then headed back up to start working on my base in the middle of the tropical ocean. It wasn't much, but it was mine. I had food growing, furnaces, crafting tables, and then I took a look at this map I found in the pirate ship earlier and I was feeling pretty alone until this moment. A giant turtle started swimming towards me under the water. He then started shooting items from his shell. What is going on? This turtle just keeps shooting items from the chest on his shell. It's crazy! He then started to swim away. He swam into the distance and was gone. This is so random. I decided to just go ahead and pick up all the items he dropped. Is that a diamond? I then spotted some sort of special looking fishing rod, so I headed over and picked it up. It's been a crazy journey so far, and I quickly found out this fishing rod was very OP. So I spent the next few days just constantly fishing for food and enjoying the blazing sun. Food was number one priority, considering I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, so I dedicated a bunch of time to that. Things were going pretty smoothly until this happened. This giant whale-like creature started to rumble underneath the ocean, and then it lit out a gigantic roar. Oh my goodness, that's a giant wave. I didn't know what to do. 
The wave was approaching me. I just held my breath and braced myself. The gigantic wave swept me up and started doing damage, and then I plummeted underwater, but the wave carried on over. It was breathtaking. I couldn't believe I survived it, but then another one. This is absolutely crazy. I had nowhere else left to turn, so I headed underwater and dodged the gigantic wave. The gigantic whale-like creature disappeared into the distance. That was crazy. I headed back to my island. It was destroyed, and then I noticed the octopus was stranded. I couldn't believe it. I tried to save his life, but he died. Out of nowhere, I heard this strange sound, and then suddenly crabs started spawning on my island and started doing damage to me. Can I not just catch a break? I cleared the island of crabs and then quickly realized I've lost everything, including the chest filled with all those items that the turtle dropped. And speaking of the turtle, he appeared out of nowhere and started swimming towards me. Hey, yo, I, I hope he's friendly. Hey, new guy, that was wild. I know, right? Those waves were huge. Must have been Sonica. She uses her voice to move the water, like a sonic boom. Hey, but why would she want to hurt me? The tropical life don't like new guys. It's only a matter of time before more monsters arrive. Wait, 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 like what? Giant crabs, pirates, the lobster king, the lava lord, this goes on, my friend. These waters are deadly, my dude. You better stop building a base. Hey, maybe you could help me out with some items or... <gasps> wait, I got an idea. The turtle then submerged himself in the tropical water and swam off into the distance. I hope he comes back with something good. It was time to build a base, so I prepared for a long mining trip. <laughs> Look at this unlimited food supply. I headed into the caves and everything was submerged by water, so I used the doors to create air pockets and then get to work mining. I was collecting plenty of ores and then I headed down and found a mine shaft, but inside were these two undead miners. These guys must have been down here a long time, but they were pretty easy to kill. They also dropped some iron tools, which may be handy in the future. I then looked inside the chest in the mine shaft and grabbed some iron. I then found an amethyst geode and performed the classic montage. I then came across a huge mine shaft, but this one was filled with a lot more undead miners, which proved to be a little tougher, so I used my agility to dodge the zombies and then take them out. I thought I'd take the opportunity to take as much wood from this mine shaft as possible. I cleared the whole place out, but then things got serious. I got hit by a poisonous cave spider, and it got me down to half a heart, so I quickly retreated and started placing blocks everywhere. Whew. That was a close one. I then returned to mining wood, but it wasn't over. A bunch of crabs out of nowhere started attacking me again. In groups, these crabs can be pretty dangerous, but I finished them off and then used the crab meat to finally craft that oceanic axe. This means I could collect wood a lot quicker and do some serious damage. I headed back up to my island, patched in all the damaged areas, and then got to work building my base. I didn't have a ton of materials, nor my building skills that impressive, but I managed to build a beautiful little home on the tropical ocean. We were making some serious progress. The next day, the turtle returned with some bad news. Hey, listen up, kid. Pirates are on their way. Newcomers like you are worth a lot of treasure. You better get to work. Take these cannonballs. When you're done building your defenses, come to me and I'll give you the cannons. I got to work straight away. I headed underground and started grabbing as many materials as I could. No pirate was going to defeat me. I built a giant wall which protected my base. I wasn't going to let this island get destroyed again. Once I was finished with the wall, I placed down the pile of cannonballs, spoke to the turtle, and set up the cannons. I was locked and loaded and ready for this pirate attack. I waited patiently. The bubbles of the tropical fish were unsettling. I started to get nervous. Would my wall be able to hold back the cannonballs? I spent the night fishing for food. I was going to need it. I haven't slept in days. I spent the entire night battling phantoms. I need a bed. It was time. I stood face to face with a giant pirate ship approaching me from the distance. This guy looked mean. You're worth a lot of treasure, me lad. <laughs> oh no, a second pirate ship. This was going to be tough. It's time to fight. I headed over to the second cannon. This ship was a lot closer. Hello, newcomer. <laughs> Let's see if your wall can withstand this. The pirate ignited the cannon and lit off a cannonball. Whoa! It destroyed a huge chunk of my wall. I decided to load the cannon and fire one back. I made a giant hole in the bottom of the ship, but then he returned another one. He missed. Time to return fire. Another fantastic hit, but then the pirate returned one final blow and destroyed my tower. 
<gasps> I swam towards the giant hole I had made in the boat, but the crew were prepared. It was time to battle these pirates. Their giant cutlasses were pristine and sharp and did a ton of damage, so I used my agility to dodge the pirate slices and then take them out with my oceanic axe. Once the pirate was destroyed, he dropped his pirate cutlass, so I picked it up and headed into the next room. But these pirates were armed with pistols. Whoa, that's a ton of damage. I gotta hide. I replenished my health with crab meat and then jumped out to face these guys head on. Their pistols do so much damage, I had to act quickly. One down, now for the final blow. Success. I looked up and saw the rest of the crew was waiting for me. I was feeling unstoppable. I grabbed a couple of swords and headed up. More gunmen, I'll have to be smart. Collectively, these pirate gunmen were doing some serious damage and I almost lost my life. The lack of sleep had caused phantoms to spawn. This was getting too overwhelming. I headed back, replenished my health with food and finally took out the last few enemies. I stood on the edge of the ship and locked eyes with the enemy pirate. Captain Octopus doesn't lose. The captain started raining hellfire on my defenses. He destroyed my complete wall. I wasn't going to let him attack my base, so I headed down off of the plank and headed towards his ship. This wasn't going to be an easy battle. You don't have to do this. I surrender to no man. We don't like newcomers in this ocean, so it's time to take you down. A giant tentacle emerged from the ship and tried to take me down. He then started slicing me with his cutlass. This wasn't going to be an easy fight. His tentacles did extreme amounts of damage. There was no way escaping this guy. I tried to close the gap to hit him with my sword, but he was just too fast and too powerful. I decided to eat my golden apple and head back in. I did some decent blows, but once again, he struck me with his sword. I was learning his combos. First he'd strike me with his tentacles, try and hit me with a pistol, then slice me with his cutlass. But I was just too smart. I dodged his hits and headed back in to do some final blows. Dodge, smack, and finally, I defeated the pirate. We are safe for now. I decided to explore the rest of the boat and I found some music playing from the basement. So I headed down to take a look and there was a little dancing crab. This was the strangest thing I've seen. Maybe he was captured here and he's happy he's free. <laughs> Captain Octa never loses. Suddenly a giant tentacle emerged and smacked the TNT igniting it. Oh no, gotta get away, gotta get away. The TNT exploded. The explosion was colossal and destroyed the entire ship. This was incredible. I was lucky to survive. Woo. I was observing the damage when suddenly the little crab appeared and he was huge. I thought he was going to attack me, but instead he just scuttled away in the tropical waters. That can't be good. Enough drama, let's just explore the ship. I found some chests and it was filled with saplings, gold, bones, cobwebs, all the things that would help me with my survival skills. I then headed back over to the other ship to take a look and inside was something magical. A special sword, a map, and a book. I opened the book and it read inside that the X's lead to the armor that grants this sword its full power. This is insane. I looked at the map and it seemed to be a volcano of some sort. If I can get my hands on that armor, I'll be safe from all the dangers in the tropical ocean. A new adventure on this tropical journey. Whilst heading out, I quickly realized the sword granted me special abilities. I can use the force of the water to increase my movement and it also allowed me to use the water as an attack. I guess the pirates were also looking for that armor set. I couldn't believe it. This sword was insane. If I get my hands on that armor, I'll be protected from all the dangers that the turtle was talking about. I used the sails from the ship to make myself a bed and finally got some sleep. Next day, I extended my island slightly and planted all of the saplings I had collected and then used bone meal to make them grow. Next step was to head out and find that island and get my hands on that armor set. My journey took days and I saw some absolutely beautiful sights. Jellyfish, dangerous sharks, and even some cute little fish like these guys. After exploring the tropical ocean for quite some time, I finally arrived. Approached the shore of the tropical island thinking these guys were friendly, but they really weren't. And then a wave emitted from my sword. I genuinely didn't mean to do that. I had unlocked a bunch of new abilities with the sword. I grabbed some wood, made a crafting table, and used a turtle scoop to make myself some turtle tools. This should stop the turtles from attacking me because... You know, they'll realize they're messing with the big dog. I used the tropical sword to traverse the island on my hunt for that giant volcano. Whilst exploring the tropical island, I came across these creepy crawly dragonflies and a bunch of other pirates who must be looking for the armor as well. Yo, this sword is crazy. I spent a good few days trawling through the maze-like jungle and my goodness, this place is beautiful. Day had turned to night and I had all the tools to survive, although not everything was out to kill me. 
The next day, I had found the volcano, and this thing was absolutely colossal. And although there was no lava inside, things were about to get fiery. Leave my home, newcomer. You're not welcome here. Suddenly, meteors were falling from the sky. Things got dangerous fast. The lava lord appeared and he's absolutely massive. He immediately started attacking me with lava. I equipped my magical sword and headed in for battle using tidal waves mixed with slices. I lifted him with a giant water bubble. He deflected my attacks. A whirlwind of lava emerged around him. I won't let you leave here alive, newcomer. The beast then launched me high into the sky, and when I fell, I was left with just half a heart. He then began to charge at me. I had no choice but to face him. I started slicing him with my tropical sword. But once again, a whirlwind of lava had protected him. I found a weakness behind him and started dealing some serious damage. But then he lit out a humongous roar. The lava lord was furious and he slammed down, shaking the entire volcano. I regained my strength and started swiping him with my sword, using water attacks. The fight was coming to an end. The Lava Lord just needed one more strike, so I used a tidal wave to take him down. <laughs> the volcano rumbled as the beast yelped in pain. Whilst I was replenishing my health, lightning struck the volcano from the sky. I was expecting the armor to appear, but instead it was a chest, and when I opened it up, there was another map inside with a couple of weapons. Another red X. I guess our adventure continues, so I headed off the volcano and began my journey home. Confronted by turtles, I used my new tools to take them out. I then decided to take some time to grab a bunch of resources for when I head home. It's been a crazy few days. I can't wait to get back and work on my island. Once I made it back home, I decided to dedicate a good chunk of time to improving my living space. I built a new storage facility and then added walls around my entire island so I felt a little safer. I also padded the island out with sand so it felt just a little more tropical. I also planted a palm tree, which, if I'm lucky, I can get some coconuts. I also made a place in my storage where I can store my maps. Oof, that volcano was crazy, bro. After inspecting the map, it's clear that there's a lot of water, so it's probably a good idea to make some water breathing potions, and for that, I'd have to head into the nether and get my hands on some blaze rod. Upon entering, I surveyed the area and noticed there was a bastion, so I used my tropical sword and headed over. I scaled the structure and eliminated the piglins that were guarding the chests and did a little bit of looting. After quite some time, I found the fortress and got to work killing blazes for some blaze rod. I utilized all my oceanic tools to extinguish the blazes. Almost there. I headed home, made myself a brewing stand, and then placed it inside my home. Grabbed some puffer fish, and then started brewing up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot nether wart. Ah! All right, back in action. I grabbed my map, jumped on my raft, and headed overseas. Ah, I knew it wouldn't be long before I was attacked by some sort of mob, and this time it was a hammerhead shark. But using my tropical sword, I slammed him to the water and lifted him up in a bubble. And then when he fell, I took him out. In the corner of my eye, though, I noticed a shipwreck. So, I decided to head down and explore. I wonder if there's any treasure- Whoa! That's a giant kraken! It seems I was ambushed by this six tentacle beast, so I drank up my water-breathing potion and headed in. The kraken swallowed me whole and I was suffocating. He then did a whirlwind of attacks and launched me across the ocean. The creature then performed a flurry of hard-hitting blows. Lightning struck as this showdown continued. Neither of us were backing down. I speedily sliced the kraken's tentacle in an angry flurry, but then he swallowed me once again. This ends now. I slice myself out from the belly of the beast. Upon its death, the Kraken dropped this old anchor, and when I tested it out, it worked like a pickaxe and mined three by three. Super handy for mining. I swam back up top, jumped on my raft, and then headed out to find that armor. It took a few days, but I finally found it. It was a giant ocean temple. This tropical ocean never fails to amaze me. I slurped up my potion and headed in. I expected to be surrounded by danger, but this place looks abandoned. It's just filled with these beautiful little tropical fish. I headed deeper into the monument. There were a few sharks hiding away in the depths of the temple, but nothing I couldn't handle. And then I noticed it. The armor. It was just sitting there, in this abandoned library inside the temple. I couldn't believe my eyes. I quickly took it off the armor stand and placed the armor on. Its powers engulfed me. I could now breathe underwater and I was super fast. Time to head back. I found this opening and jumped up. When I made it up though, I was met by a giant lobster king. Oh no! Ah! Oh, where am I? 
Oh, my head. <sighs> the Lobster King had captured me on his pirate ship and commanded his crew to take me back to Pirate Cove, a tropical island filled with pirates. <sighs> when I woke up, I was imprisoned. I finally got my hands on a newcomer. You're worth a lot of pennies out here in the tropical ocean, boy. You won't get away with this, you big red ugly lobster. Blah, blah. I'll deal with you in the morning. Watch him, boys. Day turned to night and I was still imprisoned with no sign of escaping. But then I overheard the guards. You keep an eye on him all night, all right? Don't let him escape. The boss has asked me to move his items down into the caves. Whatever you do, don't let that boy escape. Uh, aye, aye, Captain. With the new knowledge of my inventory's whereabouts, it was time to strike fast. I started breaking the cage. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, okay, the first one. Second one, let's go, let's move. The pirate guard was completely oblivious to my whereabouts, so I made a sprint for it. I ran as fast as I could. Oh no, another pirate. I hid behind the brick wall and waited for the enemy to pass. And then when the coast was clear, I made a run for it. I was dodging pirates left, right, and center and was getting closer to my belongings. Whilst honing in on my parkour skills, the Lobster King started shouting out. You may have escaped the prison, but you won't escape the island, lad. I had to move with haste. I parkoured across the island and then headed down into the caves. I navigated the maze-like corridors and then finally came across my stuff. I opened the chest, retrieved my items, but then I was ambushed by a pirate from behind. I took him down, headed out, and stood face to face with the Lobster King. Let's see what you're made of, boy. It could all end here. I jumped down and prepared to face the Lobster King. This wasn't going to be easy. His first attack was strategic. He launched me high into the sky, and when I gained my footing, he started battling me with his giant claws. And then following this, he started to regenerate his health while taking mine. After dodging his attacks, I launched myself, penetrating his defenses and letting out a flurry of attacks. But it did barely any damage, and he returned with a giant slam of his claw. He wasn't done. He grabbed me, picked me up, and launched me. He gave me no time to breathe. He jumped into the sky and slammed down, doing tons of damage. I was up with just half a heart. He then tossed me across the battlefield and it gave me a chance to create some distance. He tried to regenerate his health once again, but I wasn't going to allow it. I headed in and started striking him. This time I wasn't backing down. When he threw me, I ran straight back in, launching tidal waves and water attacks. This was it. This was the moment. I started to let out a flurry of attacks to defeat him. And finally, I killed the Lobster King. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Time to get out of here. I was surrounded by pirates and in no mood to continue fighting. So I started to sprint away, dodging the gunman's pistol shots. As I was running for my life, I noticed the crab from earlier had also been captured. I couldn't just leave him here to die. So I jumped up and started chipping away at the prison. I hopped in the cage. Whoa! You're scary up close. I used my anchor to break the base of the prison and free the crab. We both sprinted away together and headed back to my survival island. We did it. We crossed the tropical ocean and survived. I promised the crab I would build him a home. But in the meantime, go chill out in the warm water. Time to get to work. But first, sleep. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. The next day I got to work collecting as many resources as I could for my friendly new crab's home. I also traversed the tropical ocean, exploring different islands. But then this happened! A giant crab disguised as a palm tree emerged from the island! I can't catch a break! This turtle launched high into the sky and used his shell as a weapon to attack me! He was far too dangerous to take on, so I used my tropical sword to launch him high into the sky in a bubble and used the opportunity to escape. I sprinted away as fast as possible and headed for my raft, but this guy was relentless and started chasing after me. I paddled and paddled as fast as I could. I was just too quick for the turtle, and finally I escaped. Whew. I picked up the last few resources, then headed home. Before I built the crab's home, I got to work patching up the giant wall from the pirate attack. After this, I got to work building my new friend a comfy home to live in. And I must say, this place is pretty cute. I fed the giant crab some coconuts and then led him into his new home. He seemed really content. He thanked me and then we shared some coconuts together. Some excellent progress made in just a few days. My island was looking perfect. The breeze was blowing. The tropical ocean was amazing. But it all came to an end because Sonica had arrived. My new friend fleed in terror. Come back. I was absolutely furious. Sonica had sent another wave my way, but I wasn't going to let it stop me. This ends here. As the giant colossal wave approached me, I prepared to jump over it with my tropical sword. The armor's oceanic powers engulfed me and I sped through the ocean, dodging the waves as they came at me. I leapt over the final wave and then sped through the ocean to find Sonica. This ends now. She stared me down. It was time to fight. Sonica fired a sonic boom at me, so I returned with my blade. 
She tried chewing through my armor, then fired a sonic boom, launching me across the tropical ocean. The current was too strong to swim against, so I used my ocean bow to fire across the distance, causing damage. Sonica was enraged, but I continued dodging her sonic booms and firing arrows. I saw an opportunity to strike, so I closed the gap and started slicing at Sonica. But then she did a ton of damage, and whilst I was trying to eat, she released an ink sac that was extremely poisonous. I couldn't get close. She then started sending lethal tidal waves towards me, but I used the power of the armor to dodge the attacks. I was absolutely exhausted. My bow was no longer penetrating her coral-like scales. I had no choice but to use the power of the armor and my sword to finally strike Sonica down. It was over. She lay there floating, still, and then suddenly poofed into a bunch of bubbles. The fight was finally over, so I headed back to my island to make some last few adjustments. I really hope my crab friend returns. I kind of miss him. I placed the final map as if it was a souvenir. Man, what a journey we've been on. The giant turtle returned and also congratulated me. Hey, good job, kid. Thanks, dude. Suddenly lightning struck my island and summoned the god of the sea. It was Poseidon. No time to explain, Chosen One. Come with me. What the? Where am I? It's so cold. Wait, who are you? Wait, no! <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm trapped in the Arctic Ocean, where Norse gods rule the skies, Vikings, goblins, and the undead roam the Arctic seas, and giant monsters lurk everywhere in between. All with one to hunt me down, including this giant killer whale that was chasing me. I was swimming as fast as I could. Suddenly, a flash of lightning illuminated the ocean. The whale fleed in terror. I looked up to find an intense storm, thunder and lightning crashing against the ocean's surface. It was Thor, the god of thunder. Boy! Why do you roam these oceans alone? It is far too dangerous. You must build shelter, and when you're ready, there is a town nearby that may take you in. Be safe, brave one. Use your head. Lightning struck ocean. He was gone. After Thor disappeared in a bolt of lightning, I decided to explore the Arctic Ocean. I stumbled across an iceberg floating on the surface. To my surprise, when I smashed the iceberg, it dropped an item. After this, I continued to float on my ice raft until I found a small frozen island to climb upon. In the distance, I noticed more of the icebergs from earlier floating towards me, so I decided to go ahead and break them. Each floating iceberg dropped useful materials, including some dirt and this tree sapling. Day one came to a close and the night was filled with mobs, so I just chilled underground until it was safe. Day two. During my hunt for food, the tree sapling I planted had finally grown, so I put my fists and wood to good use to craft a full set of basic tools. Now we just wait for the tree sapling. Oh. I decided to make a bunch of doors to create air pockets so I could get my hands on some stone to upgrade my tools. This way, they lasted a little longer when I was gathering materials throughout the day. I grabbed a bunch of snow from a nearby mountain so I could finish the day building a cozy igloo. But this guy wasn't having it. Mr. Wannabe Poseidon over here launched tridents at me left, right, and center, dealing some crazy damage. It sent me into the next day with just half a heart, so I knew I had to get my act together and build some shelter. As you can see, I handcrafted the most intricate and complex igloo design known to the entire human race. The next day, after the mobs were done sunbathing, I grabbed some more stone, crafted myself a furnace, and cooked up some fish. Them Amiga 3 juices be busting. Things suddenly got intense. The ground beneath me began to shake, and to my surprise, the killer whale had returned! This whale's bite packed a punch. I raced to the igloo to replenish my health, but I had nothing. I had no choice but to dive into the freezing waters and grab some grub. The whale taunted me, lurking in the waters. The moment I grabbed the fish, the whale pounced. I launched into a flurry of sword attacks to keep the beast at bay, but its bone-crushing jaws were too powerful. I was down to just half a heart. I quickly fled to the surface and into my igloo to cook the food I risked my life for. With hearts came bravery. I dived back into cold waters to face the giant whale. I sliced and stabbed with my stone sword. Finally, the beast was slain, and with it, 
became a reward. The deep rumbles of our battle had shook icebergs free. I took advantage of the aftermath and smashed the icebergs, grabbing even more useful items I may need on my journey. When I returned to my island, I had visitors, a small waddle of penguins. Thank you for taking down that whale. We can finally swim in peace. We've been watching you for a few days, kid. Impressive igloo, I must say. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. Harold, we you just get to the point? The kid's gonna freeze to death. Wait, what are you talking about? We wanted to tell you sooner. There's a snowstorm that rolls through these parts every few days. And well, today's that day, kid. Get inside! The sky turned white. Everywhere I looked, there were heaps and heaps of snow spiraling around me frantically. I tried racing back to my igloo for cover, but the icy wind swept me from my feet, launching me up and into the Arctic Ocean. I finally crawled my way back to shelter and waited for the storm to pass overnight. With sunrise, the storm had settled. I left my igloo to find the penguins had gone. They were equipped for this kind of scenario, unlike me. No building materials, food or company. I decided it was time to go out exploring and find one of those settlements Thor mentioned. I really hoped they were friendly. I jumped on my ice raft and headed out into the unknown. After some time exploring, it came to an abrupt end as I discovered some mysterious figures in the distance. They were Vikings, calling for help. Our village is under attack. The undead used the storm as cover and then ambushed us. We need all the help we can get. We're losing more and more men. Do I look like Viking material to you? Look at the size of those skeletons. You're braver than you think. Aiding a Viking in battle is always rewarded in our settlement. If you survive, of course. The rewards looked too juicy to turn down. They looked powerful. It was risky, but I decided to accept the quest and head into the village to fend off the undead. I joined the small army of Vikings nearby in their battle with the undead axe bearer. I hit the skeleton a few times, but this creature was huge and dealt some serious damage. I had to retreat quickly. The Vikings finished the beast off. A soldier exclaimed, We'll hold this area, go help the others. I quickly replenished some health and headed in to face the second creature. I dug deep into the front line, striking the gutless creature with my small but reliable stone sword. I stood guard with my viking peers and pushed the beast into freezing waters. With his joints frozen, we dived in, determined to destroy the undead creature. I watched as a viking in rage struck its skeletal frame until it was no more. He signaled to me underwater, head up and finish off the final attacker. It was just me and one other versus the enemy. I used the same tactics from earlier, forcing the skeleton into the ocean, freezing its bones, and then striking it with my sword. It was gone! I did it! I swam to the surface to find the Viking army waiting for me. A true display of bravery. Aha! Let us cheer, boys! The village I had helped save was called Jagolsa, a small but noble Viking town filled with life, food, and materials, which hopefully I could get my hands on. As promised, your rewards for helping us in our victory. A chest appeared in front of me. For completing the quest, I had gained three new items. An arctic fishing rod, a viking axe, and an ice bow infused with an ice mage's magic. Sweet! If helping people is your thing, brave one, head into town. There's always someone in need of help here in Jakulsa. More quests means more rewards, so I headed into Jakulsa, hoping to get more insane weapons. As I wandered through the town, the Vikings were greeting me. One even gifted me a Viking shield. With this new tool in hand, I headed over to a local bystander to see if he had a quest for me. The village is running low on supplies, our mine shaft is out of bounds, and it's all because of a horrid, ice-blooded creature that lurks down there. Oh, listen, dude, if you take this thing out for me, I can use its ice shards to craft you some really useful gear. And Jokulsa's resources resources will be up and running again. It's a win-win. I really needed some better gear, and by the looks of those rewards, I was in for a pickaxe and some magical staffs. I had no choice but to accept the quest from the miner. Before heading out, I stocked up on some food using my new arctic fishing rod, and whilst it was cooking, crafted myself some more stone tools. I then headed into the miner's cave using the town's cart system. The cart looped in circles, leading deeper and deeper into the underground. When I reached the bottom, I discovered a chunk of the cave's wall had been frozen. Could the creature be behind this wall? It was too risky to face this creature unprotected, so let's go ahead and...
With a full set of iron armor, I started mining my way into the frozen wall in search for the monster. Eventually, I reached the end of the tunnel to find a large frozen cave. I headed in carefully. Icicles scattered this creature's lair. At first, I thought I was alone, when suddenly the creature emerged. The frozen beast rattled the cave's walls with its roar, summoning chunks of ice that slashed at my heart, doing some chilling damage. I tried to create some space, retreating slightly. However, the creature let out a monstrous roar, slowing me down. I tried to escape, but the monster doubled down, shooting huge explosive icicle-like bombs that rumbled the entire cave, forcing me to pivot around the creature, using my ice bow to pierce the monster's frozen weak spots. It roared in pain, summoning more chunks of ice to block the arrows. This left me with no choice but to close the gap and strike the icebreaker with my viking axe. My brutal strike smashed masses of ice from the creature's face, forcing the ice monster to summon ice golems from the chunks of ice scattered around this now frozen arena. The golem's sharp, frosty claws bruised me, knocking me back, away from their guardian. But risking my heart, so I relentlessly beat down the ice golems, all whilst dodging the creature's explosive ice bombs. The creature was weak. Its accuracy was fading. I found an opening and struck at the beast with my axe, finally destroying the ice monster. It left behind an ice shard sparkling in this now empty frozen layer. I retrieved the ice shard and headed back to the mine shaft, mining ores along the way. I followed the tunnel home, hopped back in the ice cart, and followed the tracks back to the surface, ready to claim my rewards. Hooray, hooray! Thank you, brave one. And now as for that ice shard, let me just... <laughs> Go just take this. Boom. Okay, and now a little minor magic. All done. Here you go. A chest appeared in front of me. Inside lied three items. A durable pickaxe, a small ice staff, and a large glacier staff, infused with the shard's ultra abilities. The miner thanked me for completing the quest and headed back safely into the mine shaft. I decided to leave Jacosa for a few days and head home. I used my new staff's ice attacks to clear the sky of phantoms. The storm was getting worse, so I took shelter in my igloo until the beautiful morning came, then headed underground. I killed this baby zombie, then used my tools to collect resources, including ores, deep slate, and wood from a mine shaft. I returned home, made some space on my island, and built a small and humble house out of wood and deep slate. I added some chests for storage. All I needed was a bed, as I was tired of fighting phantoms. So I headed back to Jacolsa to see if I could grab one. Whilst walking through the town, I stumbled across an argument. Hey, be grateful you've got any food at all. Oh, I'm sick of eating that fish. I headed up to see if I could help. The townspeople are tired of eating the same food every day. Fish, 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 but it's not my fault. I lost my recipe books. I can't cook without my recipe books. Hey, listen, you think you could find them? I lost them whilst looking for plants out at sea, near the great cold Sierra. It's dangerous out there, but nothing your magic staffs can't handle. <laughs> I was certainly ready for another adventure, and the rewards looked insane. Just look at that. What even is that? I went ahead and accepted the chef's quest. I left the Viking island and jumped on my iceberg. The boy heads into danger. I must keep an eye on him. During my voyage, I took on a couple of undead skeletons using my magical staffs. The big dude was tough as nails, but I used my glacier staff to line the floor with spikes, followed by a summoning of ice crystals that fell from the sky. The explosive frost kept the gutless creature in place whilst I finished him off with my axe. And looks like I gave this guy his home back. I had finally made it. This was the Frozen Sierra. Its rocky structure was hard to navigate. The mountains were filled with deadly frozen spirits, frozen mobs, and of course, phantoms and creepers. This place is hell, man. During the morning, I found the first recipe book. All the commotion must have shifted the snow. With four left to find, I got to work pretty quickly. One recipe book was stuck on an ice pillar, so I used my fishing rod to pull it down to ground level, where I spent the night during a snowstorm. I found the third book being guarded on the top of a mountain by a snowy tiger. I tried sneaking up on him, but he heard me coming and sprinted towards me. I channeled a beam of ice to keep the tiger back. I took out the tiger with my axe and picked the recipe book up. I studied the maze-like mountains in the frozen Sierras. The puzzling paths led me to a structure in the frosty canyon. As I approached the building, I heard screams. Before I could head in, the wooden doors were busted open, revealing a giant bearded dude. He threw one of his axes at me. Stop right there, you little intruder. He grabbed his axe from the ground. But I heard screams. What are you doing in there? Do you not know who I am? I'm Bjorn. I feast on screams. I roam this ocean, claiming all that is rightfully mine. Now leave. You're wasting my time, and I've got a Viking town to pillage. And I'd like to get there before nightfall. 
Viking town? You mean Jacolsa? I can't let you take it. Ooh, someone's feeling brave. I'm gonna enjoy this. The pillager jumped into the air and came crashing down with his axes, summoning bolts of lightning. He then clawed at me with his weapons. He missed his second swing, giving me a chance to strike him with my own Viking axe. He countered with another slam attack, then threw his axe. I returned with a beam of ice using my glacier staff, combined with a flurry of ice bombs freezing Bjorn in place. When he broke free, he tried running. The boy fights well, but is he ready to wield the hammer? We shall see. With one final strike, the giant pillager was gone. He left behind more axes and a helmet. Turns out the beard were as fake as his threats. When I told the mystery hostage you were safe, out came a lonely villager. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's a miracle you came when you did. Why are you out here anyway? No one visits these mountains unless they need to. Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking for recipe books. A chef from a Viking village lost them. If I return them, it's gonna give me some pretty sweet gear. Wait. You mean these? Yes! How did you find those? I found them whilst exploring the mountains. You'd be amazed what you find in these parts. Here, take the books. Thank you so much for saving me. The villager gave me the last two recipe books I needed. He headed back inside, and I headed back ready to claim my rewards. Oh, Jacosa. <laughs> I better tell the others. Fresh meat. <laughs> Little did I know that I was being followed by a group of ice goblins back to the Viking town. I made it back to Jacolsa and returned the recipe books to the chef. I'm so happy you found them. Let us celebrate with a gathering this evening. You can help with the preparation using your rewards. Build a farm area and plant potatoes and carrots. I'll use them in my recipes to make us all a delicious meal. Oh, and go and speak to the miner. He has a little gift for you to help with the farm prep. I had completed the quest. Another chest filled with rewards. I had obtained a brutally sharpened icy spear, a bunch of health potions, and a water-infused hoe, which brought me on to my next task. I headed underground using the cart system to find the miner had resided in the old ice creature's lair. I was really feeling my impact on this town. The miner had used more ice shards to craft me a glacier shovel, which I used to grab a load of dirt so I could plant the seeds I'd collected from the floating icebergs. For the next couple days, I built a small farm area where I used my new tool to plant carrots, potatoes, and other vegetables for the chef's gathering. I also grabbed some wool so I could craft a bed after the gathering. Finally, nightfall was here and the Vikings had gathered to eat the chef's tasty meal. Finally, not just fish, but things were about to go south. Did you poison all of the food in the farm? Of course I did, just enough to send them all to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your little party. Overlooking the Viking town, a goblin watched as we all celebrated. But little did we know that the goblins had poisoned the food. I began to feel lightheaded. The town was in danger. I began to panic. I wouldn't be there to help defend Jacolsa. Before I knew it, my vision started fading and I passed out. Ah. A large squad of ice goblins watched as their poison knocked out the guards one by one until the whole town was asleep. They creeped in house to house. Their intentions were clearly evil. The next morning I awoke to find myself in a secret room and one of the king's guards were explaining what had happened. And during the night the goblins snuck in and kidnapped our town's best men. I think they're gonna eat them, but our scouts have managed to find the goblin camp. Go speak to the king quickly. I left the secret room and sprinted past the guards into the king's humble home. Oh my. This is a total disaster. Those are our best men. You have to help us, brave one. The goblins will spot one of my Viking men from a mile away. But you, oh yes, you, you're small and fierce. You'll be able to sneak right in and rescue my men. Bring them back safely, brave one, and you'll take your place as my captain. Here in Jakusa, I'll have my miner craft you the finest armor the Arctic Ocean has ever seen. This reward was exceptional. The armor looked extremely tough and laced with potential magical abilities. A full set of arctic armor would be perfect for the ocean's icy conditions. So I accepted the quest and started to prepare. I grabbed some potatoes for the road and headed into the mines for diamonds. So I could craft a full set of diamond armor just in case I need to fight the goblins. I jumped on my iceberg and headed out to the goblin camp. En route to the camp, I found myself approaching the coast of the frozen Sierra, which was littered with mobs. I used my new spear to work my way through waves of strays, zombies, and creepers. I discovered the spear knocked back enemies and slowed their movement. This was great when dealing with lots of mobs at once. Whilst working my way through icy peaks, I stumbled across an ice goblin. He was on patrol, but had no idea I was here. I knew I was close to the camp, so I tried sneaking past the icy brute. But just when I thought I was clear, he spotted me and managed to deal some serious damage. I rapidly shoveled through snow to make it out on the other side to safety. The Sierra was a battle in itself, 
myself. But with the help of health potions, I kept my hearts up for just enough time to make it to the goblin camp, which was pretty huge and littered with evil. My nimble size and thick snowfall were my only advantages here. I climbed up onto one of the goblin ships and I was already met with enemies. I creeped past. If I was caught now, they'd surely eat me. It was clear no one suspected I was here. I perched on the edge of the ship to locate a safe path around the goblins. I jumped off the boat and hopped on the ice, sliding past danger. I checked to see if anyone spotted me. I was in the clear. The next area was being guarded by two huge goblin elites, protecting a building. I suspected a viking was in there. I creeped past the goblins, but one almost spotted me, so I sprinted to hide behind the logs. My stealth skills were top-notch. I saw an opening and sprinted around the back of the building. I then broke into it using my axe. You're safe now. Get out of the back and I'll meet you on the other side of the island. Yes, sir. I hope you can save the others. The viking fled up the mountain, and I got moving. The goblins suddenly reacted. Hmm, must have been the wind. <laughs> Whew, that was close. The icy goblin made his way down the path, so I sprinted away to find the other Vikings. I got real close behind this ice goblin. So close that he heard me! The goblin had spotted me! This wasn't the plan! The camp's tower rang piercing bell noises. Suddenly, the whole camp knew of my presence and were on alert. Spears at the ready. The goblins were acrobatic. They launched spears at my head, but I dodged them and struck them down with my ice spear. I continued to defend myself against another group of deadly goblins, then headed into the tall building they were protecting. I found two Vikings imprisoned. After breaking their cage, one of the Vikings stopped to inform me that other Vikings were just one minute away from their demise. They were locked away above the chief goblin's fire pit. I had to act fast. There was no way I was failing this quest. 60 seconds left. The first dude was acrobatic. After flinging a spear at my head, he front flipped and kicked me midair. I used my staff to freeze him in place, suffocating him. I was really against the time here, so I fought with efficiency, striking down enemies with haste. After the area was cleared, I threw down a health potion. You'll never make it through me. The cursed ice goblin used his staff to summon a snowy hurricane. With just 30 seconds on the clock, I had to act quickly. The wind was making it almost impossible to move freely. I pulled out my ice staff and fired it into the clouds. I was hoping that the staff's energy was enough to dissipate the snowstorm. It worked! What? How did you... No! The goblin was enraged. We exchanged attacks, which left me with just half a heart. The goblin fell. Oh no! Just five seconds. I had to run as fast as possible. I sprinted through the doors to find the goblin chief and his bodyguards. You're too late, little worm. Your vikings are toast and you can't save them. I jumped into the fire pit, risking my heart, and used my ice shovel to quickly put out the fire to save the vikings. The goblin laughed. Oh, you may have put out a little fire, but try escaping with your life. My bodyguards won't let you. <laughs> Suddenly, the building started shaking, and I could hear thunder. It can't be. It was Thor. Bolts of lightning surrounded the Norse god as he descended in a rage, striking the town with his elemental powers. The goblins fell like dominoes, and the villainous town began to catch fire. I ran outside to greet him again. Need a hand, brave one? The goblin chief is about to do something horrible. I can't let the people of Jakulsa die because of me. Thor turned towards the chief's home and used his hammer to strike it with lightning. <gasps> Lightning? Fine, take your men, but I'll have my revenge. <laughs> Thor flew into the sky. I quickly mined the cage, freeing the Vikings, and then began our escape. We ran through the town, which had been devastated by Thor. Once we made it to the other side, Thor was waiting for us. Impressive work, brave one. Jakulsa's men live to see another day. How about you head back on your raft? I'll fly these men back to Jakulsa. Wow, thank you, Thor. You really showed the moose boss. I'll meet you back at Jakulsa. Another quest completed. I headed back through icy waters, ready to retrieve my rewards. Upon my return, Thor, the king, and his town were all waiting waiting for me, cheering. Let us all celebrate for Jakulsa's new captain! Your armor, as promised, my friend. The chest appeared and fireworks popped above. Inside was my brand new armor. Woo! I was looking like a true warrior. Try walking on water, brave one. Test your armor's ability. The armor granted me frost walker and ice resistance, which will definitely keep me protected. The town celebrated from morning to night. We were all drinking the tavern special drink, and some of us had a little too much. <laughs> the next morning, I was collecting resources, walking on water, breaking tons of icebergs with my ice staff. I used my armor to run all the way home so I could finally craft a bed and sleep. Next day, I displayed my captain's helmet, which which now marked this small icy island as property of Jakulsa. I wanted to expand my home a little more and enchant my new armor, so I grabbed a bunch of saplings from the frozen blocks, created a small tree farm and headed underground whilst I waited for the trees to grow. I mined a bunch of ores and other materials. Hey, yo, bro, I'm captain of Jakulsa now. I ain't got to talk to zombie peasants like you, all right? I, of course, grabbed obsidian so I could build a nether portal when I get home, which, of course, would be a totally safe and normal nether trip with no evil monster interference whatsoever. You'd think, right?
I stumbled across a stone generator from Wish, which I took total advantage of, and then I headed back, hit some Z, and then began expanding my base using the wood, stone, and deep slate I'd collected on my mining trips. I built the nether portal and lit that bad boy up. I'm thinking I'll put the enchantment table here, but I'll need more XP if I want to enchant the rest of my armor. So I grabbed some sleep and prepared to enter the nether, but there was someone waiting for me by the portal. Luckily, they were friendly. Dude, you're not gonna believe this. The nether is, uh, frozen. One minute I'm trading gold with some piglin friends of mine. The next, this huge frosty monster or just starts freezing everything. I lost a ton of gear and gold in there. It's all frozen up. You think you could go in there and try to get my stuff? As captain of Jacolsa, I of course wanted to help the adventurer. Plus that little frosco looks like a great companion to help me conquer the Arctic Ocean. So I accepted the quest and headed into the now frozen nether. Oof, it was freezing here. Everything was iced over, but of course these guys were still kicking around. I mined cords for XP, then headed to the adventurer's last known location, which was completely surrounded by undead looters. So I used my spear to take them all out, then proceeded to try and mount the ice with a flint and steel, in hopes that it would reveal the adventurer's loot. Oh, you doofus. You can't just melt this stuff. I'm guessing you're a friend of Halfhorn. Listen, listen, I'll help you out. About 20 minutes ago, some round jumping bounty hunters rolled through here and locked up a lava stone golem. Now, they're worth serious money for their ability to reach high temps. Luckily for you, those temps will be enough to melt this place back to normal. Find the bounty hunters, find your golem. Good luck, kid. I trawled through the frozen nether until I found one of the bounty hunters. I tried approaching them. Stop following me. They teleported away from me, disappearing into the void. I carried on hunting, mining XP on the way, until I found her again. This time, the bounty hunter attacked me with her giant claws, but my new armor absorbed her hits. She fled in frustration again. The heads-on approach clearly wasn't working, so I used the high ground to track her down and followed her without her knowing. Suddenly, a portal appeared and she jumped through. This had to be where they're keeping the lava stone golem. I approached the portal. Halt! By order of the Hunter's Guild, I demand you to stop following us. We have no business with you. I'm Captain of Jakul, sir. Release the golem, and I'll let you walk free. Captain of what now? Enough of this, you little nerd. I'm taking you in. You puny humans are worth a lot of money. A battle commenced. I began striking the hunter's long sword with my spear, but he was too skilled a swordsman. He counted with three devastatingly heavy swings, knocking me airborne. I returned with more strikes, this time dealing damage, but he was too smart. He looked for an opening and caught me, leaving me with just half a heart. I pulled out my magic staff and used its ice energy to finish off the bounty hunter. Oof, bro's life is in pieces. I finally headed into the portal. Inside was a giant lava chamber. I walked up to the lava stone golem. Have you come to my aid, my child? I see you possess tools made with ice shards. Break the spell keeping me here by putting out the fires that surround me. I did as the lava stone golem instructed, then led him to the portal out to the other side. How can I ever repay you? Well, I explained my quest and took him to the adventurous frozen gear. I asked the golem if he could restore the nether. Sounds erupted from the golem. The entire nether felt suddenly extremely hot, and in a flash, all the ice had melted and evaporated away. Revealing the adventurous items, the golem flew away. I retrieved the frozen items and headed back home to complete the quest. I placed down the crate and... Okay. And I gave him his sword. Yo, you did it! You unfroze the nether and got my stuff. The quest was completed, and my new companion appeared. Oh, bro! He's so sweet! Frosty the goat was my new companion. He defended my island all night with his ice attacks. Then we headed to bed. <laughs> Things were happening and I had no idea. Evil was plotting. Danger was certainly on its way. Nobody could prepare themselves for the devastation that was to come. The next day, I wanted to spend my XP on enchanting. And I thought, as captain of Jacolsa, I earned my right to the bookcases from Jacolsa's library. So, with my new ice katana in hand, Frosty and I headed out to Jacolsa. I made it to the enchantment table and enchanted the rest of my gear. Whilst enchanting, the whole town began to shake. I looked outside to find the town was being attacked and Thor was fighting alone. I headed down and started fighting fighting the undead alongside Thor. Whilst his giant hammer bashed enemies, I struck undead looters with my ice spear. Thor's hammer flew past my head, buzzing with electric. I finished off the last few looters whilst Frosty pierced them with his arctic spike attack. Thor finished off the last skeleton by launching his hammer into the air, then brought it back. I wish I had one of those hammers now because a giant ice beast revealed himself from under the ice. Thor seemed to know the beast. The creature was extremely powerful. It began to slam the ground, bringing down razor sharp crystals. The creature possessed the same powers as my staff but on a whole other level. I had to act tactically. I fired a few bow shots from a distance, then used my staff to pin down the creature. Thor then struck him with his deadly lightning. The giant beast retreated. You think you've won, Thor, but Ragnarok is already here. We must move quickly, brave one. I will explain on the way. Where are we going? Asgard. I held onto Thor's hammer as he began to fly up. 
Whoa! We landed in a crop field. I asked why Thor was so worried when the creature said Ragnarok is here. Ragnarok. Where ice and fire become one. All things come to an end, including my home Asgard. Everyone and everything in the Arctic Ocean will be destroyed. The only way to prevent this is to defeat the Lord of Ice and the Lord of Fire. But to do this, you'll need some help from the gods. You'll need your own god-powered hammer. Let's go, brave one. I grabbed the hammer and we flew to Thor's home. This was Asgard, a city in the clouds filled with beautiful architecture and mesmerizing nature. When we landed, Thor told me I was to follow him to the altar. Before I could be granted the powers of a god, he must first ask the gods. My lord, with Ragnarok approaching, I cannot defeat the ice and fire lord by myself. The boy has clearly proven himself. I leave it in your hands. The room felt eerie. I could feel the energy from the gods above. I was nervous. I was nervous they wouldn't grant me the hammer, and Ragnarok would occur, destroying all the progress we've made this 100 days. Suddenly, lightning bolts struck the altar, and a brand new shiny hammer was revealed, crafted by the Norse gods. I retrieved my own hammer and thanked the gods for letting me join their team. The hammer tingled and buzzed. It was filled with abilities. First, I discovered that the hammer could carry me. I had gained the ability to fly. This was amazing! Thor wanted to show me the basics on how to use the hammer for combat, so we flew over Asgard's beautiful landscapes and into a training arena. Let's make this quick. The simulation began. My first strike was powered by a bolt of lightning. The second, I could summon lightning strikes from the sky to damage the enemy. The third was a ground pound attack. And finally, my favorite, I could throw the hammer and it would return! No way! Nice work. We were ready, equipped for battle. The fate of humanity was at stake. We entered the portal and returned to the Arctic Ocean. We must stop them from joining forces. I will look for the Ice Lord. You must look for the Lava Lord. Good luck. He flew away on his hunt for one of the Lords. I said my goodbyes to Frosty and flew in a bolt of energy, traveling past the sound barrier. I searched high and low for any sign of the Lords pairing together, but we had no luck until I found the beginning of the end. Meteors were falling from the sky, destroying the earth beneath it. I found Thor battling the Lava Lord. It was nearly too late. They had already found each other. Inside, boy, defeat the Ice Lord. I did as Thor said and flew into the temple, ready to face the Ice Lord. <laughs> the world ends today. The beast roared in rage and came stomping towards me. I used my katana to try and cut the beast's limbs off, but it was too strong. He hurled an ice pearl at me. I returned with a hammer throw, but I missed. The Ice Lord began to spin. He was growing stronger. It could all end here. Enough was enough. I channeled all my power into flight and hurled myself at the monster, beating him down with one final smash. I had defeated the Ice Lord, but I had to hurry, as he can be revived if the Lava Lord survives. We need to destroy both. I headed out into meteor showers to help Thor defeat the Lava Lord. I threw my hammer, but it didn't return. Wait, wait, no, 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 I'm way too vulnerable. This could be the end. I retreated back to Thor to see if he could protect me. He told me to get my staff out and pin him down with the energy from the ice staff. I pinned him down while Thor finished the Lava Lord off. We did it! We defeated them both and stopped Ragnarok. Suddenly the hammer came back. This is the best thing that came out of this whole 100 days. I thanked Thor. Look at the devastation. It was minutes away from hitting the ocean, then everything else. I returned home to Jakulsa, and Frosty was waiting for me. I have one last quest, and it's for you. Go join my Discord. You won't regret it. Stranded in the middle of the tropical ocean, I will have just 100 days to transform my island into the most valuable treasure island in all of the seven seas. I'll be looting treasure-filled ships, facing dangerous pirate captains, exploring mysterious islands, and even battling a gigantic kraken. Will I become the richest pirate that ever lived? Let's find out. A1 was extremely intense. I was being chased by a pirate, and they did extreme amounts of damage. Already losing half of my hearts, I had to get out of here. The only the only way I was getting off this island was with a wooden raft, so I headed towards the tree and started grabbing some wood. But I didn't have much time. He was closing in. Just three logs. That was enough. I then headed towards the ship. I saw some barrels, so I grabbed some stuff. I even managed to steal a gold ingot. I then sprinted away. He was going to kill me. I had to hurry. I noticed there was a crafting table, so using the materials I grabbed from the barrels, I made myself a wooden raft. 
It was time to confidently walk the plank. The pirate was closing in, but it was time to get out of here. I placed my raft down and started floating away. Yeah, I managed to escape. I'll send every pirate I know after you, lad! You regret coming here! <laughs> The furious pirate had no choice but to watch as I paddled away. I couldn't believe I'd escaped, but I had took a lot of damage. So there I was, stranded in the middle of the ocean, and you're probably wondering why this dude was even chasing me in the first place. Well, you see, this is Pirate Cove, home of the pirates that will be hunting me down for the next 100 days. Why, you ask? Well, you see that big red X? Underneath that is some of the most insane pirate loot in all of the seven seas. Cannon guns, treasure, all of it, and I was so close! But then I got caught and had to sprint away, and here I am looking for somewhere to stay. As day one continued, I finally came across a small stranded island. So I headed over with my raft, hopped off and took a look around. Limited resources, I know, but I knew I could make this place my home. I noticed on the floor there was an unlit campfire, and I had a little bit of fish left, so I lit that bad boy up. But before I could get started, cooking, somebody in the distance was coming towards me on a raft. Please don't tell anybody I'm here. I'm hiding from pirates. Oh, it's you they're hunting for. Well, boy, if you give me one gold coin, I'll keep your secret. Thank you so much. You can have me fishing rod too, me laddie. It'll help you get resources. I acted quickly. I punched down the tree and made myself a full set of basic tools. I then grabbed some stone, crafted a furnace, and started smelting up that gold ingot I grabbed into the gold coin. I exchanged it for both a fishing rod and secrecy. Thank you, strange man. Luckily, the tree dropped a sapling, so I planted that bad boy down and spent most of the night fishing. Day two consisted of pretty much the basics. Get the food, cook the food, eat the food, get more food. Rinse and repeat. And then I crafted myself a chest so I could store all of the food I was getting. And that's pretty much it. I took a look around the area, saw some pretty beautiful sights. I mean, check out this whale. Hello. I also spotted some coal, but as you can see, well, I can't breathe underwater and I can't mine that fast. So this was proving to be quite the challenge. I had no choice but to mine the very little space I had just so I could craft basic tools. But then I was ambushed. A drowned spider. It doesn't look intimidating, but it did a ton of damage. Leaving me with just half a heart, I had no choice but to swim away. Whilst I was restoring my health, the jungle sapling grew into a beautiful tree. Lightning struck. It was all very intense. I chopped up the tree killed the spider and then prayed for a sapling while I chopped into the leaves. I had the worst luck ever. The more leaves I chopped, the more worried I became. Yep, no saplings. I couldn't believe it. This journey just got extremely difficult. Using the last few planks I had, I crafted some doors, headed underwater, and started creating air pockets in hopes to find a cave. The deeper I swam, the more luck I had. I got to work collecting as many ores as possible, but peace and quiet ended when a skeleton struck me with its arrow, leaving me with just one heart. I sprinted away as fast as possible. Using my Kenobi instincts, I took the high ground, but it was just too risky. I didn't want to lose my life. I managed to find some iron. I crafted a furnace, rapidly smelted the resources, and crafted a shield, but not even that was enough to save me. I was hit once again. Half a heart. Things were getting intense. I had to escape. Is there something in my eye? <laughs> I chipped away at stone and chewed through many different ores. I even crafted an iron pickaxe. With just half a heart, I had to find my way home as fast as possible. Once I made it back, I crafted a full set of iron armor so I would be more protected for the future. I then did some fishing and then utilized my campfire to cook up the fish and finally regain some health. Oh, I then got to work on a very complicated build. This'll do for now. I crammed as much as I could in this room and then I crafted myself a boat because tomorrow on day five, I want to head out and do some exploring because I can store stuff in my boat. Day five rolled around and it was time to go exploring. I jumped in my boat and headed as far away from my island as possible. Breathed in that sea air and finally came across a small island. I didn't think anybody was on it till I approached it. And I did try and negotiate with these guys, but the castaways were just too interested in beating me over the head with paddles. I was on one and a half heart. I dived into the water and tried to create some space between us. But then I noticed he was trying to steal my boat. So I had to take him out and then finish off the others. Loot-wise, I was pretty lucky as I found a diamond. 
small step in becoming the richest in all of the seven seas. I noticed there was another little island, so I stored my stuff on the boat and then stole pretty much everything I could see on this island, including the seeds, because that would mean I could get some food. I then headed over to another island not too far away and decided to investigate. More castaways, and these guys were pretty aggressive, but using my axe I managed to strike them down. These guys were sort of having trouble falling through the hole, so it made it pretty easy taking them out. Once I climbed into the watchtower, I opened up the chest. Inside was loads of gold and illager nuggets, which I can use to craft pirate pistols. I then grabbed a bunch more wood, hopped in my boat, and traversed the beautiful seas until I finally made it home. An intense few days indeed, but I had a long way to go and a lot planned, including getting a ton of treasure and also crafting a giant ship, because once I make it to Pirate Cove, I'll need plenty of space to store all of that treasure I collect from the hidden vault. However, I've been dodging drowned and sharks all whilst collecting materials because, yep, you guessed it, time to get building. solid few days. Making the most of limited resources, I had the build finished, and then I got to work planting the very little seeds I had, so I had an unlimited food source. I then made some more gold coins, and then, whoa, whoa, what is that? Oh no! The pirates have found me! It had to act fast. I crafted myself an iron sword and headed out. But the sleepless nights had attracted phantoms. I had to deal with these guys first. These stealthy night walkers were working in unison to dive bomb me. But with combination of my sword and shield, I managed to deflect their hits, taking them out one by one. The final squad swooped in, but they were no match for me and my sword. The warship had clearly anchored, so I took advantage and the next day headed in on my boat. I was preparing for the worst. I steadily scaled the side of this wooden beast. When I I reached the top, a cannoneer holding a pistol began firing at me, and with no hesitation, he knocked me off, but then he dived in after me. My shield could only withstand so much, and he started to do serious damage. I thought this was the moment I would lose my life until I was saved by a shark. A shark began attacking the pirate, and he became occupied. This was my moment. With just one heart left, I began to swim away. A successful second attempt. I made it on the boat, but I was met with skeleton pirates. The ultimate sword fight began to play out. With the deck now cleared, it was time to head deeper into this ship. I didn't know what to expect, but it definitely wasn't this. An entire army of pirates was waiting for me. They began to level my shield with bullets. I sprinted away and tried to hide in the corner. There was just too many of them. The pirates' sporadic gunfire ended up damaging each other, leaving me with just one pirate to face. He tried to take me out with his pistol, but using my sword and shield, I defeated him. Like seriously, I cannot believe I survived that. I make a good pirate. I seem to have found myself in some sort of treasure room and as I opened the chests, it revealed gold coins. I also found resources like sand, but I could still hear enemies. So it was time to head back up top and clear the rest of the ship. I battled fiercely to defeat the remaining pirates, but nothing could stop me from being jumped by a creeper. Man, that was a close one. I got to work raiding the ship, even grabbed myself some wool, then headed down to have a proper good look at the treasure room. I grabbed some pretty cool stuff like this bone cutler sword, but the best part was the tree saplings. You have no idea how badly I've needed saplings, so finding this was a godsend. I continued to investigate and found a map inside a chest. More treasure, it seems, or maybe even a clue on how to get back to Pirate Cove. I continued to look around the ship when I came across this room filled with TNT and a little parrot. It seems the pirates had captured him here, so I tamed him with a little bit of seed, but then things went bad quickly. Lightning had struck the boat. It was on fire, and with all this TNT, I'd have to get out of here fast. I tried to mine it all, but I just didn't have time. It was time to evacuate. I leapt from the ship and waited for my new little friend. I got out of there as fast as possible and watched as the entire ship set ablaze. The TNT had caught fire and a giant explosion erupted. I quickly crafted a bed, placed it inside my house, and got a good night's rest. And the parrot too. Day 21 was here, so I was working on my island. I made a little perch for my parrot, which by the way, you can give him a name if you like. I then built a small area where I could plant my saplings and watch trees grow, and then made a small expansion on the island with some wooden walkways. And I could also leave my boat here too. 
I then got a good night's rest because on day 23, I geared up and went strip mining. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I love my strip mining. So I got to work collecting as many ores as I possibly could until I finally found diamonds. Oh, look at it. Beautiful, amazing, that little twinkly sound. It just never gets old. I strip mined for days collecting resources. I even came across these weird looking rooms filled with mobs and crystals. There was so much loot too. After looting all the chests, I really liked the stone bricks on the wall. So I decided to mine pretty much the entire room. When I returned home, I crafted a full set of diamond armor ready to head out to that treasure island. I was hoping to get some sort of map or clue on how I can find my way back to Pirate Cove. I voyaged across the tropical ocean day and night, looting everything I could find, fighting mobs. But then I was ambushed by an entire gang of drowned. One of them was launching their trident at me, but I managed to take them all down. And I picked up a trident in the process. Pretty lucky if you ask me. Day 45, I almost died because a shark managed to get inside my boat. Like, what are the chances of that? Like, please explain that to me. <laughs> I finally made it, the first island. It was colossal in size, with broken shipwrecks covered all over the mountains. I was pretty intimidated. I approached the shore, and I quickly noticed there were pirates everywhere. They were well armed and well prepared. They knew I was coming. I almost had my life taken once my shield was destroyed, but I managed to create some distance, and they ended up falling in the gap. Things did get pretty intense though when this one captain got me down to one and a half hearts. It was a pretty close one. I finally came across some sugar cane, so I kept it for later. And then it was getting too dark and too dangerous, so I headed inside the side of the mountain and stayed for the night. Tomorrow I'd go treasure hunting. Day 47, our first sign of treasure. But as I approached, I was ambushed by this mantis thing that kept setting me alight. I had to battle it. I felt bad killing the little critter, but gotta do what I gotta do. I broke through the X and fell into the hole. There was definitely treasure here. When I opened the chest, I saw a pirate hat, health potions, and a bunch of gold ingots. It wasn't the best treasure I'd ever seen, but it was definitely a great start on this journey. At least I look like a pirate now, because the hat's pretty cool. The chest disintegrated to obsidian. I continued to traverse the island, dodging giant snakes, which I also hate, by the way. I noticed a bunch of pirates at the top of the mountain, so I began to scale the shipwrecked structure in hopes to find any clues about Pirate Cove. When I made it to the top, they were waiting for me, carrying giant cannons which obliterated anything it touched. I cleared the area as fast as possible, knocking enemies off the side and watching as they fall. I finally found a chest. This must have been what they were protecting. I opened the chest to find another map. When I looked, it was another island containing treasure. One step closer to our final goal. Then I was ambushed. A giant cannon had hit me, leaving me with half a heart, but I didn't want to waste a health potion, so I used my shield. I was deflecting his hit successfully until he made a grave mistake. <laughs> See you later, buddy. I noticed in the distance another pirate ship. This must have been the captain that sent these pirates after me, so I headed down to face him. If you're enjoying the content so far, hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. On that ship was one of the captains that was sending pirates after me. I managed to get up top and prepare for a stealthy attack, but then- I can hear you, lad. I know you're here. My cover was blown, so I jumped down with a water bucket and decided to face the captain. His cannons did extreme amounts of damage, but I headed in with my sword and started striking. The captain was powerful and his cannon packed a punch, almost killing me in one single blow. I had to create some distance. Things turned south pretty quickly though when he hit me with his cannon and left me with just half a heart. I had to choose my next moves intelligently. I decided to race to the bottom of the boat. I threw down a health potion and then used the maze-like interior to dodge the cannon shots, but it wasn't enough. He managed to hit me and get me down to just half a heart once again. I had to flee. My heart was absolutely pounding and he was chasing after me. One hit and it was all over. I managed to sneak outside, eat some food and head back in. I was deflecting the hits. It was doing a lot of damage, but then he broke my shield. I had to think fast. I ran to the lower deck of the boat. It seemed to be some sort of armory. I dug my way out the bottom of the boat and swam out to sea, but it didn't stop him. This captain was relentless. He fired his cannon at me, creating space. I used it to my advantage. I mined my way back into the ship and found a pirate gun and some ammo. The boat was clearly carrying a weapon shipment, so I used it to my advantage, took all of the ammo I could, headed out and started firing my pirate pistol at the captain. It did severe amounts of damage. We had a shootout between each other, when finally, I defeated the captain. He dropped a ton of loot. I couldn't believe I defeated him. 
He left a colossal amount of XP and loot. I headed back to the boat and grabbed all of the chests I could, ready for a project back at home. An extremely intense few days, but it was time to head back. Hey there, little buddy. I miss you too, little guy. <laughs> I planted some sugar canes, and then I had the idea to build a storage room for all my treasure. Let's get to work. <laughs> I dedicated some time to building a small wall around my island. It gave the island a sort of textured feel and looked really nice. I continued to make visual improvements, including a big red X. Day 63, I was visited by the wandering trader, but I had to kill his llamas for the leads. Sorry, bro. And then went to the storage facility that I had built and stored all of my treasure inside. I was feeling pretty rich at this point, but I was nowhere near being the richest in all of the seven seas. I'll have to get back to Pirate Cove for that. Day 64, and I wanted to visit the new island, so I crafted myself a brand new boat. It was definitely an upgrade. It had a ton of storage and even had sails this time. Day 65 couldn't come quick enough. I grabbed my map, jumped in my boat, and set sail. It was time to find that treasure. I sailed day and night in search for this treasure island. There was no doubt that there were going to be pirates and captains waiting for me. I approached the shore. This island was gigantic. It was incredible. I approached the shore, but it was eerily quiet. I began to mine my way through the marking, and as I fell in, it was filled with snakes. I was absolutely terrified. Oh, I hate snakes. I hate them so much. I can't believe they managed to get in here. After defeating the snakes, I opened the chest to see a bunch of treasure, health potions, and a sword that gave me special abilities by channeling the power of the seven seas. I decided to wait in my boat overnight, and when I woke up, it seems a bunch of pirates were transporting TNT. I decided to use my pirate pistol like a sniper, picking long-range shots, but then they were closing in. I used the ability of the sword to create distance. It's easier to get away from threats, but they can still catch you off guard. I decided to investigate where the skeleton pirates were coming from, but the door wouldn't open, so I used my sword to hop on top and see if I could get over. I noticed two bomber pirates, but the strangest thing happened. They just started throwing bombs at each other. Like, bro, what are you doing? You're meant to be fighting me. I channeled the power of the sea to hop to the other building and then use my pirate pistol to take him out. I was certainly earning my reputation as a deadly pirate. Inside the building seemed to be a full set of pirate armor. It was incredible. I put it on and I looked amazing. Ha ha ha. I knew you would fall for it. The entire Seven Seas has been looking for you, boy. You're coming with me. What the? You're getting locked away in the prison. Your stuff's in the chest and you ain't getting it back. I couldn't believe it. I had been captured. The captain stunned me and forced me into a cell. I had no idea how I was going to get out of here alive. They made me stay an entire night until a giant kraken had attacked the boat. The captain came running. A kraken just ate my entire crew. I'm gonna need you, lad. I can't face it alone. But why should I help you? <laughs> I'll let you go free. I mean, I'd rather stay here than be eaten by a kraken, though. Please, I'll give you the map to Pirate Cove. I know that's what you've been looking for. Deal. An unlikely team, but a team nonetheless. I grabbed my stuff from the chest and prepared to fight. Army matey. The Kraken was too far to reach, so we dropped a boat, jumped off the ship, and leapt in. We closed in on the tentacled beast and began shooting. Arr! We unloaded bullet after bullet into the Kraken. It was furious. It began attacking us. We paddled the boat as fast as we could to get away. One hit with that sword, it'll take the Kraken out. The captain was right. With my seven seas cutlass, I would be able to get close enough and channel the power to defeat this beast. We battled for days on end. Its colossal tentacles obliterated anything in its path. But this Kraken knew its fate. It began to fluster in panic. And with a strike of my sword, I defeated the beast with the power of the seven seas. I swam to the surface, out of breath. I was exhausted. I picked up the loot. I guess it's time to head back to the captain. Thank you so much. Because of you, my entire ship is saved. You're the best pirate that I've ever seen in all of the Seven Seas. Now, as promised, here's the map to Pirate Cove. But be careful. It's extremely dangerous, and they're also expecting you. Oh, and don't let anyone know that I gave you that map. Good luck, me laddie. Now get out of here quick, before I change my mind. 
The captain had given me exactly what I needed, the map to Pirate Cove. I headed home and headed straight for my storage facility. I wanted to store all of the pirate treasure I'd collected so far. I checked on my sugar canes, grabbed some wood, and crafted an enchantment table ready to build. I wanted a really simple, open plan build where I could really appreciate the ocean when I looked out. I was pretty impressed with the final result. I was really proud of everything I'd accomplished so far. My island looked pretty great. I put down my enchantment table but realized I didn't have any blue lapis, so I quickly went and grabbed some of that, headed back and enchanted all of my items. I was prepared to head to Pirate Cove. I was so excited. This time I was fully prepared for a pirate battle. It took me a while to find the island and I was coming across all sorts of different loot on the way when finally I made it. Nobody's gonna be chasing me away this time. I headed in and started firing. There was a lot of pirates waiting for me, but I was more than prepared. Using my Seven Seas Cutlass and my Pirate Pistol, I defeated everybody defending the treasure. Despite a small army, I expected a lot more pirates. It seemed that everybody had left, except one, Captain Agmer. It was time to battle. It seemed he had stayed to defend Pirate Cove. The rest had fleed, knowing I was the deadliest. I tactically hopped, skipped, and jumped over the captain, blocking his hits with my shield and returning with a slice of my blade. With every hit, he dropped treasure. It was incredible. The captain persevered. He was ruthless. He was relentless. He wouldn't stop at nothing. But he was no match for the channeled power of the Seven Seas. The captain fought well, but with one final strike, he was defeated. He dropped a ton of treasure. I picked all of it up. He even dropped a totem of undying. But now it was time to head into the vault of treasure. I was so excited. It's all led to this moment. I mined through. Oh my goodness, it was a drop. Wow, the totem saved me. This place was incredible, but there was an alligator waiting for me. I dodged his snapping jaws and held up my shield. The poor crocodile stunned himself. This place was absolutely incredible. It was filled with treasure from top to bottom. When I opened the chest, it was absolutely crammed with treasure. There was even chests filled with cannons and cannonballs. I grabbed all of the ores and as much treasure as I possibly could. And then I ate the golden banana, which gave me a bunch of health. I grabbed a bunch of these crates. A bunch? I guess you could pardon the pun. <laughs> I managed to mine my way out and finally reached the surface. I waited till the next morning and did a little bit of exploration of the cove, but there was nobody here. It was empty. I couldn't believe it. All that was left was a few angry endermen, which was pretty scary, I'm not gonna lie. But I used my 7C sword and my cannon to completely obliterate them. <laughs> I was absolutely ecstatic. We had conquered Pirate Cove. I headed home. I stored all of my treasure and then began to change my island. I wanted to show off how rich I was by replacing a lot of my wood with gold blocks. Not that I'm a show off or anything. To be fair, I don't even care. I'll throw all my treasure in the sea. This was a complete waste of time. You know, I don't even, okay, I take that back. I take that back. I can't believe I just did that. We did it. We completed the 100 days. My tale begins at the end of the world. Retreat back to base, Coffee. I repeat, retreat. <laughs> CFG, this is actual. You need to move zones. I repeat, move what? zones. The zombies are mutating. Wait, Wait what do you mean mutating? Wait, no! No! Life has changed forever. Hordes of the undead roam our streets and they mutate by the day, changing their forms to become some of the strongest, most difficult enemies I have ever faced. Mercenaries and scavengers roam our lands, fighting the undead, but also each other. Their bases are scattered throughout the world, filled with some of the highest tier weaponry I want to get my hands on to fight the evil hordes. I have three goals. My first goal is to create an army of mercenaries of my own. The second is to construct a giant base filled with automated sentry weapons. My third goal, kill the parasitic leader, stop the mutations and claim back our land. Day one, lost in the zombified wasteland, we start our journey. I'm the coffee fuel genius, let's get to work. I took my first steps on this apocalyptic journey. Heading into the wasteland and surveying the area, it was time to kick off with the basics and grab some wood. But then I encountered a problem. The wood here is dead and wouldn't craft anything. 
This was going to be a lot more difficult than I anticipated. I then ventured further into the wasteland and stumbled across a mercenary outpost. So I headed over, jumping over ravines and hopping over sandy dunes. I finally made it. I came across two mercenaries outside, one of them being healed up by the medic. He informed me that he had been separated from his search party and asked if I would head into a nearby city and find the rest of his team. So I agreed, headed out and found the nearby city. But then I was ambushed by the very team I was looking for. They had been infected, turned into ravenous zombies. I had to get away as soon as possible. I sprinted towards the city. I guess I'd have to tell the mercenary the fate of his friends. However, not just yet. I grabbed some food, grabbed some wood, and made a crafting table. The sun was setting and I was running out of time. I had to craft a bunch of basic tools as quick as possible. Grabbing more wood and grabbing more food, I headed deep into the city. I could hear the zombies coming. I decided to hold refuge in a nearby building, entering very hesitantly, keeping my wits about me. But then a zombie ambushed me! One strike, two strikes! Three strikes, the zombie was down, but then another one appeared. I took them both out, blocked the door, but then I realized I was surrounded. The zombies were trying to break through the glass. I was absolutely terrified. They were surrounding me. I guess I was here for the night. The undead were piling up left, right, and center. Everywhere I turned, death faced me. There was no way out of here alive, so I had to think on my feet. It was time to get tactical. I placed a crafting table and made a wooden shovel and headed down. I thought if I could at least get my hands on some stone, I would be more equipped to take on the undead. But then things got shaky. I was attacked by a skeleton! Oh no! Oh! I had to strike him quickly! One and a half hearts, it could all end here! I struck down the zombie, blocked the hole, and headed deeper underground, getting my hands on some coal. I finally had some light, but it wasn't over. A zombie squeezed through and started dealing some serious damage. I struck him down with my wooden sword. Oh, that was a close one, but I was still surrounded by hundreds of zombies. I crafted some stone tools, placed a furnace, and started cooking up my food. I took a serious beating underground, almost losing my life. I only had two chunks of meat to chew on, but I guess it'll have to do for now. I had to regenerate as much health as possible. Oh, now it's time to get moving. I kicked the doors open and sprinted across, heading into the opposing building, hoping to get my hands on some loot. Speed was key here. I investigated the maze-like corridors as quick as possible, taking on the enemies as I saw them. And eventually, I came across a chest. A survivor must have passed away here and left behind some loot, and inside it was a weapon and a small amount of ammo. This was key to my survival. But then I heard something. I heard a dog. It was risky, but I followed the sound anyway, hoping to find the source of the noise. I couldn't believe it. I almost teared up. It was a little puppy. She'd been trapped here. I tamed her and promised that I would always protect her. She had no idea the impact that she would have on this journey. Bonding time was over though. We teamed up and escaped through a nearby window in hopes to find some food. I would return to the building later. I ended up finding some cows but thought I'd save my bullets and instead use my sword to strike them down and grab some meat. But then we came across some mercenaries. There was no way I was taking these guys on. So instead, I ran back to the building and decided to hold up shelter for the night. I made sure the doggo was okay, and then I defended against the undead with the little ammo that I had. It was a long, hard, difficult night, but at least we had food. I would do anything to keep this dog alive. Day three, it was time to head deeper into the city and see if we could find any more loot. I decided to call my puppy Rex. Thought it was a pretty cool name. It was now time to head into the city. The next step in our 100 days journey wasn't going to be easy. Nature had taken its toll and was overgrown everywhere. We chopped through it and made it into the skyscraper. The aim was to get to the top so we could get a better view of the city. But then I was ambushed. The undead are ruthless and in packs, they can be very dangerous. The zombies continued to attack me and I used my pistol to take them out. My accuracy was insane. However, once I ran out of ammo, I was screwed. I was taking some serious damage and didn't even get time to heal. I managed to make it down a floor, but then I was attacked by a bunch of spiders and had no choice but to jump. Oh, I survived. I sprinted as far away as possible. Me and Rex just didn't know what to do. 
We refused to end our 100 days here, so we waited till morning and then striked once again. We took on hordes and hordes of zombies all night, but then once we saw the opportunity, we sprinted towards the front door, dodging the zombies as they attacked me and then managed to block up the door as I entered. A genius move, if I do say so myself. I then climbed the ladder to the top, took out a few skeletons and then surveyed the area. Me and Rex found a zombie here. It seemed to be a survivor that had turned. I had no choice but to take him out if I was going to survive. I couldn't believe it. We made it to the top of the skyscraper. This was crucial for our progression on this 100 days journey. During my inspection of the area, I located a book that the survivor had left behind. I guess this is it. Where it all ends. Please, whoever finds this, find my family. We got split up back at the village. I may have met my fate, but I know they're alive. I can feel it. They have supplies. And so there it was, our next task. Locate the village and find those supplies. I made my way to the edge of the skyscraper to take a good look around. This 100 days apocalyptic journey was about to get intense. We scattered through the rooftops, taking as much loot as possible and grabbing some spare food. I was making sure Rex was okay every step of the way. I spent nightfall looting buildings and managed to get my hands on some great weaponry. But once again, the undead were relentless. I took on waves and waves of the infected, but then I almost lost my life to a skeleton. He got me down to just one heart. I had to think on my feet. I quickly ate up my steak, looked at the area. Oh no, I took a sprint, 180. Oh, what a good shot. Man, I'm getting good at this. I then fed Rex and took a look out and found the village. Next step, make it to the village alive. Day five was here and the infected had already mutated. Wolves were now ravenous monsters. Look at him, hunting for my scent. I thought I was okay until this moment. I cut myself on the glass. I had no choice but to head down. He had my scent. He was ready to attack. I took a deep breath. I ran. I had to run as fast as possible. He was running after me. I sprinted towards the village, running as fast as I could, but I could feel him right behind me. He hit me. I had to run as fast as possible, but then I made a mistake, jumping into a hole. Oh no, this could be it. The hundred days could end here. I ran and I ran, and I managed to make it inside one of the houses. But then he hit me through the wall. I couldn't believe it. But then he lost my scent and ran away. I spoke with the villager, then looked out towards the city I just ran from. It was time to start making some real progress. I placed a couple of furnaces, cooked up some food, and made sure Rex and I had full bellies. I managed to climb up to a vantage point and take a look around, and I saw that already humans were becoming infected. Look at him, a parasitical monster. I then inspected the town and found myself an iron sword and some iron leggings. Some serious progress made. I then found the survivors that Fru had mentioned in his letter and promised them I would take care of them all. I then took some wood and made a bed. Oh, an extremely busy few days. But there was a lot more to come. Oh, I cannot tell you how nice it is not to be sprinting away from the undead for once. I did a little bit of resource collection, took a look at the food, and then found an area in which I'd go mining later on. I then took up refuge in this small little house. It was a temporary base before I build my big one. I stored my things and then found the area in which I would start building my giant base. I guess we could call this new place our home, but in the meantime, I made a shield and went mining. Even Rex was pretty delighted. Anyway, on with the work. If you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I love my mining, the twinkle of XP, the collection of ores, the sweet coziness of the caves. It'll never get old. I just adore it. Me and Rex were having a great time. Whilst I go cave exploring, I just want to take the time to thank each and every single one of you that watches my videos. You have changed my life in more ways than I could have ever imagined. Every like, every subscription, every comment helps me out more than you know. So thank you so much. Anyways, <laughs> on with the video. I made a sort of hub area in which I could collect and smelt all the things I was collecting. As you can see, I finally crafted an iron pick and then got to work collecting redstone, coal, a bunch of ores. I literally mined for like days and then I went strip mining on the hunt for diamonds. Yes, I encountered a few enemies, but it wasn't too much to take on. And then finally, you guessed it. Oh, diamonds, my favorite. Ooh, gimme, gimme, gimme. I love diamonds so much. Honestly, the twinkly sound will never get old. Ah, oh, a huge milestone on this 100 days journey.
I dedicated some serious time to diamond collection and stone and ore collection. I even came across some lapis, which was a bonus. And then I spoke with the mercenary and managed to get my hands on some Australian ingots, which would allow me to craft turrets, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, back up top. Oh, wait. What's going on? The town was being attacked by zombies! This was my moment to prove myself to the villagers that I could defend them. Me and Rex did our best to take on the horde of zombies. Using my sword and shield, I battled the infected. But it wasn't as easy as I thought. Both me and Rex were under a lot of fire. I couldn't get to Rex. I was worried she would lose her life. No, Rex, you can do it. Oh, thank goodness. Rex defended herself and I took on the last few zombies. Oh, I fed her some rotten flesh and made sure she was okay. Great work. Oh, man, I can never really relax. This is so annoying. It's not all bad though, I finally crafted a full set of diamond armor. Woohoo! But I also accidentally crafted another set of diamond boots, so I can't even make a pickaxe. Meh. Anyways, I made myself a chisel because I wanted to create some really beautiful blocks. I then headed out and did a bunch of resource collection because, yep, you guessed it, after terraforming the ground, it was time to build my new base. It was a long process and took a lot of resources, but I finally built the outside wall. Oh no! A blood moon! A parasitic swarm entered the town and started causing havoc, and the ravenous dogs returned, hunting my scent, trying to kill me. I took him out pretty quickly though, and watched as he exploded in front of me. Mercenaries came and aided me with the defense. I had to do everything in my power to make sure the town was safe, also while staying alive! This could be it! It could all end here! I did my best defending against the parasitic monsters, but even zombies appeared! I didn't know what to do! It was havoc! We did everything that we could to survive. The mercenaries battled the undead all night, but these parasitic monsters, they were ruthless. They just kept coming and coming. Fire, rockets, nothing would stop them. I fleed back to my base and watched as the destruction continued. I guess I was stuck here for the night. I was waiting for the blood moon to pass, hoping that we would make it out alive. <laughs> I'm joking. I just like to be dramatic. We were okay the next morning, the blood moon had passed, and while after taking a look at the devastation caused, it was time to carry on building my base. I was really happy with how the base was turning out. This would be an excellent facility in which my army of mercenaries could sit back and relax. The next step, well that was to make sentry weapons. Now I didn't have all the resources in the world, but I did have enough to make a couple. So I placed the first one, assigned it aggressive mode and took a look. It was pretty beasty, I have to admit. I then placed another automated sentry outside. Look at this, I was feeling like an absolute king. I then dedicated some time to connecting the buildings with paths and then lighting up the area to ensure mobs wouldn't spawn. I then used a bunch of bone mill to make the place look really lived in. Then I did a bit of farming and then planned my next steps on how I was going to build a mercenary army. But before that, I have a name tag. Yes, I found this bad boy down in the cave, so I thought it was suitable to give it to Rex. Eh, look at that. Finally, you have your name. And then I got some sleep. Ah, solid few days. The next day I crafted pickaxes and torches and headed underground in the hunt for more of those special ingots. Yeah, it was a pretty straightforward ordeal, I just needed more ingots because I need them to make sentries and start hiring mercenaries. I ran into a few enemies here and there, but it wasn't too much to handle. Whilst I was cave exploring, I stumbled across a secret hideout. Floodlights, a broken radio and a chest filled with loot. Weapons, armor, the whole lot, it was incredible. This was a great step forward on our 100 days journey. I was feeling more powerful than ever. I then headed underground in a hunt for more diamonds. I mined and I mined and grabbed a bunch of resources, fed Rex and then headed back up top to smelt my special ingots. Some incredible progress made, let's go! With more sentry guns crafted, it was now time to place them around the base and watch as they deployed and defended. My base's defense was impenetrable. I was feeling unstoppable and I could ensure that my mercenaries would be safe inside the base. I then got some sleep. 
The Knight's Terrors stood no match for my sentry weapons, and now it was time to head out and start building my mercenary army. I had plenty of cash to pay these guys so they would stay loyal, and I built my army mercenary by mercenary, then headed back to my base. Everybody was settling in and I was really proud of the progress I had made. However, I told everybody to stay put because I needed to plan my next steps. The next step was to get into the city. I needed to be more prepared if I was to take on the Parasite King and Queen. On paper, it was easy. However, the execution deemed more difficult than I could have ever imagined. I was swarmed by mercenaries left, right and center. But these guys weren't friendly and me and my army had to defend against their attacks. It wasn't all bad though, I managed to snatch up some great loot and continued into the city fighting the enemy mercenaries. Oh no! I was on fire! We were under attack! My troops and I did our best to defend the area, however I lost all of my friends. Only Rex stood alive and then I got into some serious trouble. I was stuck in quicksand. Oh no! Rex! Oh, this could be it! I quickly built up some wood as a defense because the grenade launcher was just too powerful. Rex was taking some serious damage, so I managed to get him out of there and send him home, but I was still stuck. What was I going to do? I had to think tactically. I managed to get out, dodge the grenade launcher, and take him out. Oh, that was close, but the sun was setting. I had to rush home quickly before the enemy started attacking me. I made it home, but I realized that I would need a lot more troops if I was going to be successful in looting the city, so I went out and hired a bunch more mercenaries to fight for me. Feeling more secure, I took myself and my troops, Rex included, and headed towards the city. We did face some enemies, but it wasn't too much to tackle because there was a lot of us. But then, things got seriously dangerous. All of my troops were wiped out. I only had those left back at the base, but I couldn't call for reinforces. Five giant mutants attacked me. One heart left. Oh no! I ran and I ran, firing my grenade launcher at the mutants and the zombies, in hopes to survive. These colossal mutant beasts just wouldn't stay down. I would hit them and hit them and they'd only fall and get back up again, twice as strong. I strategically circled around the mutants, popping shots, but they were enraged. I decided I couldn't stay here. I had to lead them back to the base. Yes, where my mercenaries were. I led the horde of zombies and mutant beasts back to my base, dodging their hits. It was a close one, but I managed to make it back and allowed my sentry turrets to do the work. The mutant dropped an incredibly powerful hammer. Whew, that was a close one. I checked on the rest of my troops and then I got a good night's rest. The morning was here, the sun was blazing high, and I crafted a bunch of diamond tools and made a few adjustments to my base. I then took a couple of guys out with me, grabbed some wheat, and hoped to grab a few farm animals. It was quite nice to get out for the day. I managed to find a couple of cows, breed them together, and then use a lead to bring them back to the base. This would allow me to make more meat. Oh, look at his little face, leading him into the base. He's so happy. Oh. I made sure they were okay, checked on Rex, and was pretty proud of my progress. I had an army of mercenaries, a fully functional base with defense systems. The next step was to kill the parasite leaders. So I headed out, grabbed some food on the way, and headed in to the city. I spent a lot of time taking out enemies and looting the buildings. It was quite nice, actually. I've been trying to get into the city for ages, so to finally get here and loot was pretty nice. I managed to get my hands on some pretty cool weaponry, which I was pretty happy with. It was now time to hunt down the parasite leaders, so I headed out across the zombified wasteland in hopes to prevent the mutations. I fed Rex some food, changed my armor, and approached the Parasite King. Look at him, so mighty, so fierce. I headed in. His colossal stature was incredibly intimidating, and as he approached me, he did some serious damage. I managed to pop a few shots, but it wasn't doing enough to take him out. He was even sending his minions after me. We battled and battled through night and day. Me and Rex did our best to try and take him out, and eventually, with a few hits, we destroyed the Parasite King. But it wasn't over. The Parasite Queen had awoken and fired poisonous capsules towards me and Rex. But I dodged her hits. She seemed invincible and wasn't taking any damage. After dodging her parasites, I finally took out the Parasite Queen. Rex almost lost her life. I cleared up the area of the remaining parasites and then started heading home. What a journey we've been on. Me and Rex looked out towards the landscape. 
We had been through so much together. I could even see my base and village from here. I headed back, said hello to my troops, and rested up for the night. So there it was, 100 days survived and all my objectives completed. You know, my pa used to tell me, it's better to be a has-been than it ever was. Oh god, I'll run as quick as I can. My little legs can't go much quicker. Johnny, shoot him! Oh god, he's right behind me! Oh god! Oh lord, he's gonna get me! I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft in the Wild West. With a whole new area to explore, new weapons, new enemies to tackle, our journey begins with me, the Coffee Fuel Genius. Let's go. What's good? Get comfortable, grab your snacks, because we're going on a Wild West journey. I kicked off day one with the basics, collecting wood. Once I'd made the crafting table, I then went ahead and crafted the wooden tools I needed. But then I noticed I was being snuck up on by a wild dog. And there was no way I was dying on day one on our hardcore journey. So I decided to run as fast as I could in the opposite direction. I then spotted a temple, so I decided to go check it out. I made myself a sword and a pickaxe, chewed through the side and snuck in. I noticed there was a skeleton spawner there, so I decided I wasn't going to take it on, but I also noticed the dogs had stopped following me. So I took advantage of the time and went ahead and got some food. There were a few goats scattered around, so I decided to chop them up and get myself some raw mutton. Mm. I chewed through the raw mutton and continued. Uh, I don't even know what that was. I carried on collecting goat's meat because I'd need food for the rest of our journey. Then I headed out on day one. Wait a second. The dog had returned. The dog had returned with a friend and I didn't know what to do. If these wild dogs got hold of me, it would be completely over. The one had fleed, but one had carried on and hunting me down. So I just had to take it on. Three hearts of damage from one hit. This was dangerous. Psych! You think I was going to be taken down by some stupid dog? I striked him down. I chewed through the raw mutton and realized this hardcore journey wasn't going to be an easy one. So I located a nearby cave and got to work mining up some cobblestone because I'd make it a lot further with stone tools. Some serious progress made. This cave was serving me well. I carried on collecting cobblestone and then I just kind of worked my way down. I came across a bunch of random ores like uranium and lead, all things I could use to make machinery. I then went ahead and grabbed myself a bunch of coal because I could use coal to make torches and being down in this cave wasn't so fun in the dark. I came across a huge vein of iron which was perfect, one step closer to a full set of iron armor. The sun had set so I decided to stay in the cave for the night. Day 2 was here so I did a little bit of cave exploring and grabbed a bunch of iron and then made my way out of the cave as the sun had risen. I also realized rats attack you when the sun isn't fully up. Great, another enemy to fight. Just what I need. I then realized I had the full day ahead of me. So it was time to do a bit of exploring. I had to get some food though as well because my health was really, really low. Nope. If you think for a single second I'm going to fight a grizzly bear with a stone sword, you're mad. I headed deeper into the badlands and came across some green nature filled area with goats. It was like food heaven. So I decided to make myself like a tiny little camp in the corner. I cooked up my food and then smelted up my ores and made myself some iron. I really wanted to make the projector to make automated machinery, but I just wasn't there yet. So instead I made myself a shield, a vital tool on a hardcore survival journey. I then went ahead and made myself an iron sword, but I didn't have enough resources to make a full set of iron armor. So I decided to head out, chop up some wood, and then go ahead and kill some cows because I needed the food for the journey. But then I was ambushed by a pack of wild dogs. I did my best to block the dog's attacks and then I created some distance between us to give me some time to calculate. The fierce wild dogs were relentless and there was nothing I could do to stop them from attacking me. I tried to create some distance but they just kept chasing me and then things got serious with just two and a half hearts left. I had no choice but to run away and try and create some height. The only thing I could do was use up the cobblestone I had in my inventory to create some height between me and the ravaging dogs.
The savage wild dogs chased me up the mountains. I felt like there was no escape. I cracked a side in the mountain and created a small little vantage point. I think I was safe. So I cooked up the meat I had left and then smouted up my oars. I guess I'm here for the night. It was glorious to see the sunrise on day three. Whew. I can't believe we survived such a close encounter. I decided to head up and over the mountains. I stayed away from any enemies as much as I could. I created a bucket so I could get some more water. It's always good to have a bucket of water on you. I guess it was time to jump down this mountain. Whew, here goes nothing. And I died and, and the whole thing ended. Nah, I'm joking. I made it. I made it to the bottom of the mountain, and then I carried on my journey across the wildlands. I was hoping to find some civilization, and also create that automated machinery I'd spoken about earlier. Day three, and I was really enjoying the foresty area that I was in. It was a nice, refreshing break from the wildlands. I also found a minecart chest with a bunch of blue lapis in, which was great. I also then came across a load of coal, which I mined up, and then headed out across the wildlands. But once again, I was ambushed, but not just from dogs this time. But also rats. The sun was setting and these guys turned evil. And as you can hear, they were chasing me and chasing me. I had no choice but to use my height tactic. I decided to create some distance between me and my foes. This was exhausting. Just three days in and this wasn't getting any easier. So I decided to stay here for the night. Day four and I was surrounded by horrific weather conditions, but I had no choice but to continue moving forward on our Wild West journey. Lightning striked and it was just too dangerous to stay above ground, so I took advantage and went into the caves to mine up some more ores. I wanted to get that machinery so I could make rifles, weapons and more. I came across some gold ore which was vital to making the projector. I then headed into bedrock level and yes, you guessed it. Finally, some diamonds. Some serious progress made on day five. I mined up these diamonds and had a total of six in my inventory. This was insane, so I decided to head back up. I wanted to keep the momentum going, so I looked out into the distance into the horse-ridden plains and headed deeper into the Wild West. I wonder what challenges lie ahead on this hardcore survival journey. Day eight and I was deep within the wildlands. I hunted for more food and I quickly realized I was lost. I tried to make a bed with the wool I collected, but it just didn't seem to work in the crafting table. So instead I made some shears to use on the sheep that were stuck up on this mountain with me, but it just didn't seem to work. But then I used the big brain and used the, the goat's wool and turned it into white wool. I don't know how that worked. But anyway, I made a bed and I got some sleep at the end of day eight. It was great to get a good night's rest, but I had to keep the ball rolling. I smounted up all of my iron ores, took out the dogs that were attacking me, and then made myself a full set of iron armor, and then crafted a diamond pickaxe. Look at us go! I then made my way down the mountain after cooking up some food. We had to keep moving forward. I finally escaped the dusty badlands and headed towards the desert plains, when finally I'd spotted a village! Let's go! But then this happened. The fierce grizzly bear was colossal in stature, towering over me. His giant bear paws were striking me, taking huge health, and no amount of steak could save me. He was striking and striking, almost taking my life. I used my Obi-Wan-like instincts and managed to get the high ground, but he just climbed up. I really didn't know what to do. I just carried on striking and striking, trying to get close enough, and eventually... I succeeded. I killed the grizzly bear and taken his bear claw. I crawled over to the western town and the villagers healed me up. They even thanked me for eliminating the bear and freeing the village. They even rewarded me with the engineer's hammer. This would be crucial to making the revolver. I even grabbed myself a wooden storage crate which worked similar to a shulker box. Wow. I couldn't believe it, some serious progress made. I cleared up the area of enemies and got some sleep. Day 10 was here, it was time to head out and find somewhere to make camp. But then this happened. 
While heading to the Badlands, I found a nearby camper, but I was also being chased by wild dogs. They almost took my life, so I ran to the camper to see if he could help me out. And, to much surprise, he did. <coughs> This guy had saved my life. So we chatted for a little while, and I got to know him. He offered me a bunch of insane trades and then sent me on my way, informing me of a location of a nearby camp. I headed over and got to know everybody. This is where I set up camp. I even tamed a hamster nearby because, well, I was kind of bored and, I mean, look, look how cute they are. Look at it. Oh, he's so cute. I put down all of the things I had in my inventory, spent the evening defending the camp, killing the foes that tried to kill us in our sleep. I decided to make a tent, stick it down, and get a good night's rest. Day 11 was here, so I spent it collecting wood, planting wheat seeds, because I wanted to build a place I could finally call home. Day 16 was here, and I finally finished my little western build. Considering I had barely any resources, I was happy with the turnout. I also need to get a flower for the little pot, because it's looking pretty empty. I also have a bunch of animals now, so things are looking good. Day 17 rolled around, and to get paper, I'd need that sugar cane. But what stood between me and the sugar cane were these snappy little beasts who kept jumping out from the ocean at me. I mean, look at this. Like, what, on what world does a piranha leap from the depths of the ocean to try and bite your legs off? I had to think on my feet, so I chewed up my meat and then made a bridge over, it was about two blocks high, I made it over the little lake, and then I got my hands on that lovely little sugar cane. And then I was an absolute moron, and I fell off the bridge. Which, like, I was laughing the whole time I was doing this, but also, like, like terrified as well. Like, I pooped my pants a little bit because I thought I was going to die. Like, can you imagine if I died to piranhas? You know, flappy little monsters. Anyway, I ignored them, planted my sugar canes, also some wheat seeds, and then headed back and got a good night's rest. Day 18, and I just realized cows have names. This one's called Angus. Hello, Angus. <laughs> uh, I, I smattered out all my ores and waited for the sugar canes to grow. And then I finally had enough to make one book, which then I combined with a lever. And yes, you guessed it. I finally had the engineer's manual. Woohoo! I could finally make the coke oven, which is crucial to progressing. To make the coke oven, I'd have to head out and get a bunch of resources, like sand, clay, so I could make bricks. So I kind of just did that, like dodging piranhas and, and got to work. This is fun. I'm, I'm loving it. After a good few days of dedication, I had more than enough resources to finally make the coke oven. I looked at the recipe book in the manual and then just got to crafting it. Uh, at first I thought I didn't have enough when in fact actually I, I had like way too much, like way too much. And then I just kind of bashed my hammer against the front because that's how engineering works. And I finally finished the coke oven, which was amazing. I made a bunch of buckets and then started to collect creosote oil so I could make treated wood, which is crucial to making the revolver. And speaking of the revolver, I'd have to make the engineer's workbench and a bunch of other items. This thing was not as straightforward as I thought. It was a bit of a pain in my backside, I won't lie. But I did remember that from the storage crate we'd found in the village earlier, there was a few things that would, like, speed up the process, like a, like a blueprint and a few steel rods. It wasn't a lot, but I got to make the revolver barrel. It was good to get the ball rolling. I then grabbed some creosote oil and got some sleep. While the Wild West slept, I was thinking about how I could kill the Ender Dragon with a revolver. Day 26 and it was time to get a wiggle on. I soaked all of my wooden planks in creosote oil, making them treated wood planks, which would allow me to construct the engineer's workbench. I built it outside in this really like quickly accessible thing and then it was time to make bullets. I was making huge progress. I grabbed the blueprint and then had a look at what I'd need to make the cartridges. It was pretty straightforward actually, big progress. All right, partner. Day 27 was here and I smattered up all my ores and then made myself a couple of wooden grips for the revolver, which was huge. I then like forgot how to make the wooden casings, which was like kind of funny. So I checked the book and then I made a bunch of bullets for the revolver, which, which was huge. I know I didn't have a revolver yet, but it was nice to have the ammo there. I wonder what tomorrow would bring. Fresh-faced and bright-eyed, day 28, I headed into a strip mine. Everything was cooking back at home, and so I thought it was time to get some diamonds. I 
I tore through chunky cobblestone for a good few days and found myself a bunch of diamonds. I was collecting these bad boys left, right, and center. I even found some emeralds, which was like a pretty big bonus. And then decided to head back to see if I had enough to make full diamond armor. I made it home and you guessed it. I constructed a full set of diamond armor. Day 43 was a bit more of a chilled one. I tended to my little farm, my animals, and then I thought I'd head into my strip mine because I wanted to grab obsidian. I was pretty determined to make that nether portal, so I just dedicated a lot of time to collecting obsidian. And then I tried to like look cool for the video and place things with both hands, but like, I was holding obsidian. Look, I placed obsidian. Like, I messed up. I was so annoyed. Like, do you know how long this thing takes to like mine? I know it's not that long, but it's, it's just a bit of a pain in my backside. I then headed back to get some sleep because the next day I wanted to make the nether portal. So I gathered a bunch of resources, made a flint and steel, headed to the area where I'd build it. And yep, you guessed it, got to work. The build was complete. I sparked up that flint and steel and opened a portal to the underworld. I made a secret room as well behind in this weird terracotta tower. I don't know. I then killed a bunch of endermen to grab some ender pearls because I'd need that to progress to the ender dragon. I then wanted to make the crude blast furnace, but to make that, well, you need blaze powder. And for that, you guessed it, we're heading into the nether. I was so nervous. It could all end here. As I stepped into Hell's Gates, I was greeted with sweltering conditions. This place was terrifying. I could hear gas screaming in the distance. I quickly encased my nether portal in protection, grabbed some nether rack, and headed deeper into the nether. I trudged through nether rack for days, traversing over the sea of lava, making my way very carefully around corners. But what awaited me was something far more dangerous than I could have ever imagined. It was a nether fortress, enriched in blazes, firing their fireballs towards me. I used my shield and diamond sword to take them out. I was hoping to collect some blaze rods, but the first one, ah, I'd lost it. I just had to carry on fighting. I was attacked by waves and waves of blazes. I didn't know what to do. One fired their fireball, and all I had was defense. After fighting the blazes for ages, I headed back home with the blaze rods. I had to make it back quickly. I had finally made it home. Blaze rods, ready to go. Day 67 was here, and I was ready to make the crew blast furnace, but I had to let everything cook first. So, in the meantime, I planted some sugar canes, you know, smashed up some iron ingots into steel plates, and went out and killed some endermen. You know, I was just sort of doing, like, little jobs here and there, killed more endermen. What the hell? I then finally constructed the crude blast furnace. I built it outside my house, slapped my hammer on the front, you know the drill, and then finally made myself some steel ingots, which was, which was a pretty big deal, to be fair. That's big progress. I then killed some more endermen, and then, you guessed it, I constructed the revolver. Look at me, I feel like a real cowboy. Hey, howdy, partner, I'm a cowboy. Who got the gun and stuff? Yeah. And then, like, day 74, I, like, a rat stole my revolver. Can you imagine after all that hard work? Like, I'd lost it. Anyway, back to being cool, back to being cool. Well, I shoot the dog, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I made a bow and put the bullets in the thing and killed stuff. Yeah, and then I went and killed some endermen. And, and <laughs> anyway, enough of that. I headed deeper into the Wild West. I like how cool this revolver is like BAM and the bear was dead in like three four shots that's insane I then spoke to a local camper got a good night's rest and then sold some emeralds for a pouch Which then I'd store the ender pearls I collect while I go out kill more stuff with my revolver And then just kind of spent my time taking out endermen grabbing those ender pearls, you know making big progress I then realized I was running out of time, so I guess it was time to go and face that ender dragon. I had big plans for my little area. I know I hadn't built a lot so far, but I was hoping in my 200 days to make the enchantment table and build some big stables. I, I had huge plans. I was really excited. I got a good night's rest, ready for the big day. I threw my first eye of ender. And so there it was, the first eye of ender, guiding me in the direction I needed to go. I headed deep into the wild west. I made my way over huge piranha-infested waters and then traveled up giant mountains, 
This was a challenge in itself. I continued following those eyes, heading into different biomes. The blazing sun was scorching. I traveled for days on end trying to find that stronghold, fighting different enemies. I eventually came to this location, but it was underwater and I, I was going to drown. So I found a nearby cave and like mined sideways inwards, mining down deeper and deeper. When eventually I came to those mossy cobblestone walls, I had found the stronghold. Now it was time to find that portal. I navigated the maze-like corridors in the stronghold. I found a couple of chests here and there with the ender pearls in, but I just couldn't seem to find the end portal. I killed creepers and cooked up some food and then I finally found it, eliminating the silverfish spawner. I then placed the eye of enders in. This was the moment I take on the ender dragon. I was so nervous, I couldn't wait to kill this thing with the revolver. It was time to jump in. I was here, in the end. I took out the first tower with my bow. Incredible accuracy. I tried to take a shot at the dragon with my revolver. Okay. Um. This is going to be really hard to watch. And, um. I, I actually, like, teared up a little bit while I did this as well. Because after hours and hours of work, this happened. I'm just going to let the clip play out. But I warn you, it's not fun. Yep, so shooting the revolver attracts every single enderman in the end. Like, how was I meant to know? I, I was livid. I took a look in spectator mode at everything I'd built so far. I had so much planned for this. Like, even my animals were left all alone. I guess I just have to move on. My tale begins like so many others. The year is 2086 in the future, and robots are our friends. But then it all changed. Our cyborg king turned against us. Technology could no longer be trusted, and they plotted to destroy Paradise City, the most technologically advanced city in the galaxy. This was the last time I would ever see my home. Futuristic monsters have taken over the world that we once knew, forcing civilization from its once vibrant homes into small colonies. I have three goals. My first, to rebuild civilization. Second, to attain full mecha armor and laser weapons. Third, kill the Cyber King for a tier 3 hoverboard. I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days in the future in hardcore Minecraft. I'm the Coffee Fuel Genius. Can I achieve my goals? Let's find out. Day one, lost in the futuristic plains, our journey begins. Oh, looks like an abandoned colony. Let's go check it out. I hesitantly entered the abandoned city, hopping over the ravine. I was hoping to find some juicy loot to help me on my futuristic journey. I was looking for anything that could help me rebuild civilization. I searched high and low to find things, but I didn't have much luck. So I decided to head out and try and get some wood to craft the basics. But I encountered a problem. I couldn't even craft planks. The wood was dead. Technology no longer needs nature. This was going to be difficult. I decided to head deeper into the abandoned city in hopes to find live wood. But I had no luck until this moment. I came across an old preservation center. So I grabbed a bunch of dirt and built my way up and headed in. I couldn't believe it. A biome filled with nature. It gave me hope for mankind. Life was thriving here. I grabbed a bunch of wood and then I made a crafting table. And once I made the crafting table, I made a full set of wooden tools. I then came across a chicken. A chicken hiding in the bushes. Finally, some food. It was just too quiet. A rogue cyborg was coming after me. So I gave it everything I had, striking it down. 
the mechanical zombie was taken care of. So I grabbed some more food, but it wasn't over. More cyborgs and robots were coming after me. I tried looking for an escape, but I was met with the futuristic planes smothered in robotics. There was no way I could survive. So instead, I grabbed some more resources, killed some food, and then almost lost my life fighting a robot spider. But I survived. It was time to head underground. This was too dangerous. Heading underground, I was met with futuristic blocks, but I couldn't mine them. So instead, I grabbed stone, iron, and coal, and made myself some stone tools, and cooked up my food. I guess I was here for the night. I made myself an iron sword as well. Look at this. Great progress made in just a few days. No time to waste. I grabbed my resources and headed back up. Grabbed some more food, and headed out into the plains. I thought my best bet was to make a jump into the water, so here goes nothing. Turns out the water was poisonous! This could be it! This is where it could all end! No, 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 gotta eat, gotta eat, gotta eat. The poison wore off pretty quickly. Whew, that was a pretty close one. But I was still surrounded by cyborgs and the knight's enemies. This was gonna be a long night. After battling the robots all night, I dedicated some time to grabbing resources. Coal, iron, and more cobblestone. It wasn't easy, but with a tactical mindset, I survived the night. During my exploration, I came across a robotic chicken. These things are amazing. Why, you ask? It's because they contain circuitry. And with circuitry, I can craft the tech pickaxe and the tech sword, making me even stronger so I can survive ambushes like this. Cyborgs can survive the high temperatures, so these guys were more of a challenge than ever before. After calculating my moves, I turned around and struck back at the cyborgs chasing me, taking both their lives. That was a close one. I was feeling pretty unstoppable, but we had to keep moving to rebuild civilization. I continued deeper into the futuristic plains and came across a bunch of sheep. So I crafted some shears and grabbed as much wool as possible so I could make a bed. This was huge. Also, the trees were alive here. So I grabbed as much wood as possible and crossed my fingers for a sapling. And I got one, one step closer to rebuilding the colony. I also came across another preservation center, but this time with buildings inside. So I snuck in, tackling the enemies. I carefully attacked these guys. One wrong move and it's all over. One explosion and my life can be taken. I dedicated some time to clear the area. I could hear villagers, but instead I was met with robotic skeletons. This was a challenge, but with perseverance, I took them both out. It was time to find those villagers. I could hear them, but I couldn't see them. Until this moment. He was being attacked by a robotic skeleton. So after taking his life, the villager asked me to save the others inside. So I headed in. The villager asked me to clear the basement. So I grabbed the brewing stand and bookshelf I found and then cleared out the cyborgs. But it wasn't an easy task. I got to work. I destroyed the first cyborg, making my way through the corridor to take on the second. This was going to be a challenge. I was taking these robot fiends on left, right, and center, clearing the basement of all robotic danger. We don't mess around in the future. It was time to continue with my goals. I decided to rebuild the colony here. This is where I would make all of my futuristic builds and technology. I am going to bring back mankind. This is gonna be fun. I put together a very, very small makeshift build so I had somewhere to sleep for the night, crafted a bed, and got some rest. Big things were on their way, however, I had a lot of work to do in the meantime, so I cooked up my ores, stored things in chests, and then crafted a full set of iron armor. Look at that view, it's, it's pretty neat, I'm not gonna lie. I sweeped the area of cyborgs so it was a little bit safer, I then started working on my strip mine. I wanted to head down and get a bunch of ores. Whilst mining, I came across the advanced creeper. Look at these guys, they don't explode, but they're super fast, and when they catch you, they'll take half your hearts. They're just so intimidating. I mean, look at his face. But I took him out pretty quickly. I then continued mining for days. For what I had planned, I would need excessive amounts of ores. So I got to work collecting blue lapis, purple, iron, redstone, all the ores required to craft technology. I drilled deeper and deeper into the futuristic depths in my hunt for those beautiful diamonds. And yep, you guessed it. I finally found them. Oh my most favorite thing of all time. Thank goodness. This was crucial to rebuilding the future. 
If you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I love strip mining for ores. So I continued doing this for literally days, and I found plenty of what I need. And then it was time to head back up. It was time to head back up and start smelting all of the ores I had collected. Ah. The next day, I crafted the Tech Sword, a heavy sword that does a lot of damage. I then crafted the Exosuit Helmet, which added a little bit of toughness to my armor. I then got to work smelting up all my ores and storing all of the things that I had collected. It was time to start building automated machinery. There was no way I was going to craft the mecha suit without it. So I made myself a diamond chainsaw and got to work collecting resources. Time to get to work. I chopped down a bunch of wood and finally had enough to craft the wood gear. And with wooden gears, I could make stone gears. And stone gears make iron gears and iron gears make gold gear. You get what I'm trying to say here. I then killed a bunch of cyborgs and then finally crafted the quarry, a vital piece of machinery I would need to continue my journey. I placed the quarry down, but I was far from finished. I needed glass to craft the engines. And for that, I'd have to go exploring the futuristic planes. So I headed out. Whilst running, I was thinking about the laser guns and mecha armor I would need to fight the Cyborg King. My tech sword came in clutch when exploring the dangerous futuristic planes, and it was pretty rewarding too. I found a chest filled with loot and some automated bookshelves. I continued exploring the abandoned town on my hunt for sand. But then I encountered a problem. A robot had hunted me down and I was so close to sand. I had to think on my feet. I made a temporary base, crafted a laser bow, and then took all of the cyborgs out, making space to destroy the robot. Finally, I headed over and grabbed a bunch of sand. And then I heard this chicken asking everybody to subscribe. Hello, that's my job. So anyway, subscribe, please. It really helps me out. I then headed home, smelted up all my sand, and finally crafted the Sterling engine. It was time to start putting it all together, so I made a couple of redstone torches, a chest, and then a bunch of piping. I think this would work. Uh, no, I need to place the redstone torch. So I placed all of the pipes, sorted out the filters, and then finally got it working. Look at this, it was clearing the area. I was so excited. This thing is so satisfying to watch. Man, I was so excited. One step closer to full mecha armor. Ooh, it's gonna be so much fun. Whilst we chill out and watch the quarry, I just wanna say one thing. Can you guys comment what you like so much about my videos? It would really help me out. Also, I just wanna say a massive thank you to each and every single one of you. But enough of that, it's time to continue working. The automated machinery was taking its time, and I just didn't want to sit around and do nothing. So I made a few adjustments to the machinery, then crafted a chisel. This would allow me to make some really beautiful futuristic blocks. So then it got me thinking, now's the time to start rebuilding my colony, making buildings for villagers to sleep in. So without further ado, you guessed it, it was time to start building. You can probably guess that this is my home. This is one of the most flashiest things I think I've ever had in my life, and I was feeling pretty proud of it. I then got to work filling the insides with all the necessities to continue my survival. Look at us go! After this, I then planted a bunch of tree saplings and then took a look at my quarry, but then I punched a sheep down there, which I felt pretty bad about. So, one like equals one prayer? Yeah, let's do that. I then took a look at all of the ores that the quarry was missing. I then made a few adjustments to my house with the chisel, which I thought made it look really futuristic and really nice. But the quarry was still taking its time. So you know what that means. Time to keep on building! I was pretty happy with the first house that I had created, so I got a good night's rest and then carried on in the morning. As you can see, I am constructing a small town, maybe three or four buildings which would allow me to move the villagers in and start working on rebuilding civilization. I was pretty proud of the work that I put in. After this, I got to work joining all of the builds together with Pass, and I had a bunch of marble. That quarry came in clutch for resource collection. Pretty happy with this, not gonna lie. I sure hope my villager friends like it. The mecha suit and laser guns were just around the corner, but in the meantime, I just wanted to take a look around and make sure everything was okay. I then looked at the quarry to see if it collected the correct amount of resources, and oh boy, it did. It was time to head into my home, chill out while my ore smelt, it's a pretty bouncy bed, and then finally craft all of the components to, you guessed it, make the full set of mecha armor. 
I was so excited to put this bad boy on. Look at me, look how cool I look. However, modular power suits do require the tinker table. So I crafted said item and then got to work customizing it a little bit just so it looked, you know, a little bit cooler. I then crafted a bunch of diamond plates and installed it in my power suit, making me pretty strong. But I wanted to upgrade it further, and for that, I'd need to head to the nether to get some blaze rods. It's about to get intense. I cleared the area of cyborgs and robots, then headed down to try and get some obsidian. Whilst down there, I wanted to check out the fire resistance of my modular power suit, and man, it did not disappoint. Look at this. It takes ages before my suit overheats and gives out. I'm like chilling out in a lava jacuzzi over here. This would make the nether way more bearable, and taking on those blazes a lot easier. I then found a water source and got to work mining it up. Whilst mining for obsidian, I was thinking about my Discord and how active it is at the moment, so maybe you should go and check it out. I don't know. I don't know why I'm trying to plug myself here. I then headed back home, crafted a flint and steel, moved my quarry over a little bit to make it more efficient, and then crafted the obsidian portal. Obsidian portal? Wait a minute. It's a nether portal. I covered it in cybernetic technology and lit that bad boy up. It was time to head in. I made myself a diamond sword and entered futuristic hell. This place was absolutely horrific. I had to act quickly, so I built a small structure around my nether portal to keep it protected, and then headed deep into the nether. I came across a bunch of different ores. I then discovered the Cyborg King's army was plotting something here, so I had to take them on and take them out. These guys were extremely quick, but nothing could stop me. I headed deeper into the nether, collecting glowstone and fighting the Cyborg King's army. The nether was no cakewalk, and after a few days, I finally found the nether fortress. I sneakily entered the terrible fortress and went hunting for loot, and I got pretty lucky. I even came across cybernetic technology that would allow me to modify my bone structure with nether wart. Look at this. This would improve my chances of survival incredibly. However, I'd need more components, and I don't have time right now, so I had to keep moving, taking on wither skeletons, and I finally found the Blaze Spawner. I battled the army of blazes. My modular power suit was keeping me cool while I was taking on waves and waves of these fiery blazes. I was collecting blaze rod left, right and center. It was time to head back. I traveled through gory, fleshy biomes and the deep dark nether and then I finally made it back to my nether portal. Crazy few days. It was time to get some rest. The next morning I sorted out everything I collected and then I planned on upgrading my mecha armor. But then I heard a strange sound from above my base. It sounded like a hoverboard. <gasps> there he was! It was the Cyber King flying over my base! There he was, the Cyber King, the cause of all of this. I had to get my revenge. It was time. So I headed back into my base, used the blaze powder to upgrade my mecha armor and obtain a plasma cannon. I grabbed some sleep and then headed out, tackling the Cyber King's army as they attacked me. I'd have to move my villagers into the colony another time. It just wasn't safe. I headed out, searching for the Cyber King's lair for days. But then I finally found it. Here it was, lathered in cybernetic technology and security cameras. He knew I was coming, but I headed in anyway. There seemed to be a floating card. It was a trap, but I had to go. It was time to fight the Cyber King. I activated the card and teleported to his lair. I left the teleportation chamber and was met with the Cyber King. There he was. He started firing plasma blasts at me. I had to do my best to dodge the shots to survive. He then activated a lever, which opened two doors, sending the Cyber King's army after me. The first wave of cyborgs wasn't too difficult, and when I took them all out, it damaged the Cyber King's health. He then started firing plasma charges and then sent another wave of creeper robots, but I took them on, damaging his health. After another wave of cyber charges, he was infuriated. He sent an incredibly large wave of robots, cyborgs, and genetically modified zombies to take me out. They were doing some serious damage, but I took them on with my technology sword. My Mecharama's upgrades powered up and I was feeling pretty invincible, taking on waves after waves of the Cyber King's army. I then ate a golden apple and took on the final wave of robots. The Cyber King was so angry he chased me and with an explosion, I defeated him and obtained my tier 3 hoverboard. We'd done it. We took out the Cyber King. 
This thing is so fun to fly around. I was feeling so happy. It was time to head home with my hoverboard. I still had to work on my colony to achieve my final goal. I headed home and took one last look at the hoverboard. Look how cool this thing is. I then grabbed some sleep because tomorrow is villager day. Ah, so now it's time to get the villagers from here to my base. This is going to be really, really fun. I can already tell this is going to be a massive pain. I created a sort of staircase that would make its way down to one of the houses. And then I went and made a bunch of rails on a minecart and started connecting the rails together. But my rail building skills are just terrible. Like, for some reason, I just couldn't work out how this is going to work. And then I eventually got there, gave a little test, and then went ahead and tried to grab a villager. But my goodness me, this guy just would not get inside the minecart. I have no idea why. So I had to think on my feet. Uh, so I thought I'd just ride the minecart myself. You know, at least it'll get some use. <sighs> Yo, this is actually really fun. I don't know why the villager didn't want to do this. I grabbed some sleep and then the next day I brought a boat and I had much more success. The villager finally climbed into the boat and I made my way down very carefully to the bottom. I did a little bit of terraforming, made space for the boat and then moved them in. Look how happy they are. Uh, I think that I think they're happy. They don't talk a lot. I guess I just have to move the rest in. But you haven't got to watch that. I'm going to go and do that right now. Before this video starts, let me take you back to about a day before everything kicked off. <sighs> Order! Everyone try and calm down. Calm down, everyone. Try and settle down. Okay, so we are joined today because apparently this creeper over here tried destroying your house, Coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. Am I right with him saying that? Yep, that is 100% correcto. Out of nowhere, starts doing his sizzly wizzly business, you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, Kim's out of nowhere, boom, 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 blows up everything. 100% the truth. 100%. Okay, well, Coffee, if you are making all of this up, you do realize the creeper could choose to banish you to one block, right? Wait, what? Wait, no. No, I'm not making it up. No, I swear. I, I Whoa, swear. okay, okay. You know what, Coffee? That's it. You're being banished <gasps> to one block. What? <gasps> Son of a bitch. What is going on? It's your boy, Coffee Fuel Genius, back with another one. I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days on one block. Now, if you guys want to try this out for yourself, I will link it down in the description below. I'd just like to say thank you so much to every single person watching my videos. We hit 100,000 subscribers. 100,000! That's absolutely insane! But only about 2% of you who watch my videos are subscribed, so click that subscribe button, join the Fueled Army, and I'll be releasing more content like this. Anyway, on with the show. 100 days, one block. Let's go. Hello. Me again. So the way this works is that you break the block below you and it keeps regenerating a new one. And you go through hundreds of different types of blocks, all different variants, and you go through about 10 phases. This might not be so bad. So I spent day one just mining through blocks. I was getting a little bit nervous just on the one block, so I decided to use the dirt that I had dug up and make a little platform. And I just continued to mine the blocks. What, what else could I do? I just kept mining and hopefully I would get something... Ooh, a pig! We need to think of a name for this guy. Uh, Porky. So me and Porky were chilling out on the platform, and I managed to snatch myself up some saplings and some wheat seeds. I then eventually got a water bucket. Let's go! So which would mean that I could go underneath the block and stick a block underneath to stop gravel and things falling down, because you never know what resources you may need. About halfway through the day, the chest made a really weird sound, and hearts came fluttering out towards me. I was feeling pretty loved. I think we were about to make it to phase two. So, what would it be? I mined it and waited the 10 seconds to see what the upgrade would be. I was so excited. What could it be? Oh, it's, it's just more dirt. Porky looked about as impressed as I did, but nonetheless, we continued chatting throughout the day while I mined the one block. Later throughout the day, I managed to get enough wood to make a crafting table. Let's go! Using the crafting table, I made a full set of wooden tools. This would make the mining process so easy. I, like, I was so happy I wasn't using my fists anymore. I then made a bunch of wooden slabs because this would be a more efficient way of using the very little resources that I had. I made the platform a little bit wider and just continued mining through the block. You know, I was getting food at this point. Me and Porky were having a great time. I then managed to get Porky a friend. He was pretty happy, but I thought if animals keep spawning, I'm going to have to extend the platform. So I extended the miniature island and made a place to store my animals. 
Surrounded by twinkling stars, me and the animals were feeling pretty chill. We made a lot of progress in day one. I stuck the sheep in the farm and waited for day two. The sun blazed high in the sky day two, so I took advantage and worked through that one block. Now, animals were spawning frequently, but you know, I had two of every animal and three's a crowd, so... Rather than make it a tight squeeze, I, I killed the animals as they spawned, okay? Please don't have a go at me. I also then made a mini wheat farm because I needed wheat, which would then allow me to breed the animals together. We were making some serious progress, I, I won't lie. I, I just kept working through that block, you know? We just, we couldn't give up. We just gotta keep working through the block. Working through the block. I'm having a good time, I swear. I'm, I'm having such a good time. I decided I couldn't rely solely on the one block for resources, so I extended my platform and planted a bunch of trees. With trees would mean unlimited wood supply, which would mean I could extend the platform even wider. Once done with that, waiting for the trees to grow, I continued working through that block. And then look, love hearts fluttering towards me. We'd made it to the next phase. Let's go. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Hopefully it's good. Okay, this seems like some kind of stone phase, it seems. A cave phase. Okay, that works for me. I mined up the cobblestone and managed to make myself a full set of stone tools. More progress. We were making some serious progress here. I was feeling really great. In a good mood, I spent the rest of day two just working through that one block, getting animals, waiting for the wheat and trees to grow. I knew the trees were growing, well, because I was stuck under them. The animals found it amusing, I didn't, but things were going really well. I was getting variants of animals, so I decided to extend the farm just slightly. I also noticed the seeds just weren't growing, so I used the water supply that I had to make the wet dirt. I then got attacked by a, a few zombies, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Like, I sort of expected it at this point. Finally, some spruce saplings. It was time to extend the island just slightly. Now, it may not be the most advanced build you've ever seen, but I liked it, it worked for me, and it gave me some space, so I didn't feel so claustrophobic on that tiny little platform. So we came to the end of day three. Things were looking good. Let's see what there is to come. Day four was here, and I was just really relaxed. I was just, you know, mining away through that one block trying to make some serious progress until this happened. I was caught completely off guard. Like, I didn't expect two zombies to come out of nowhere. And for some reason, even though I'd fought zombies before, I just became really flustered and I thought, I can't die now. It would be just a stupid time to die. The zombies came racing towards me, chasing me over the bridge that I had built. I had to think tactically about my next moves. So I positioned myself and swiped towards the zombies, striking them down with my sword. I took out the one with ease and then used more critical hits to kill the last one. Whoa. A reminder that you should never let your guard down. That was a close one. Or so I thought. The one block kept spawning mobs after mobs after mobs. I realized this was not going to be a very easy journey. I worked through the block even more and then was chased down by a creeper. Was this ever going to end? It was just like waves and waves of bad guys, you know. But I just kept striking the creeper, hoping that he wouldn't blow up the build that took me so long. Come on. Day four came to a swift close. I checked on my animals and worked through the block until, yes, you guessed it, we made it to the next phase. Seeing those hearts will never get old, you know. It makes you feel so loved and happy. More spruce saplings, I was happy with that. Extended the little tree farm to make more wood. And then mined up, ready for the next phase. I wonder what it would be. You know, this is, was really quite exciting. Ooh, a snow phase. I can deal with that. I worked solidly through the snow phase and then took a look around my island to see what areas I could extend. I was sort of mapping out what I would do in my head. I then made a furnace to smelt all of the iron that I'd collected. It was about time I start making some iron tools. Hey, look at me go, eh? Can you believe we just started on one block four days ago? Look at us. So I collected as much wood as I could in day five because I had an idea for a build. I also made a bed which would make the days go so quickly and I wouldn't have to tackle mobs in the evening. Wow. Look at us go. God, I was so excited. Day five was coming to a close and I had an idea for a build. So I got some rest because the next day, you guessed it, I was going to build an area for my animals. Let's go. I made a huge mistake while I was building and not placed enough torches, so mobs were spawning left, right and center. Creeper took out half my platform, the spider almost killed me, but I got there in the end.
With the farm now complete, I added a few finishing touches, like planting some seeds, put a water source in, you know, just do a bit of tidying up around the island. I got rid of the small little makeshift farm, and then added like a staggered wall around the platforms, just to make it look a little bit more lived in, and for some security. I then had to move all of the animals from the first platform all the way into the farm, which was really easy, surprisingly. I had wheat, I had fences, it was pretty straightforward. I then got some sleep, ready for day 10. Day 10 was here and I planted a grass block so the area looked a little bit more green. Greeny areas always look nicer. I then did a bit more tidying of the platform, added some like stone stairs around the block to give it more of like a, a center point. Give it the charm that it deserves. I finally made a bow and a bunch of arrows on day 10 because you never knew what would be around the corner. I then attempted to try and move the pigs into the farm but they weren't cooperating. I didn't have carrots. Who came up with these physics? Why won't the one block give me a lead? Why did I decide to do one block? This is such a stupid idea! <clears throat> Sorry about that. Day 11 was here and apart from getting a place for my dog, I just got to work on the one block. Day 12 was here and I was making big money moves. I had an iron pickaxe and a shield. Suddenly some strays appeared and these guys definitely didn't book in advance. They just started firing arrows at me and slowing me down. But I got really lucky and they just fell off the edge. Whew. I then just continued working through the one block to try and get through this phase. I chipped and dug and trudged through many different materials that the block was throwing at me most of the day. The polar bear decided to go on a killing spree and, and, and murder everything. Like, why? Why, bro? That's just not cool. I was almost there. I could feel it. I was getting to the end of that phase. I also got enough to make a friend on this very, very lonely journey. But then suddenly, this happened. A strange sound erupted and echoed throughout the sky, and one by one, enemies spawned from the single block, destroying the structure beneath it. Despite the enemies being fully armoured, I decided to approach them and strike them with my axe. I was blocking their shots with my shield. I was calculating my moves and taking them out one by one. It was pretty easy. I pushed them into the hole that they had made, and I quickly succeeded. Wow, our first mob party. Guess what I did next? Yeah, mining, more mining, snow phase, mining. And then finally I reached the end of the phase. Look at those fluttery hearts. Oh, I feel all, all gooey inside. The upgrade came and it seemed to be a desert phase. Fun. Oh, finally another phase. Look at that, new materials. We were making some good progress, I won't lie. Ah. Oh. I took a good look at my whole island on the evening of day 12. I took a look at what I'd built so far and how much we'd achieved in just over 10 days. But I wasn't finished. I wanted to make a few adjustments the next couple days. I wanted to really expand my island. So I got some sleep and got to work. With an extended island, I was feeling very spacious. I had a place to breathe and the one block had some charm to it, but I wasn't done yet. I wanted to aesthetically improve the tree farm. The tree farm area was looking a lot better and I finally had some space to grow the trees and cut them down with ease. Progress, baby. It was time to spend some times with the animals. I fed the puppy dog and then got back to work on the one block. Finally, some diamonds appeared, so that would be one step closer to getting that diamond armor I so desperately wanted. I also tackled a few enemies, but I mean, they kind of tackled themselves, but I'm not going to argue with that. Ah, solid few days. It was time to get some rest. Day 20 treated me to an assortment of blocks, more diamonds, and musical chests full of goodies that I wouldn't usually get on my normal playthrough of Minecraft. I reached the end of the phase, mined up the block, grabbed myself a trident, and waited for the next phase. A new phase. More blocks, more cobblestone. I was really hoping this one had more diamonds because I really wanted that full diamond armor. I also at one point got ambushed by a bunch of vexes, but I was in no condition to fight them, so I decided to just chill out and wait for them to leave. It was day 22, I was done slurping on stew, cracked on with mining and grabbed myself some sugar canes, which I could use to make paper, dude, move out the way, which I could use to make paper for bookcases, which would allow me to make the enchantment table. And I really wanted that enchantment table. 
I channeled my inner Dr. Doolittle and had a bunch of animals on the island and I was treating them with the care that they deserved. I then managed to make it to the end of the phase and picked up another diamond. I wonder what the next phase would be. This one seemed to be a red desert phase, but this one treated me to, you guessed it, a villager. Finally. Hello, Irina. Welcome to Viva La Coffee Fueled Genius. <laughs> so, I decided to grab as much materials because I knew I'd have to build Irina a place to live. She couldn't just walk around the island in the cold. So, I got to work and made her a place to sleep. The building was all complete, so I moved Irina into her new home. It took a bit of moving around, but the process went pretty smoothly. I slapped an iron door on that bad boy and allowed Irina to get used to her new home. Some serious progress made, but our journey wasn't over yet. Day 30 was here and I was hungry for enchantments. I may not have the enchantment table yet, but I knew I could get hold of enchanting books. So I made myself a lectern and gave it to my villager, hoping that they would give me the book amending. Now, the villager did start to complain that they weren't allowed to leave the room and wondered why. I said it was for their own safety because there's zombies everywhere. But if you give me the book amending, I may allow you to go and roam around the island. Yeah, I lied, which is a shame, but oh well. I got on with the rest of my jobs. I fed my little puppies and managed to pick up some diamonds from the one block. <gasps> I finally had enough diamonds to make the diamond pickaxe. Wow, finally! I placed the tool in a placeholder because I wasn't ready to use it just yet. And then I cracked on with the block, being treated to more villagers and more resources. Day 32 was a special day. I finished up by giving Ruth the job of being a farmer so I could sow my crops to her. Wow, I grabbed some rest, ready for the next day. Day 33 was here and I reached the end of the phase. I wonder what the next one would be. Wow, the nether phase. Now this one I knew would be a dangerous one, but I also found out that I would be treated to ancient debris. I wonder if I get netherite on this journey. After chipping through the ancient debris, obsidian had revealed itself. Another crucial resource for my one block journey. I blitzed through the nether phase in hopes for enough obsidian to make the enchantment table, but also so I could get my hands on enough ancient debris to make full netherite armor. That would be epic. I also took a lot of time to build a wall around my island, but then this happened. Blazes had spawned from the one block. Surrounded by extreme heat, I finally eliminated the blazes, but I was forced to gaze upon hours of hard work burning to a crisp. The fire had scorched through my island. I just completely panicked. I was just doing everything in my power to put out the fire and I just wasn't thinking straight. I did everything I could and then I died multiple times and then died again and it just... I just couldn't believe it. I just wasn't thinking. Hours of hard work just burning to a crisp. I couldn't believe it. Day 35 was here and I gazed upon the devastation that had occurred. I lost my diamond pickaxe, all of my animals, my beautiful little puppies. But I couldn't let it stop me. It was time to rebuild the island. I was feeling much better on day 37. I had learned from my mistakes and built a wall around the one block. Now it was time to put it to the test. The gates of hell opened and splurred out blazes, gas, magma cubes, zombie piglins, all that you could imagine that was evil. But my method had worked. The floor was destroyed beneath them and they just fell through. I was rewarded with a lava bucket, so I decided to make a cobblestone generator. The generator was complete and offered an infinite supply of cobblestone. This was great. It was a great material for tools and builds. It was just a great addition to the island. It was also personally the first ever generator I'd ever built. So I was feeling pretty proud of myself. I then just worked through the one block and made it to the next phase. Big things were on their way. The next phase appeared and it seemed to present itself as a sort of emerald, quartz and diamond phase, which was fantastic. But before I could continue, I knew I'd need fortune on my pickaxe. This way I would get a lot more out of what the phase could offer. So before I build the enchantment table, I wanted XP. And to do that, well, I'd have to build a mob farm. Whew, 
sweat was dripping down my brow. That was hard work. That was, fun fact, personally the first ever mob farm I'd ever built in my history of Minecraft. Can you believe it? But I was really, really excited to see how the mob farm worked. And boy, did it impress. I just got pools and pools of XP. And as you know, I love XP. I had finally built the enchantment table, but we weren't ready just yet. I wasn't prepared to place this bad boy because, well, I had literally no bookshelves. And as you know, if you want to enchant your items, you want to do it in style. You want to do it with level 30. So I decided to dedicate the next few days to just getting leather and waiting for sugar kings to grow so I had enough paper to make bookshelves. Now that ender dragon was just around the corner. I don't know about you, but I was growing pretty impatient. <laughs> the sugar canes finally grew, and I had enough paper to make enough books to make a bunch of bookshelves. I guess it was time to build that area for the enchantment table. Ah, a nice, neat, little addition to the islands. No, it wasn't like the coolest build you've ever seen, but it was a nice little addition to show off that enchantment table. I was pretty tired, so I got some rest. <laughs> Woo! Day 62, took mending off the pickaxe and got to work on enchanting all of my items. I even enchanted my trident, which again was a first for me. Look at that, I've never seen this before. Like, you throw it and it comes back. I also worked on the mob farm, got a bunch more XP, and then enchanted my bow. And that was a beastie bow. With the enchantment table now complete, it was time to move on to my next mission without haste. I wanted more diamonds for full diamond armor. I made it to the end of the phase, and the next one was the stronghold phase. Yes, I noticed a pattern here. I noticed that we may be coming to the end. So I just blitzed through the block. Then this happened. Evokers were summoning my worst nightmare. Their piercing screeches as they flew towards me never got any less terrifying. I was dodging them as much as I could, but they seemed to get a few good hits on me. But eventually, with tactical dodging and sharpness on my sword, I managed to kill those little guys. Oh, I hate vexes. It wasn't all bad though, I managed to snatch myself some totems of undying. I then made myself a full set of diamond armor and upgraded it with netherite. Oh, look at me, smothered in netherite and diamond. I was feeling cozy. I then worked through the block and made it to the end of the stronghold phase. The end phase had presented itself. Finally, so I worked through the block. Now, when I say work through, I mean I blitzed through this block. I also went and re-enchanted my sword with fire aspect because dealing with endermen with fire is so much easier. I also grabbed myself some ender pearls and then was attacked by a mob party. These were getting quite difficult, I won't lie. The shulkers were the worst part of it because as soon as they hit you, you go floating into the air and there's no way of coming back down. I also worked through all of the endermen, picked up a bunch of ender pearls. We were making progress. Man, these guys are so angry. But see what I mean with the fire? So easy. I was rewarded with an Eye of Ender, which I thought was pretty strange considering I had a bunch of Ender Pearls. But then this happened. I was given a warning that the end was near. Wow. Had we reached the final phase? Yes, we did it. We completed the one block, all 10 phases. Wow. I was curious to see if it kept spawning any more blocks. I quickly learned that I would be on this block forever. This one block was infinite. Uh, I guess I just have to go and kill the ender dragon in hopes that it would free me. I made myself a brewing stand so I could make potions because I wanted to be prepared for the ender dragon fight. I filled up the bottles with water and made myself a bunch of slow falling and strength two potions. These are the necessities for when fighting the ender dragon. I also gained a load of XP and re-enchanted all of my armor. I wanted to be more prepared for the fight, so I just blitzed through enchanting, spending all of my points. We were feeling more and more prepared. Wow, I took one last stroll across my one block island. Look how much we'd achieved over our 100 days. The enchantment table, a mob farm for unlimited XP, Unlimited water, unlimited cobblestone, a tree farm, villagers. Wow, I said goodbye to Irina, Ruth, and the other guys. This was it. I may not come back, but it was time to fight that ender dragon 
in hopes that it would free me from this infinite block. I summoned the portal. The infinite galaxy sat beneath me, and so I decided to dive in. This place looked nothing like I could have imagined, but I had to work quickly. I slurped up my slow falling potion and got to work quickly, scaling those towers. I had to destroy those crystals as quick as possible because they were the healing entities for that evil dragon. With patience and delicacy, I took out those crystals with my bow with insane accuracy, but it only enraged the dragon even more. He fired a ball towards me, so I had to leap from the tower I was on. He continued to launch clusters of his dragon's breath towards me, but nothing was stopping me. I scaled those towers one by one, destroying those healing entities. I was going to free the end and hopefully myself. After destroying the final healing crystal, I made work on the dragon. Without his healing entities, he was vulnerable. So I drank my strength 2 potion and got to work. I dodged his wide span wings because if they caught me, I'd go flying. I managed to get underneath him and strike him with my sword. He struck me with a rageful swipe of his wing and then juggled me throughout the air. But nothing could stop me. I continued firing those arrows, piercing his skin. Perseverance is key. I continued fighting that dragon to bring him down and free the end. I finally killed the ender dragon. I was also attacked by a few of his guardians, but with my fire aspect sword, I managed to keep them at bay. Wow. Pools of XP came dropping from his body. I leveled up to level 67. That was absolutely insane. I also snatched the egg to display on my island. It was evident that despite freeing the end from the dragon, I would not be freeing myself. The portal led me back home. I made it home safely and took a look at everything we'd achieved across 10 phases in 100 days. What a journey we've been on. This volcano could erupt at any moment and for the next 100 days I will be surviving on this dangerous island. Will I be able to create a base to stay protected from the eruption? What abilities will the volcanic items grant me? And can I become strong enough to defeat the evil fire dragon? Speaking of fire dragons, on my first day here I found a dragon egg. But if I was to get close I would have to get past these magma beasts. They were extremely intimidating. So I snuck around and started grabbing some sand so I could build up. But then they found me. These things do extreme amounts of damage and with just one and a half hearts left I would have no choice but to sprint away as fast as possible and start scaling the tree. I grabbed some wood, made a crafting table, placed it down and made a full set of basic wooden tools. I continued scaling this tree. There it was, the fire dragon egg. I broke the wood beneath it and picked it up. Wow, I wonder what this thing looks like when it's fully grown up. But it was way too dangerous to hatch it here. I was surrounded by these creatures that were mutated by the volcano itself. I took the dragon egg and started my descent. And with just two and a half hearts left, I made a run for it. But this volcanic creeper was extremely fast. So I had no choice but to build up and create space between us. I was safe for now. But then I heard a strange noise coming from the distance. It was the volcano. The whole island was shaking. But then after a while, it simmered down. I now knew what I had to do. I'm located south of the island, but I want to build my base on the side of the volcano to monitor whether it will erupt. Day one was coming to a close, and whilst the sun was setting, I decided to move. But then I made a grave mistake. I almost lost my life, and with just half a heart, I was surrounded by enemies. I had to find somewhere safe. I stumbled across this cave, grabbed some coal, made some torches, and headed in hesitantly. But then I realized I couldn't make any tools, because I didn't have wood or a crafting table. Because I left it earlier, okay? What are you, the crafting table police? I decided with just half a heart to go out and risk it. I didn't get much wood, but it was enough to get back into the cave, make a crafting table, and upgrade my wooden tools to stone ones so I could get to work mining that iron. I was constantly on edge with such little health, so I decided to block myself in just in case I get creeped on by a creeper. I then made a furnace, placed it down, and started smelting up all of the iron I had collected, which was quite a considerable amount. I then whipped out my pickaxe and continued mining until I came across sunlight. 
Day two. I thought it might be a good idea to grab some food, but then I spotted this dude and there was no way I was risking it with just half a heart, so I headed back into the cave and blocked myself in. Once I made it back, I wanted to make a shield, but realized I don't have enough wood, so once again I'd have to go out, risk it, and get some wood. Speaking of risking it, look how close I just got to that cactus. Bro, I am living my life on the edge right now. I finally came across some berries though, which was a great food source. Now, I didn't have a lot, but it was enough to keep me alive. I headed back to my little cave, finally made the shield, and upgraded my stone tools to iron ones. And then I took a moment to snack on the berries. I then made a full set of iron armor, which was amazing. Bro, <laughs> how am I still alive? Like, what the hell? I continued to gather resources on day two because I couldn't do much else with just half a heart. But then I decided to go and get some food and I had to make it quick because enemies were watching my every move. I headed straight for the ocean. I thought my best bet would be tropical fish because they can't fight back. I got so excited at the prospect I was finally going to eat that I actually forgot how to breathe and almost lost my life. Seriously, how have I survived this long? Whilst collecting food, the volcano started shaking once again. A quick reminder that I need to stay on track. So I rushed home as quick as possible, picking up resources and also avoiding ambushes like this snapping turtle. I headed back into the cave and ran back home. Finally, I stuck my food in the furnace and waited for it to cook. Whilst it cooks, please hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. It helps me out a bunch. I finally regained health with food and then headed out to go and see that snapping turtle. Yes, I know you're probably wondering wondering why there is a reason number one because he just looks cool look at him put me down please and number two they grow moss on their backs which i'm pretty sure with shears i'll be able to harvest to do something with armor i don't know i just wanted the turtle okay give me a break i crafted a chest placed all of the items i had collected so far made some axes and headed out on day three to start collecting resources i collected as much wood and sand as possible just in case i can't get my hands on any when i get to the volcano day four was here and i spent most of it underwater i I wanted to collect as much food as possible, but I quickly learned that the ocean was no longer safe because I was attacked by hammerhead sharks and even poisonous pufferfish. Day 5 rolled around and I decided it was time to head out and find the volcano. I was sneaking past mobs left, right and centre when suddenly I came across this weird lizard looking thing, but it did a ton of damage with its poisonous attacks. Its poisonous bites were ripping through my heart, leaving me no choice but to build up and create some space, but I was still in range. He was still doing damage. I had no choice but to stay stand and watch my heart's deplete. He left me with just half a heart. I ate some food and then escaped by bridging across and jumping over the treetops. It was time to head for the mountains, so I dived off into this water. Well, we can pretend I did. I then continued battling mobs, zombies and creepers until I finally made it to the mountains. I grabbed some oars on the way, but then the island started shaking once again. I had to hurry, so I started scaling the mountain. I finally made it to the top. There it was. There was was the volcano! This volcanic monster was huge. If it were to erupt, it would be absolutely devastating. But then I heard a strange noise. It was coming from behind me. I decided to choose some food and head down. It seemed to be some sort of nest. A creature came crawling out towards me. I didn't know whether it was friendly or not, but then it started climbing up and stabbed me with its stinger. I was poisoned. The poison was doing extreme amounts of damage and I was left with just half a heart. The creature chased me, stopped and stared me in the eye. This creature was going to eat me alive, so I dived off and struck him with my sword. But these things don't take full damage. It just floated down, crawled around, and started circling me. Enough was enough. I bridged across and finished this creature. I realized from its skin I could craft tough armor and weaponry, so I decided I would head into the nest the next day and get my hands on more of that stuff. But this place was treacherous. This sticky maze-like tunnel ran deep. I knew I was close to the queen because I could see an egg. I headed down deeper and deeper, and there she was. She started swinging her poisonous tail at me. It was time to battle this beast. She fired me high into the air, doing extreme amounts of damage, leaving me with just half a heart, and then persistently stabbed me with her tail, breaking down my shield. Her persistent hits wouldn't stop. I had to look for an opening. I started to sprint away as fast as possible and headed into this small enclosed area of the nest. I bugged myself in 
with wood, regained my strength, placed a crafting table, made a bowl, and scavenged what I could find to make some more food. I then headed back in to fight the queen. She was swinging her pendulum-like stinger at me, but then stopped and started summoning a small army of creatures. They started striking against my shield, but I started swinging back. But then they got the better of me, and they managed to poison me. Oh no, I'm poisoned! I've got to get out of here! I was losing hearts, they were depleting fast! I thought this would be the moment I would lose my life! These creatures had blocked me into the corner! I didn't know what to do! I struck them with my sword and managed to create some space between us! I then finished off the last few! I can't believe I had just half a heart! I regained some strength, headed back out to finish off the last few monsters, and then headed in to finally defeat this queen creature! Her pendulum-like poisonous stinger was swinging at me, but I finally finished her off! She dropped a ton of the material I could use to make the armor. I also found a sticky capsule full of food and also one of the queen's eggs, which, here, you can have that, because I don't want to see any more of these things. Suddenly, the entire hive started shaking. I thought it was going to collapse, so I started sprinting away and made it out. I then used my parkour skills to navigate the mountain and then finally made it to the base of the volcano. Day 7 was here and whilst I was eating, I decided to make a very small hut because I wanted to build a bigger area so I could hatch the dragon egg, which we will do very soon, I promise. I made a chest and stored all of the things ready for the dragon egg build, but then I saw my entire house caught on fire. I don't know what I expected really. I quickly put out the fire but then I noticed the chest was engulfed in flames. I couldn't believe it. I lost all of my resources. Just before I headed out to grab more resources, I noticed a couple of illagers climbing the volcano. I wonder what they were going there for. Are they keeping something from me? I'll have to go there later. It wasn't all bad news though because I still kept what the creatures dropped earlier so I crafted a full set of this weird armor which looked pretty cool. I can't see a thing. Whilst the volcano was bubbling away, I was out collecting resources, considering I lost everything in the fire earlier. I dedicated days 8 to 15 to complete resource collection. Cobblestone, darkwood, spruce wood, iron, coal, anything I could get my hands on. All whilst the volcano was bubbling away behind me. You know, I was pretty worried. I thought it was going to erupt at any moment. On the night of day 16, I decided to do a little bit of exploring considering I'd walked all this way. I stumbled across this small campsite and there was this random guy chatting to himself outside. I ignored him and headed in anyway. Inside I discovered a bed and a chest full of food and considering it's hardcore survival, I decided to take it all because every man for himself, right? I then tried to speak to this guy but he just kept chatting to himself. I know it's up there, it's breathing fire, it's breathing fire, I know it's up there. This guy was pretty obsessed with the volcano, and when I stood in his way, he wasn't too happy about it. What are you doing? Get out the way, get out the way! I'm trying to climb here. I heard a dragon, a real dragon. If I make it to the top, that's my ticket out of here. This guy clearly was insane. I'm the only one with a dragon egg on this island, so I headed home. I made it home on day 18 and turned my little hut into a workstation, ready to get building. I stepped outside and started looking at the area in which I would build my base. Once I had it all planned in my head, I got to work. Out of nowhere, I was ambushed by this giant creature that looked similar to the queen I had killed earlier, but it did a ton more damage and was striking me with its stinger. I had no choice but to flee back into my house. I was down to just half a heart. I am sick and tired of being on such low health on this 100 days. I fled to my little workstation and waited for it to go away. It wouldn't leave, so I decided to finish it off with my sword. Finally, right, back to work. I finally finished the first part of my volcanic base. I decided to leave this part as a sort of workstation. I then decided it was time to finally hatch the dragon egg. I placed it down and watched as particles fizzed around it. The egg snapped, crackled and popped, but I really didn't think it was going to hatch. I waited around for a really long time when suddenly there it was. A cute little baby fire dragon. This was hands down the best thing that has ever happened to me in Minecraft ever. The dragon was pretty scared of me at first, but then it crawled into my room and it started asking for food. Hey mister, I'm hungry. Can you get me some food? I immediately headed out to try and get some food for my new baby dragon. I made sure they were all tucked up safe in my house that I had built and then headed out on day 29 to collect some food. I was only coming across small things like mushrooms here and there, all whilst battling mobs that were trying to kill me. I then took a few moments to appreciate the view because this island is mesmerizing. 
During my search for food, I was coming across small structures, including this mine shaft, in which I was ambushed by a giant crimson mosquito, which started sucking my blood. It was doing a little bit of damage by spitting the blood back at me. It creeped me out, so I took this thing out as soon as possible. I then was hoping for food inside the chest, but when I opened it up, I didn't find a lot, just some iron and a dagger. And then this enderman thanked me for killing the mosquito, because it was biting him in his sleep. Day 31, and this volcano island wasn't getting any easier. The mobs were absolutely insane. This weird, terrifying koala bear thing was absolutely tearing through my heart. I was using my shield and new dagger in combination to take it out. I then headed over to this small structure, had a look inside the chest, and found these cool daggers. I then continued my search for food and got pretty lucky finding wheat and also this cool-looking sword. And then day 32 was here and I found a pond filled with fish. So I got to work collecting as much meat as possible so I could take it back for my baby dragon. At first, they didn't like the mushroom, but when I started feeding them the fish, they were loving it. After eating a ton of food, my baby dragon laid down to relax, but then something insane happened. They evolved a whole new size, and this wasn't even their final form. I can't spread my wings. Can you make this place bigger? Of course. Let's get to work. As you can see, I spent a ton of time mining as much as possible. I dug the base a little bit deeper, terraformed the entire top, and then made a sort of landing pad area so I could take the dragon out and then bring them back and land them safely in my base. I also left a glass top so I could see that beautiful volcano in all her glory. Day 42 was really important. My dragon was growing even larger in size, which I didn't think was possible, and I also decided to go strip mining, which, if you're a fan of the channel, you know is like my favourite thing ever. But then I stumbled across this cave, and the fun ended pretty quickly, as I was ambushed by absolutely tons of mobs. I was surrounded by mobs left, right, and centre, and all I had was these two little daggers to keep me alive, but they were pretty cool to use. How I survived is pretty much a miracle. <laughs> I had like a moment of peace before I was attacked by mobs again, and then I stumbled across diamonds. I couldn't believe it, so I sprinted away, plugged myself in, and finally mined them up. Ah. Oh, diamonds, they're literally the best thing ever. Whilst I was mining, the volcano started shaking once again, so I decided to speed things up. I dedicated the next few days to complete all collection, all whilst being stalked up on by evil mobs. And then on day 53, I finally made it to the surface, took a look around, and then headed into this nearby structure in hopes to find some cool loot. But when I headed down, I was met with a really crazy surprise. There was a guy captured here called Buck. Who are you? The name's Buck, and well, the reason I'm all chained up in here is because I tried to steal some lava crystals from the Netherkeeper. I know, I know. Wait, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> oh dear. He explained that with lava crystals, he could craft lava armor and go swimming in the volcano because there is a hidden fortress in there. But the nether keeper is what protects the crystals. So I said, I will go and get the crystals myself. I promised Buck I would return and free him from these chains. But in the meantime, I needed to hurry. I checked the chest for loot and did find a name tag and a saddle, which would be perfect for my dragon back at home. So I headed back as soon as possible, sprinting past volcanic mobs trying to take me down. Day 56, I made it back to the volcano base, and I was so excited to give my dragon their new name tag. I headed in, did a few quality of life improvements, placed down the anvil, and named my dragon Sparky. Once I applied the name tag, I also gave them a saddle, which I thought looked pretty snazzy. Are you happy? Let's go exploring. I want to fly. Sparky was just as excited as I was, so I got a good night's rest and made a full set of diamond armor ready to face the nether keeper and get my hands on those lava crystals. This was the moment. Day 57, I take flight on a dragon. This was something I've wanted to do ever since day one when I picked up that fire dragon egg. As we flew high into the sky, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The views were absolutely breathtaking, and as Sparky flew me high into the the sky, I was thinking about the magical terrace that I would discover at the top of that volcano, but I was in no condition. I need to get my hands on that lava armor, so it was time for me and Sparky to head out. Over the next few days, I was traversing the island on the hunt for the Nether Keeper. I was coming across all sorts of structures, but no sign of this evil boss that Buck spoke of until this moment. Their boss bar appeared, so I quickly landed Sparky and cleared the area of any hostile mobs. 
Day 58, time to fight. I'll protect these crystals with my life. Leave or die. I approached the nether keeper, ready to battle head on, but I quickly underestimated his power, and with one swing, he did a ton of damage, knocking me down to just two and a half hearts. So I whipped out my bow and started firing shots. My bow was doing small but consistent damage. I then decided to sprint around and see if I could flank this beast. I stuck up from behind and started striking him with my sword. But then out of nowhere, I was flanked by these creatures. They seemed to be mutated by the lava and could withstand the heat. They were flinging creatures at me. It did a ton of damage. I had no choice but to run away. I took some time to regain some strength, all whilst dodging these catapulted projectiles. I was picking my bow shots, and I finally destroyed the creature. Man, these things are really annoying. I cleared the area of the creatures and then headed in to continue my battle with the nether keeper. I was picking my bow shots, but then he did a ton of damage. I decided it was time to grab Sparky and see if I could fight this beast from the air. I lined up my shots and started firing arrows into the beast. I finally defeated the nether keeper, all whilst riding on Sparky's back, the ultimate team, but he left behind minions that were determined to taking me down. I've got him boys, protect the crystals! I finished off the last of the nether keeper's minions and then I could finally get my hands on those lava crystals. Well, they weren't crystals, they were shards, but I can craft them into crystals when I get home. I dedicated the day to just solely collecting these lava shards and also other ores that I came across in the caves. After collecting a ton of the lava shards and some obsidian, I jumped on Sparky and we headed home. With an inventory filled with lava crystals, I headed back. It took me two days to make it back home, but once I made it, I filled Sparky's belly up with fish to regain their health because they took some damage. It was time to make the armor, but first I would need to charge these crystals in a pool of lava to infuse them. I don't know why, I guess that's just what makes them fireproof? I then crafted the full set of lava armor and got rid of my diamond armor because that's for peasants. This full set of lava armor looked incredible and was glowing against my skin. I also crafted a battle axe, which I'm sure would ignite my enemies. I took a look at the volcano. I was wondering what incredible things would be at the top. But before we head up, I wanted to spend some time with Sparky. I thought after everything we've been through the last few days, it would be good to take some downtime. On day 64, I took Sparky to their favorite spot, set up a campfire, and we chatted all night. <laughs> when the sun rose the next day, me and Sparky headed out, flying in and out the canyons of the volcano. We were coming across loads of structures and decided to take our time looting everything we could find. We explored every inch of the volcanic island. We were finding so many little secret hideouts. It was incredible. We were finding loot left, right, and center. Sparky's come a long way since that tiny little baby dragon just a few days ago. Day 75 was here and it was time to head to the top of that volcano. As I flew up, I was met with an incredible view. The pools of lava were radiating tons of heat. I was pretty terrified. The mobs here had been mutated by the volcanic essence and they were terrifying. <laughs> These mutants were trying to set me alight, but with my lava armor, I was fully fire resistant, so I felt pretty confident heading to that sea of lava. It was really quiet, almost too quiet, and then I was ambushed by a bone serpent! These volcanic monsters would leap high into the air and strike me upon their descent. I used my shield and battle axe to strike down this bone serpent. It was clear he was trying to protect something. Once I took him down, it was time to head into the sea of lava and find this fortress. As I headed deeper, I came across a structure. This had to be it. I chewed through the walls and swam through the pool of lava and made it into this fortress. Volcanic spores dribbled from the walls and then I was captured. I seemed to be stuck inside this gooey stick like material. Once I broke out, there was no one to be seen. It must have been the spores leaking from the walls. Once I dropped down, I was captured once again. Something was trying to stop me from finding the heart of this fortress, but I carried on. I was navigating these rooms when suddenly an army of the Netherkeeper's minions came out of nowhere and started attacking me. They were incredibly fast and did a ton of damage. I managed to strike them back with my lava sword and continue navigating these maze-like corridors. Day 77, I stumbled across a chest filled with loot and then I almost lost my life because this creature knocked me down to just half a heart. I knew I was close to the heart of this fortress. I could feel it. But then the entire fortress started shaking. This was it. This was the moment the volcano was about to erupt. I had to get out of here as soon as possible. The fortress started rising from the sea of lava. I bridged across and tried to escape as fast as possible. I made it back to Sparky and we flew away as quickly as we could as the volcano was about to erupt.
The volcano's eruption had devastated the island and the sky began to be filled with the volcanic ash. As it filled the sky, everything darkened. It was almost as if the nether and the overworld had merged into one. I was surrounded by volcanic mobs. It was time to fight. I was completely surrounded and to make it worse, the fire dragon appeared. It was an intense battle between man and dragon. His fire breathing did incredible amounts of damage. I had no choice but to return with my bow shots. The dragon scales seemed impenetrable, but after hours of battling, the dragon seemed weak. I wonder if Sparky was okay. This was the moment! I charged at the dragon and struck him down with my battle axe, finally defeating him. I was still surrounded by tons of mobs though, so I fled as fast as possible. This must have been the dragon that was behind the volcanic eruption. The dragon may be down, but I had to grab Sparky and get out of here as fast as possible. I headed into the volcanic skies. It was an intense flight, but the views were quite mesmerizing. I quickly realized that nowhere was safe on this volcanic island now that it erupted, so I found refuge inside this tree. I lit it up and stayed with just one heart and waited till the morning. Day 86, the storm had passed and things seemed a lot calmer, so I dedicated the last few days to mining and building a quick little base. It was time to build a new life on this once beautiful beautiful island. It has been an incredible 100 days, but me and Sparky made it. Thanks for watching. My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. Peace. Well, I guess I'll be stuck here for the rest of my days. <laughs> whoa, 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 don't cry. I'm, I'm here now. I'm really sorry I'm late. I was like too busy surviving a volcanic eruption and fighting fire-breathing dragons. You have no idea what I've been through. How about you come back with me and Sparky and I'll explain. The war between kingdoms rages on, and I remain imprisoned. Hmm. But all of this changes today. Today is the day I've been planning for the last five years. It was time to escape this castle and face the open world. I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days in medieval Minecraft with new places to explore, new enemies to take on, fantastical beasts to face. Will I be able to attain the best armor in the game to tackle those dungeons and take out the trolls? Let's find out. Our first day, but I wasn't free just yet. They'd already sent a search party after me. I had to get out of there as soon as possible, otherwise it could all end here. I traversed through thick green foliage and beautiful wildlife. It was great to breathe in the fresh air. I then got on with the basics collecting wood, but then I came across some trouble. It seemed there was a giant. This thing was massive. I tried to creep up on him. I didn't know whether these guys were hostile or not, but I could see sheep and I needed food. But then, he noticed me and started chasing after me. I ran away as fast as possible. He was so close. My survival instincts kicked in. I took a leap. I'd made it and sprinted away from the giant. Whew. That was a close one. After escaping the fierce giant, I then stumbled across a small hut. I headed in to see if anyone was home, but it seemed abandoned. But there was a fresh pie left. I had to eat it. I was too hungry. I then headed upstairs. A place to stay and a chest full of incredible loot. This was just what I needed. Some great progress made in just one day. I looked out the window and could see it was sunset. So I got a good night's rest. It seemed I was going to face some extreme dangers on our medieval fantastical journey. This was only the beginning. Fresh faced and bright eyed, day two was here. I snatched up the loot and then equipped these trousers. Look how snazzy I look. I then decided to take the bed with me and head downstairs. It seemed to just go on forever and ever. Things got real dark real quickly. This place was haunting. I chewed my way through the iron bars, had a look around, but then I was attacked by a spider. Oh, I was so on edge. I then noticed I could see a troll, but then he noticed me. His roar echoed throughout the dungeon. I had to get out of here as soon as possible. Oh, oh, that was a close one. Whew, it's time to keep moving. I headed out into the wild and came across this giant castle-like structure filled with soldiers and also this tower surrounded by these magical flowers. But then I heard something. 
It was an evoker summoning vexes. I sprinted out of there as soon as possible, heading over hills. But then I witnessed something absolutely beautiful. A real life Pegasus. Look at this thing, it was absolutely magnificent. I then stumbled across a medieval-like structure, so I headed down. But then I was ambushed by a group of zombies, so I had to strike them one by one, chopping them up into pieces. I then headed out. The Pegasus was even following me. This was strange. I decided to get some sleep. The next day, I headed into the vast medieval plains, hoping I'd find civilization. But I was so very wrong. This, my friends, was a Deathbringer camp. They were screeching and roaring at me. I had walked into their territory and I had to get out as soon as possible. I sprinted into the woodlands, but a dragon, a dragon's nest was nearby. I, I, I didn't know what to do. I just ran away. He was screaming at me. I, I was panicking. The only way out of this was down. I had to head into the caves. He was following me. I thought I was going to lose my life. I decided to head deeper and deeper down, hoping I'd find some ores. After an extremely intense few days, I enjoyed the downtime mining. I found a bunch of iron redstone, blue lapis, loads of everything. I was feeling so good. I then stumbled across some diamonds. I couldn't believe it. These things are my most favorite thing in the whole wide world. Ah, oh. I then headed back. I thought the best thing to do was just to dig straight up away from the dragon. After traversing the medieval world for a good few days, I finally stumbled across something that would change the fate of our future, a village. Finally. This was just what I needed, a safe haven. I decided to take some time to get to know the locals, and they welcomed me with open arms. The town leader even let me stay for as long as I liked. I looked up at the starry night and got some rest. Wow. But we had no time to waste. We had to keep on moving. I used the temporary home to store my inventory. Look at us go. It was time to get the ball rolling. I surveyed the area and I found a bunch of structures that I would explore later on. This was great. I then decided to explore the town a little more and I found a chest filled with a bunch of amazing loot, even some obsidian. I then collected a bunch of resources, stone, dark wood. I even made a chisel so I could make some really beautiful blocks. I then headed out to find a spot I would build Yep, you guessed it, my new home. was complete and I have to say I was pretty impressed with myself I'm getting better at this whole building thing you know I decided to really go for the medieval feel with those glass panes I took a look at the sun blazing in the sky and decided to add some furnishing tables chairs here and there and then I took a seat to enjoy my new home I then utilized the diamond and ore I collected earlier to craft some weaponry and a little bit of armor to keep me protected against the dangers in this medieval world. Oh, also, I completely forgot. Before I started building my house, this, like, hawk thing was, like, firing its spikes at me and doing some serious damage. So I took some time to take this bad boy out, collected his feathers, and made myself a legendary weapon. Like, how cool is this? This was the fastest sword ever. I then collected a bunch of food because things were about to get serious. Before I could tackle this tower, I need to be more prepared. So I headed down and dug for more ores, but then I stumbled across a dungeon. Yes, our second dungeon so far, but I was feeling a little bit more prepared. I wonder what danger awaits. I could hear the screeches from the undead soldiers crawling towards me. I struck down the first rotten beast, but they just kept coming. They were fully armored. I used all of my power and another one down. But another wave, another wave of undead soldiers. Their thick armor was incredibly difficult to penetrate, but with perseverance and determination, I managed to strike them both down. It was time to progress. I headed deeper into the dungeon, taking on enemies. One zombie down, and then another zombie down. But then things got serious. My life was almost taken, down to just two and a half hearts. I had to run away. I was being stalked by a zombie pillager. Oh, those baby zombies can end everything. 
A close call, but I had to keep moving. I headed deeper into this devilish dungeon. I found this room that was radiating heat, but I was ambushed by a bunch of spiders. But with a little bit of dodging and a little bit of sword work, I took them both out. I blocked off the wall and I started mining for resources and XP. There was even a bunch of obsidian in here, so I decided to take advantage of the time and the safety and get as much obsidian as possible because I'd need to head into the nether at some point. 11 obsidian, great progress. It was time to keep on mining. I mined for days and days. I wanted more diamonds. I needed those diamonds. And by the end of it, well, I had a bunch and I was feeling incredibly great. Look at this. It was time to head back as soon as possible. I ran and I ran and I ran and finally made it back home. And I crafted myself a full set of diamond armor. The helmet looks kind of weird though. <laughs> After getting some sleep, I headed the next day to breed some cows together because I need more leather to make the enchantment table. Yep, I planted some sugar canes too, but in the meantime, I headed over to that tower. Fully lathered up in diamond armor, I was feeling more prepared. It was time to scale this beast. I started to accept the fact if I fell, it would all be over. I was successfully scaling this momentous structure. It was incredible. I then witnessed a view. The view was absolutely breathtaking. You see that giant down there? Wow. That castle was also filled with soldiers that I'd have to tackle later. I then finally made it to the top. I wondered what would await me. Would it be an enemy? Nope. <laughs> It was a wizard, a very friendly wizard that was trapped up here and he's been here for years. He gave me some spell books, even his hat. We chilled for a little while, had a conversation, and then I got a good night's rest. The next day, I thanked him for his time and jumped off this huge structure. Wow. Some incredible progress. Ah, look at that giant. I'll be back for you, buddy. I then planted the brewing stand that the wizard had given me. I wanted to keep the momentum, so I decided to make a start on the enchantment table. I just didn't have enough resources at this point, so I headed out to breed my cows together and then plant some sugar canes. They were like little incremental things, but they make a big difference. I then spent the night killing zombies, and then I grabbed a good night's rest and waited for the sugar canes to grow. Big things were coming, but I just wasn't quite prepared. I had to work harder, so I dedicated the next few days solely to my cows and the sugar canes. And by the end, I had a bunch of resources. I also felt kind of bad, because look at this, I had to like slaughter all of the cows I dedicated so much time to. But they didn't die for no reason, so we can just sleep easy knowing that, eh? I then spent the next few days making paper, making a bunch of books, collected a bunch of wood so then I could craft bookshelves. And yep, you guessed it, I finally made the enchantment table, planted a bunch of bookcases, and leveled that bad boy up. I even enchanted my boots with feather falling, but I needed more XP. And while for that, you guessed it, we're heading to the nether. So I grabbed some flint, grabbed the obsidian, and crafted the nether portal. I built the portal as fast as possible. That ender dragon fight was just around the corner. Using my flint and steel, I sparked up the portal. This was it. It could all end here, but I headed in anyway to face the dangers of the nether. This place was radiating heat, but I couldn't believe it. I was the luckiest person on earth. My nether portal spawn was underneath a nether fortress. I took full advantage of this. I protected my nether portal with cobblestone and then headed out mining those quartz for that XP. I even killed a bunch of endermen for ender pearls. And I mean, I killed a lot of endermen. I needed those pearls to get to the ender dragon. I then spent some more time collecting quartz and then headed to the nether fortress. Upon entry, I struck down a wither skeleton. I was feeling like a beast, but then I was attacked by a blaze and these things lit me up in fire, my skin scorching. These blazes were no joke. In groups, they could take you out in a matter of seconds. I headed deeper into the fortress, striking down the blazes. I had to work quickly. My first blaze rod, great work. I dedicated days to fighting the blazes. I stalked that blaze spawner and as they appeared, I strike them down, collecting those blaze rods but I got a little bit too overwhelmed. It was time to get out of here. So I sprinted away deeper into the nether. I couldn't believe it. We had made some serious progress, but now it was time to head home. I made it back safely to my nether portal. I took one last look at the hell and then headed back to the overworld. 
It was time to enchant all of my weapons and armor. We finally did it. I was feeling OP. The dragon was just around the corner. However, I had one more thing to do. It was time to face the giant. I couldn't sleep easy knowing my villagers were terrified of the giant nearby. So I repaired my shield and headed over to face this beast. Once located, I created some elevation and then fired my first bow shot. My first shot made contact and he was furious. I missed my second shot so I decided to close the distance. But I think it was a bad decision. He headed towards me. I didn't know what to do. I ran away. His colossal stature was incredibly intimidating. And also, even despite his size, he was incredibly fast. He closed the space. I didn't know what to do, so I held my shield up, taking the blows of his hits. But then he picked me up. I held my shield, but he broke it. I didn't know what to do. I ran away with just half health, taking and picking my shots with my bow. He chased me and chased me out into the open fields. I had to pick my shots, I had to strike him with my bow, but he wouldn't let up. I just kept moving, I kept striking. Oh no! My last few shots, could I do it? Could I do it? Could I beat him? Yes! I had defeated the giant! Wow. We done it, ladies and gentlemen. I headed home and crafted another shield. But the fight wasn't over. I grabbed myself some wheat, headed out into the plains, and grabbed myself a trusty steed. With this companion, I'd be unstoppable. Once we bonded, I applied some gold armor. Look how badass he looks. Wow, we were making some serious progress, and the ender dragon was so, so close. I headed home. I let my steed sleep in the house. Because, well, he's just a chill dude, and I, I didn't see any problem with it, okay? Okay? Before the Ender Dragon fight, I had one last job, and that was to get revenge on those that had taken me prisoner. So I found their hideout, told my trusty steed to await, and headed in. I surveyed the area and made my way to the front, but it was a mistake. An entire army chased me and almost took my life. I couldn't believe I was so stupid. I ran away and headed home and came back a few days later, more prepared. I decided to take a distant approach, picking my bow shots and taking them out one by one. I felt like Rambo, hiding in the trees, taking their lives. I picked my bow shots and I was incredibly accurate. One soldier thought he could take me on and well, he picked the wrong guy. I was furious that they had captured me, so I decided to strike him down. No mercy. I then continued to the tower. I found the captain. Boom, I took the captain out and the bow and arrow guard, splitting him into pieces. But once again, I made a mistake. A whole group of them were waiting for me at the top. I had to jump down, I, I had to get out of there. I created some distance between us. I just couldn't believe I couldn't get revenge. I needed the information of where the main base was, but I guess I wouldn't be accomplishing that in this 100 days. Maybe it was something I would return to in 200 days. I watched the sun set because tomorrow was a big, big day. It was time to face the Ender Dragon, so I brewed up all of my potions using the Blaze Powder and Nether Wart. I made Strength 2 potions and then crafted all of the Eye of Enders I would need. I then took one last look at my house, a walk around the village, I thanked the townskeeper for allowing me to stay. I hoped I would return, but you never know, it could all end here. I threw my first Eye of Ender high into the sky. It was time to head out and find the stronghold. It took me days and days traversing through extremely dangerous environments. I made it to a vantage point and surveyed the area and look at this, a giant castle and a fierce dragon high in the sky. I threw my second eye of ender, heading deeper into the world. I even came across a wizard and he told me the direction in which to go. I finally found the location in which the Eye of Enders were pointing to. I dug down, came across that mossy cobblestone, and found the stronghold. I took out a few zombies, and then located the portal. I took out the spawner. Oh, I was nervous. I placed the Eye of Enders, covered up the lava in between. The last few. This was it. The moment I faced the dragon. I headed in. Oh, so many Endermen. I took out the first crystal with my bow. However, the Enderman delayed my progress. A bunch of them were attacking me. The dragon was furious that I was destroying all of her healing crystals. But I continued striking them down, taking away her ability to regenerate. 
I then headed down, slurped up my strength 2 potion and began attacking her. But her giant wingspan swooped me up into the air. Oh, this could be it. I could lose my life. Oh, an MLG clutch. I couldn't believe it. I then continued striking her down, dodging her dragon balls and finally taking her life. Freeing the end. We did it. I collected all of the XP and then I collected her dragon egg. Wow, some serious progress made. I'd done it. I then headed back home, planted the egg on the table, and chilled out for a bit. Wow, we'd accomplished so much in 100 days. I shut my two front doors and got a good night's rest. We'd done it, ladies and gentlemen. We'd finished our 100 days in medieval Minecraft. As always, I've been the Coffee Fuel Genius. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Every man's life ends the same way. It is only the details of how he lived and how he died that distinguish one man from another. I remember this quote when I found the boat. I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days on a deserted survival island. Our journey begins with me, the coffee fuel genius, and an empty inventory. Let's begin. Well, this was a silly idea. It was day one on the survival island and I had no resources, no food. I needed to work quickly because if nightfall came and I was unprepared, it would be game over. I made as many tools as possible and prayed, prayed that the tree dropped a sapling. And thank goodness me, it did. It dropped three saplings which I planted around the island. I then farmed up as much grass as I could in hopes that it would drop seeds to make wheat. I had a turtle on the island to keep me sane while I extended it slightly to make a small farm in which I would plant my seeds. With the farm now complete, that would mean I had an unlimited food source, thank goodness. It was now time to spend the rest of day one working on an underground base. By doing this, I would save resources and protect myself from the ghoulish undead late at night. The underground base was finished and I had a full set of stone tools. I was hungry and my wheat hadn't grown yet, so I needed to think fast. I made a sword and headed out to sea to kill as many fish as I could. Yes, I felt slightly guilty because they were just minding their own fishy business. But you know what? I was hungry and there's plenty more fish in the sea. I made a couple of doors and then sealed up my underground base. Now, they were wooden and in hardcore survival, zombies can break them, but it was better than nothing. With no bed and sleep deprivation setting in, I mined all night of day one for more resources such as coal and cobblestone. I mean, I just made some stairs to make going up and down the base a little bit easier. You know, I couldn't really do much. I was limited being in the caves all night. <laughs> Day two already, so I decided to aesthetically improve my island just slightly. I added a, like a small cobblestone hut around my cave. It, it wasn't much, but you know, it's just me on the island. There's no one to judge. I decided to make some minor improvements here and there as well. Now, once again, without a bed, I had to spend the evening of day two mining for more resources. I did find some iron, so that was great. Um, and then I just spent all night mining, mining and mining and mining and mining because there was nothing else I could do. Day three was the day in which I realized I was going to be stuck on this island alone for a very, very long time. So I decided to work on my farm just slightly to make more wheat because I needed more food. I then proceeded to smelt all the ores from the night before and then made a few iron tools. It was going well. Once again, you guessed it, the night of day four, I spent my time mining. More mining, mining. There was nothing else I could do on this island. I started to go insane just... <gasps> Finally, I'd found some diamonds which would improve my chances of getting off this island. It's like seeing a plate of your favorite food. The juices, the texture, 
Diamond is just the best. I was in a bit of a better mood day five, I must admit. Diamonds in the inventory, food in the inventory. You know, things were looking great. I spouted all my ores, then headed into my strip mine to collect obsidian. I mined as much obsidian as I could. I think I'd roughly mined around about nine obsidian on day five. Day 6 was a strange one. I was visited by this strange being and he informed me that I need to head to the end because they're being terrorized by a dragon. So I agreed that I was sorted out for him but I just need a bit of time and resources. If I was to save the end from this dragon I would need to improve on my fighting technique so I spent the night of day 6 defending my island from ghoulish spiders and evil drowned beings. I worked my hardest. I was fearing for the turtle's life at this point. I thought there's no way that this drowned monster would eliminate my only friend. So I used my shield to defend his trident throws. No! Oh, thank goodness, he's alive. But then I was attacked by phantoms. They were coming at me left, right and centre. I just didn't know what to do. So I headed into my base just for a second to gather my thoughts. I headed out to try and kill the drowned being, but there was no chance. It was almost over. They could have killed me then. It was just too risky. I decided to eat my food and relax the rest of the night. Whew, that was a close one. I needed to work on something more substantial. A real base. Whilst building, I was interrupted multiple times by creepers. I was so close, but once again, interrupted by phantoms. I was almost finished. What a very, very busy few days. Fighting monsters, building my base. It was time to just cool it down, you know. Go fishing, extend my farm. I was so proud of how far I'd come in the last few days. I spent the rest of the evening of day 10 inside my main base, watching as my enemies tried to defeat me, but they had no chance. Day 11 was here and I collected as much wood as I could because I wanted to box in my farm. I just thought it looked weird, just a, a bunch of soil, like extended from the island. So I boxed it in using wooden planks and a bunch of fences. This ran all the way into day 12. I aesthetically improved the farm just slightly with stone slabs and torches. And then I just farmed up all of the wheat and planted more seeds. You know, the usual. Uh, again, I was fighting phantoms. There's still a pain in my backside. And then I spent the night time mining as much as I could. But I didn't find any diamonds, unfortunately. Unexpectedly, in the nightfall of day 13, I was attacked by a group of drowned monsters. Now, one of them had a trident, but he just kept hiding away in the ocean. It was really difficult to get a view on him. He tried throwing tridents at me left, right and center, but he wasn't successful. And then he just fleed. He, he just left me alone. I then spent the evening of day 14 collecting resources and more obsidian. <laughs> The night of peaceful mining was over, so I decided to build a composter and make as much food as possible. And then I just decided to add a chimney onto my little house. I just thought maybe someone will see the smoke and come and save me. Then the drowned with the trident returned, but stood no match against me and my shield. The dolphins came and helped me out as well, which was an absolute bonus. Without a bed, this was just getting really tough. I bred my turtles together, then headed back inside because I just couldn't do anything at night. I, I was just attacked by phantoms left, right and centre. Things were looking up. I built a small enclosure for the turtles and then I decided to flatten the entire terrain for more space. I then dedicated the next few days to building a bigger structure. Waterfall. 
The house was complete, so I decided to fill it out with chests and workbenches, furnaces, lanterns, and then I decided to head out the night of day 25 because I really needed a bed. I was sick of fighting phantoms. On the day of 26, I decided to build somewhere specifically to grow trees, and then in the night time, I needed more string. I needed that cotton. So I headed out to fight those spiders. I was completely surrounded. Zombies, phantoms, but I needed that spider. I needed that string. It was so close though, they all ganged up on me and I needed to run back to my base. My mission was almost successful. I picked up that piece of string and I only needed one more. One more, so I headed out to kill the spider I spotted in my wheat farm. He dropped a piece of string. Finally, I could craft a bed. Yes, my first good night's sleep on the island. I felt incredible. I made a few improvements to my house, made it look a bit more snazzy. And then, yes, you guessed it, it was time to face Hell's Gates. I dedicated the next few days to building a space for my nether portal. The portal was complete. It made a fine addition to the island. It was time. I made myself some gold boots. A new shield. It was time to face hell. I was terrified. I never thought I'd live to see the nether in person, only hear about it in gruesome stories, telling of its evil endless pits and pools of lava. I quickly covered the nether portal for protection, but I needed more cobblestone. I didn't want to risk losing the portal, because if I had lost that connection between the overworld and the nether, there was no coming back. I finished off protecting the nether portal and collected some bone, and then I found this snorting piglin that would barter with me. He gave me some fire resistance potions, which would be excellent for finding that fortress and killing those blazes. The piglin snorted at me, informing that I needed to be more prepared if I was going to face the fortress, so I headed back to the overworld. On the evening of day 39, I decided to head into my strip mine. I wanted to gather as much of the resources as I could. Lapis, coal, gold, so I could barter with more piglins. I found some diamonds along the way, not as much as I'd like though, so I dedicated a few days just to try and find diamonds. <laughs> I wasn't massively successful here, I only found about 12 diamonds, but it'll do for now. I then dedicated the next few days to making a bow, some diamond armor, and the enchantment table. Being on a survival island was really limiting. I barely had any resources and couldn't build bookshelves with leather, so I went to barter with the piglin in hopes it would drop more leather, but he just gave me a bunch of fire resistance potions. I finally had enough just to level up the enchantment table a little bit. Now, I didn't have the best enchantments, but it was better than nothing. Feeling more prepared, I headed into the nether. Now, let me tell you, no gear can erase the fear. I was still very, very nervous. Somehow, straight away, the zombie pigmen came after me. Like, I did literally nothing wrong here. Like, I was trying to save them from the gas. Like, I was trying to have your back here. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? So, I just headed back and farmed and killed some time, improved my house area, because I needed to wait for the zombie pigmen to cool down. I took a good long look at everything I'd achieved so far. This could be where I lost it all. I was so proud of how far I'd come in just so few days. After treading very cautiously, it seemed that the zombie pigmen had calmed down. Friendship was restored, so I progressed into the nether, collecting resources, trudging through soul sand. I made small markers with cobblestone and torches to allow me to locate where I had been. I had covered a lot of ground. I climbed up, dug my way down, killed ghasts, taken out skeletons, when finally, finally, after hours of searching, I found the nether fortress. The very fortress the piglin told me about. I'd done it, so I built a big marker and headed back home because I wanted to grab the fire resistance potions I had. Now, in my journey home, I almost died to a ghast. It was almost game over. Somehow, somehow, I managed to dodge his bullets. 
I couldn't get home fast enough. I rushed as quickly as I could, taking out enemies as I found them. I made it back to the portal. It was time to grab those potions. Yes, it was nice to be back somewhere I was familiar, but I didn't want to get too comfortable. I needed to quickly make those gold bars and grab those potions. I needed to head back into the nether to tackle that fortress. My hands were shaking. It could all end here. The heat radiated from the nether brick. I made my way very cautiously onto the outskirts of the fortress. I navigated the maze-like corridors very, very carefully. I was hunting for that blaze spawner. I found it. It was time. After extinguishing the blaze rods, I collected all the nether wart, looted the chests, and killed wither skeletons. I had to get out of there, it was too risky, so I made a fiery escape. I dodged the wrath of the ghasts. Whew, we made it. Finally, I was home, so I made some diamond boots, enchanted them with protection three, and made some brewing stands. Now it was time to make a place where I could make potions. The brewing area was finally finished, so I got to work making as many potions as I could. Now, the fundamental potion I needed was an awkward potion, so thank goodness I grabbed as much nether wart as I could from the fortress. I then used phantom membrane to make slow falling potions. This would help me when I'm killing the ender dragon. I then used redstone to extend the length of them and a bunch of blaze powder to make strength two potions. Wow, we come so far. It was time, yes, you guessed it, it was time to find that stronghold, so I positioned myself and threw the Eye of Ender high into the sky. Feeling well rested and a belly full of food, it was time, you guessed it, to head to the stronghold. Wish me luck. I, I, I was pretty emotional, I won't lie, it was the first time leaving the island. The first time seeing mainland. I made a small outpost, took a deep breath, it was time- Okay, no, okay, okay, I didn't really go to the stronghold. I found a- I found a living, breathing animal, so I brought him back to the survivor island, and then I thought, am I going to find some more animals? So I found a chicken! I found a chicken! A real-life chicken! Which then I could use the feathers to make more arrows! So, you could go as far to say that I chickened out here. Yes, I didn't go to the stronghold. I brought back the chicken and then bred as many chickens as I could. I headed over to explore. I made a best friend. Like, I was really excited that the parrot and me had formed a bond. Finally, a friend on this lonely journey. I spent a lot of time breeding chickens. Like, a lot. I needed as many feathers as possible, and then I used the gravel to get flint. I just needed arrows, like there's no way I was taking on this ender dragon without arrows. Oh, I was nervous. It was time. Wow, it, it was so dark, and there were endermen everywhere. I slurped up my slow falling potion and witnessed the dragon swipe away the enderman. I was so, so nervous. I started taking shots, dodging the dragon's fireballs. I had to destroy the crystals. I took numerous shots and my aim was quite impressive. I was making fantastic progress, eliminating those crystals. I 
I couldn't quite hit the last few, so I climbed the towers. I destroyed another crystal and made my way down. Only one to go. I used my water bucket to climb the tower. The dragon was furious. He had seen that I had removed all of the crystals. It was now my time to strike. The dragon could fly no more, so I headed down and attacked the beast. He tried to escape, but my arrow shots and strength 2 potion was too much for him. I did it! I freed the end from the ender dragon! I collected all of that glorious XP. Hey, we did it, little guy. I then collected the dragon egg. I made it home. Now it was time to build somewhere to showcase the dragon egg. I created a small storage facility. Ah. Oh. We'd made it, 100 days. Thank you so much to each and every single one of you for watching my videos. The response so far has been completely overwhelming and I cannot thank you enough. It means the absolute world to me. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. I'm the Coffee Fuel Genius. Peace out. Never be frightened of your nightmares. Use them to finally face your fears. Hello? Anyone? Listen, Fru, if this is just a prank, you can come out. <laughs> Very funny. Hopelessly stranded on a hardcore survival island, our tale continues where I attempt to survive 200 days. My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. Let's go. Hello, me again. Before I continue my journey, I wanted to suit up with full diamond armor. This half iron, half diamond just wasn't cutting it. Yes, it was all enchanted, but it just wasn't good enough in my opinion. So I headed to mainland to start strip mining. I thought I'd have a better chance of finding diamonds there. So I made some stone tools, grabbed some trap doors, covered up, you know, just in case a creeper gets, you know, creepy and blows up and ends the whole thing. I headed into the strip mine and I wanted to get those diamonds. I mean, I was getting really lucky with iron and coal and a bit of gold here and there, but I had no luck with diamonds. I mean, I came across a cave at one point, debated climbing down, but I thought, no, I better play it safe, build a platform across and continue strip mining on diamond level. You're probably as bored as I was at this point, <laughs> I won't lie. I was coming across some gold here and there, but nothing exciting. I just needed diamond, man. Like, where is this diamond? I come across caves and other places, but I just kept finding gold, which was great. Don't get me wrong, but I need a diamond. Oh, MLG moment as well. Look how cool I am. Yep, strip mining continued until day 102. I was feeling a little bit better. Killed a creeper, found a cave, and yes, come across some juicy diamonds. Now, it was only a couple. Like, it wasn't great, but it was progress. And then this happened. I came across a mine shaft, and I was a little bit out of my depth. I was completely surrounded by the undead. And yes, I had some armor on, but I, I got a bit shaky, I won't lie. They almost got the better of me, but, you know, I'm getting the hang of things now. I took them all out, cracked some food down my throat, and then I came across... A nice big vein of diamonds. Yes, one step closer to full diamond armor. Let's go. Yeah, I was feeling pretty good. I was one step closer to full diamond armor, but not just yet. So I headed back to the island, resupplied, and headed back out to the mine shaft. After ruthlessly raiding the hallways of the mine shaft, 
I finally came across a nice big stash of diamonds. Look at that. Now, I'd be a fool not to search the rest of the mine shaft, so I continued to do that. I mean, I didn't find a lot, some gold veins here, killed some of the levered up undead, and then I came across some big spiders. Nope, 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 definitely a nope. So I headed back home because I wanted to make full diamond armor. I got suited and booted with full diamond armor. Woof, look at me. I mean, about time, right? I should have got that way earlier. Now, let me tell you something. You don't get much time to read books when you're trying to survive on a survival island, especially when you're being hunted by pretty much everything that breathes. But what you do need is books for the enchantment table. So that's why I headed into the stronghold to try and find the stronghold library to upgrade that enchantment table. Now, I think I got a little bit overconfident here. I, I was ambushed by pretty much everything going in, in the stronghold. I mean, a bunch of skeletons came out of nowhere and it got pretty intense. I was blocking their arrow shots. I was striking them as quickly as I could. I realized I needed to hurry up and find that library and get out of there. I stumbled across a prisoner in the stronghold and he was informing me of a tool I could use to fly, to fly. He said I could locate it at an end city in the end, but just when he went to tell me of the city's location, the creeper took his life. I couldn't believe it. I guess I just have to head to the end and find the elytra myself. I couldn't let this stop me. I had to continue my search for the stronghold's library. I needed those books for the enchantment table. Yes, I found the library. No librarian could shush me here. It was time to steal some books. I cleared my inventory and got to work. I had stacks and stacks of books for my enchantment table. I even came across some enchanted books with some great, great enchantments for my weapons. So I used the end as a shortcut and look who was there, my pet parrot. So he jumped on my shoulder and we headed back home. Wow, so much achieved in just less than 10 days. Day 110, I stuck all of my books in my storage facility and then I debated what I'd do with the enchantment table. I just, it wasn't cutting it being outside. So I headed to mainland, got as much dirt as possible and then built a small extension to my island. This is where I would build the place for the enchantment table. I grabbed as much cobblestone, smelted it all up. Yeah, you guessed it. It was time to build somewhere for the enchantment table. The build was complete. I was really happy with the final result. I changed armor about halfway through because I didn't want to damage the diamond armor I worked so hard for. Look at that, the enchantment table fully leveled up to level 30. Now it was time to get enchanting. Now, before my armor gets the glow up that it so desperately needs, I just wanted to make some small adjustments, you know, improve the bridge, get rid of that dirt path. I then placed a couple of armor stands inside the building, then used Minecraft trickery to encase them in glass. I then proceeded to disenchant all of my armor. I had a ton of XP from killing the Ender Dragon, so I got to work spending all of it. I enchanted everything. I ended up with some great gear, a great sword, fully lathered up, in enchantments. Look at me. I'm so happy. The sun was blazing in the sky, so I took advantage and farmed up as much wheat as I could to make some food. I was just thinking about everything that the skeleton said about that end city, so I headed in the next day to the stronghold. Yes, you guessed it. I wanted to find that flying tool, the elytra. The end is such a sophisticated and complicated place. Yes, there may not be as many threats as the overworld or the nether, but the end challenges you mentally. You have to think on your feet. You have to watch the edge at all times. I found the end portal and I built up and created a platform outside of it just for safety. And then I headed in. Whew. Wow. Just a handful of blocks to stand on. This is crazy. I had my friendly pirates chocolate and chip but they weren't enough to allow me to achieve my goal. I knew I'd need to have to head back. I needed more building materials to build bridges across. There was no way I was gonna survive here with just a handful of blocks. It felt like I had wasted a pearl, but I needed to do that. I needed to head back and grab as much end stone as possible. So I just mined. I chipped and chipped and chipped away at that end stone. I wanted that elytra and nothing could stop me. 
Here goes nothing. Another attempt. I started building a bridge across. Endstone crumbled beneath me as I sprinted across the end's plains, dodging the Enderman. My only goal was to find that end city. Just when I thought all hope was lost, I found it. This was the most complex and epic structure I'd ever seen towering over me. I knew I had to tread lightly when approaching the end city. I thought I need to use my resources and time carefully, so I decided to head straight for the boat, slurp up my slow falling potion, and make my way inside the end city ship. I was really nervous. The shulkers blubbered and spat at me. The lack of gravity made it very, very difficult to calculate my next moves. But I thought very, very carefully and decided to make my way towards the shulker. No! Chip! I had to get revenge. I continually bashed in the shulker's robust encasing. We'd done it. We had found the elytra. I quickly grabbed Chip's feathers and I grabbed the elytra from the frame. <laughs> it was time to skip town. I had to get out of here, so I looted the chest, grabbing some amazing diamond boots, and then the gold, then the iron. I quickly grabbed the brewing stand, and then proceeded to attack the shulkers that were on the top of the ship. I needed the ender dragon's head. I don't know why, I just really, really wanted it, because I wanted to build something cool with it on. It fell from the ship's tail, so I decided to head down using my slow falling potion. I didn't want to use my elytra yet. I didn't want to waste it. Plus, I didn't even know how to use the thing. I thought I may as well just have a crack at grabbing some more shells so I can make a shulker box. I tried to kill the shulkers at the front, but the bouncers were just too strong for me. You know, they just kept teleporting all over the place and hitting me with their little anti-gravity balls. They're so, so annoying, but I managed to kill them and I decided I'd have a go at trying to get to the top. But you know what? I just didn't have time for it. Not enough potions and not enough skill. So I decided to leave the end and head home. I sprinted home as quickly as possible. Try not to look those Endermen in the eye. These guys were nothing like the one that came to visit me in my hundred days. These guys are evil. I think it's because I'm in their home. I'm up in their house, you know? So I just decided to head back home. Took a sigh of relief. We'd done it and grabbed that elytra. I took a few moments to remember Chip. Thank you, Chip for everything you did for me in the end. Rest in peace. I farmed up as much sugarcane as I could to make paper, combined it with the gunpowder to make those fireworks. Now, I had no idea how to use the elytra, so whew, here goes nothing. Well, that's definitely my new favourite thing. <laughs> I decided to rest and dedicate the next few days to just making some adjustments to the island. I fed the chicks, got a good night's rest, and then I collected a bunch of wood because I had a sort of burst of creativity. I wanted to build a bridge. The bridge was complete and I was really happy with the final look. I just kind of like improved it and it kind of looked okay in the end. I was really happy. Day 146 was sort of like a throwaway day. I combined the boots together because I finally had enough XP. So now I had Feather Falling on my boots. I then went and honoured Chip with his own little grave. Stuck the compass in the middle of the bridge. And then I decorated here and there places with the Ender Dragon. I'll, I'll do a build for that later. Wow, we'd achieved so much. Day 147 came to a close and I realised the next step would be the wither. Fresh faced and bright eyed, day 148 was here and I knew it would be step one in preparation for the wither. Yes, I wanted to head into the nether with fire resistance potions so I could grab some ancient debris. Here goes nothing. Whew. All I need to do is just grab some ancient debris, just enough to upgrade a couple of items. It'll take no time at all. Let me just- Wait, wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Hello there. Sparky? Oh, wait a second. Let me just... 
Okay, let me rewind, let me rewind. No, 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 further back, further back, further back. Okay, just let me explain something. Here we go. Day 106, I did find a dog way back, and I tamed it, brought it back. I was really, really happy. Like, I was, like, over the moon. I named him Sparky with a name tag I'd found in a cave. Everything was going great, but then I lost him the next day, and I was like, where's Sparky gone? So I decided not to put him in the video because, well, he was gone. So now we're back up to scratch and we found the dog that I thought I'd lost. Woohoo! I then put it back in my home and I decided to continue with the quest. Oh, okay. I'm in the nether. I cleared the area of the undead and then I got on with my mission. My only quest was to grab that ancient debris. Now, I wasn't looking to get full armor. That wasn't the intention here. I just wanted to upgrade as much as I could in the time that I had. I was against the clock. I trudged through the netherrack for ages and I eventually found some ancient debris. It was a good start, but it wasn't enough, so I had to continue mining in the nether to get that ancient debris. On my way, I also did grab some XP because I just, I'm a sucker for XP. I, I can't help it, I'm sorry. Things were looking up. The wither preparation was going really well. I had enough ancient debris to upgrade one tool. I made it home, chopped up some wood like the lumberjack I am, constructed a smithing table, cooked up my ancient debris. I had enough to upgrade one diamond tool, so I repaired my pickaxe and applied it to that. Upgrades, people! I only needed one more piece of ancient debris, so I headed in to grab it. You're not gonna believe this, I literally like strip mined f for days and it was here the whole time. The whole time. But anyway, I mined it, moved on, killed the gas and made it home. The next step was going to that fortress to get those wither skulls. My game face was on. I made it to the nether and then I killed the gas protecting the path to the fortress. Nothing could stop me. I was unstoppable. I followed my path to the fortress, taking out everything that stood in my way. Ooh, she's a mean looking beast. Look at her smothered in lava and my enemies. I drank up a fire resistance potion, headed in to try and find those wither skeletons. I wasn't having much luck. I didn't come across any wither skeletons, only blazes, which was great, don't get me wrong. With my looting three sword, I was collecting those blaze rods and it was quite fun taking them out with my bow as well. I did finally come across some wither skeletons and went to town. <gasps> my first wither skull. Progress was being made, but now it was no time to get complacent. I had to continue with my mission. I was doing really well. I collected another skull and then navigated the maze-like corridors. Tackling blazes, skeletons, and wither skeletons. It was all coming at once. I eventually found my third wither skeleton skull. Now it was time to sprint back home. Don't let that cool sea breeze fool you. You may be feeling a little bit more chilled, but I wasn't. I knew I had to continue with my quest and kill that wither. Now, the crucial step in all of this is getting milk. Yes, I know that's a silly thing to say, but with milk, you're pretty much invincible when you're fighting the wither. <laughs> I tried to make this really dramatic, but then a creeper snuck up on me. <laughs> Day 169, the wither was just around the corner. Can I just say thank you so much to each and every single one of you for watching my videos. The response so far has been incredibly overwhelming and I'm just so, so grateful. Join the Fueled Army today, hit that subscribe button. If everyone does that, we may hit 100,000 subscribers, which is dreamy. Day 171 and it was time to go cow hunting. This carried on for like a good few days. Like, who knew how hard it would be to find a cow? I literally, all I needed was a four-legged milk machine, and I couldn't find one. I must have come across, like, all of the animals except a cow, and then I eventually came across one in the night of day 173 and did everything in my power to protect it. Like, nothing was going to kill this cow. My life depended on it. Simple. Cow in boat, milk in bucket. We'd done it. Day 174, I brought the cow back to the island, and I made a grave mistake. Look at this. Look, I all my chickens ran free because I opened the gate. I wasn't thinking. And now I have an island infested with chickens. These little feathered critters. It was time.
I headed to mainland, into my strip mine, to then trap the wither there. I didn't want him getting out and destroying my survival island. I mined and mined for days, making an accessible route ready to fight the wither. It was an excessive amount of mining, but I had to ensure that there was no dead ends and I had a fully accessible route. I made my way back, organized my inventory, started to place the wither skeletons, ate a golden apple, and summoned the beast. The undead monster was not pleased and he released a devastating blast, destroying all of the debris around him. I used my strength 2 potion and fired as many arrows into the tail of the beast. It was doing great damage. The wither activated a shield which wouldn't allow my arrows to penetrate, so I decided to strike him with my sword. We done it! We killed the wither! No time to idle, I had to head back home as quickly as possible, but on my way out I came across a zombie pillager and two skeletons. Now I did try and save the pillager, but I just didn't have the potions or the resources. Well that was awfully dramatic. I made my way back very leisurely across the ocean to the survival island, organised my chests, constructed a beacon. Now I'm struggling for ideas here guys, so if you guys could comment below what you think I should do with this beacon and where I should build it, that'd be fantastic. Wow, another chapter in our incredible story. Thank you so much for watching. Our adventure will continue, but in the meantime, my name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. You have a great day. Peace out. Oceanologists have explored just 5% of our oceans. This is Deep Gurker reporting back to Fancy Tower. I'm approaching the target. This place is massive. I've never seen anything like this. I'm gonna make my way up. Uh, uh, gotta climb up through here. It's a no-go, Fancy Tower! It's a no-go! I'm going to attempt to survive 300 days in Hardcore Minecraft on my survival island. Our tale continues with me, the Coffee Fuel Genius. Let's go! What is going on everyone? It's your boy CFG, stranded once again on my survival island. Now if you guys haven't checked out the rest of the 100 days series, I definitely recommend it because you're missing out on some juicy, juicy stuff. Now as you know, in our last 100 days, we did pick up that elytra, so it was time to get off this survival island and go exploring. But first, I need to make a quick repair. Using the sticky phantom membrane, I fused the wings back together and had them fully repaired. So now it was time to head out and explore. I wonder what we'd find. I was hoping to find some civilization. I soared across miles and miles of green, beautiful trees, open fields, animals everywhere and then came across a mountain that was riddled with coal so I decided to take advantage of it because I didn't have much coal back on the survival island. After mining up the coal I decided to climb the snowy mountain for a better view when then something revealed itself just in the distance. It seemed like some sort of hut so I flew down. I couldn't believe it. This was Greg's brother, stationed here in a mountainside village to protect the people. It was incredible. I looked at all the chests and found diamonds, obsidian and plenty of food. This place was a real safe haven. I then spoke to one of the guys in a local tavern and he said I could stay the night. Wow. 
fresh-faced, bright-eyed, and well-rested, I was ready for another day on this hardcore journey. I decided to explore the rest of the village. After exploring the village, I had a genius idea. I thought if I bring back a lectern, I could then attain that Book of Mending to allow me to use my tools infinitely. I flew over land and overseas as quick as possible to make it back to my survival island. I then crafted a lectern to take back to the mountainside village. I also needed to repair my elytra because without that, well, we're in big trouble. Feeling extremely determined, I headed back to the mountainside village, lectern in hand, in an attempt to attain that enchanted book of mending. Now, with a couple of attempts, I did finally get there, and the villager rewarded me with the special book. I couldn't waste any time, and I didn't want the villager running off with the book of mending, so I built a hut around him for efficiency. Uh, he did put up a bit of a protest, but he ain't going anywhere. I didn't have the Book of Mending just yet because I couldn't afford it, so I headed back home and got some rest because I'd have to do a lot of sugarcane growing. The next day, I farmed up as much sugarcane as I could to make paper. If I could sell that paper for emeralds, I'd be able to buy multiple books, but I just didn't have enough. So I just have to wait for the sugarcanes to grow. I didn't waste any time though, I decided while waiting for the sugarcanes to grow to head into my strip mine. Now, you probably already know this from my previous 100 days, but you know how much I love the sound of that twinkly, twinkly XP. I headed into my strip mine and found some more diamonds, which kind of bugged me a little bit because in my last 100 days, I spent so much time trying to find diamonds. And look, within minutes, I found some. Are you serious? Anyways, I continued mining in my strip mine and then stumbled across even more diamonds, but this time it was quite a large vein. Woohoo! There was no way I was mining all these diamonds without fortune on my pickaxe. The next day was here, so I decided to head back up onto my survival island to enchant my pickaxe. Now, I did use the diamonds I'd find to make another diamond pickaxe, which then I would hope to get fortune on. This story just gets better and better. I got fortune three straight away. I couldn't believe my luck. So I had to take advantage, head straight back into that strip mine and mine those diamonds. I mined those bad boys up, headed back through my strip mine to see how many I'd collected. 20 diamonds. Let's go! I then found a few more because, well, you just, once you get the bug, you can't stop mining. Another chapter in our 300 days journey. Wow, time to get some rest. Another day, another dollar. It looks like the sugar canes had finally grown, so I farmed them up and made some more paper. It looks like I finally had enough to make enough emeralds. I also farmed up all of my food because I knew I could sell this to a farmer in the mountainside village. I had plenty of wheat, plenty of paper, the chickens were well fed. Looks like the last step was just to get some rest ready for the next day because I was going to go get me some emeralds. Whilst on my way back to the mountainside village, I had stumbled across a pillager tower, but I was in no condition to take it on just yet, so I infiltrated through the top and scouted out who I could see. I blocked off the top using wood, and then decided to see if I could find any loot. Now the loot wasn't the best, but I know I'd have to come back here because there was no way I could let the mountainside village be eliminated. Now it was time to head back to that village, sell me those resources, and get that book of mending. I sold everything I could to the librarian and the farmer. I was making big money moves, but then I realized I'd forgotten books. Ugh. So I'd have to head out during the nighttime and get some leather. Now I got pretty lucky, but the horses didn't, and I finally attained myself some leather. Luckily, it wasn't too far from the village, so I quickly flew back and made those books. It was time, I finally attained two books of mending. It didn't take long for him to transfer the scriptures over. Wow, some serious progress made. The Ocean Monument was just around the corner. It was time to put the Book of Mending on my elytra, but first I'd have to make it home, and I didn't have much durability on my elytra, so I just crossed my fingers, hoped for the best, and tried to get to my outpost on the survival island. Yes, I finally made it with barely any durability left, so I decided to make the rest of the trip on the boat. 
I made it home and applied my book of mending to my elytra. Oh, I'm so, so relieved. Now it was time to get some XP. Using my silk touch pickaxe, I had picked up some quartz blocks, so I mined them up and got some XP. I then did a little bit of debating which pickaxe to apply my mending to, but in the end I decided to apply my mending to my Fortune 3 Efficiency 4 pickaxe. Let's go! The ocean monument glowed beneath the watery surface, but I was in no way yet prepared to take it on. So I decided to head to mainland, gather a bunch of resources, because one, I wanted to put mending to the test, and two, well, I just wanted a bunch of XP. So, I got the resources, and I built a mob farm. The mob farm was now complete, I just added a few finishing touches and then got to work killing the undead, collecting XP and all of the goodies that they dropped. But I wasn't finished yet, I needed to connect it to the island. I was really really happy with the final result, but the good mood didn't last long. I was ambushed by a gang of phantoms attacking me from all angles. I quickly restored the house that I had lost. You only get one life in hardcore Minecraft and I wasn't losing it today. I took on the creepers that had started swarming the island and then also the endermen that were spying on me. Even phantoms were continuing to fight me from behind. I just wanted this to end. The enderman's menacing face and dropped jaw continued to intimidate me, but I just continued that eye contact to keep him from attacking me. I kept striking and striking and eventually I'd taken out the enderman. The ambush was over, so now it was time to get back to work. My next step for extending my island was creating a potato farm with the potatoes I had taken from the pillagers. It was time to get to work. Wow, an extremely busy few days. I'd finished off the potato farm and the mob farm, a great extension to my survival island. I just ended the night by making some fireworks and getting some sleep. Progress was being made. I put the potato farm to good use and farmed up all the potatoes I could because I wanted to head back over to the mountainside village to get more books of mending. I didn't forget books this time. <laughs> I quickly located the farmer and then sold all of my potatoes for enough emeralds to buy enough books of mending for my armor. Look at that, some big progress. I headed home, took out the skeleton, and then continued to enchant my entire armor set with the book of mending. Also, by the way, you know that skeleton dropped a bow with infinity on it? D do you know how rare that is? That that's crazy. So I combined it with my current bow to get one of the best bows you could ask for. That's insane. But then this happened. A zombie villager riddled with disease had spawned on my island. I had to act quickly. I tried to get him back to the survival island, but I just couldn't do it. He was too enraged. So I built him a shelter, headed to mainland to grab some brown mushrooms because they are the vital ingredient to make the potion of weakness. I would combine this with a golden apple and hope that this would cure the villager of the zombie disease. Let's hope this works. The potion began to work. The zombie's skin crackled and I could see the infection letting off. I think this was going to work, so I just had to wait patiently in hopes that the infection would be eradicated. It worked! We had cured the villager of the zombie infection! I had to act quickly. I stuck him in a boat and headed back to my island to build him a small home in which I would then gift him with a lectern. And in return, he gifted me with a book of mending for just one emerald. 
And if you've caught on, I love the Book of Mending. I was so, so happy. So I applied mending to all my tools. The next step was to get full netherite armor, but first, a house for the villager. The house was complete. It was a little library for my very, very happy friend. Look at the smile on his face. I added a little bit of storage in there for him, stuck some iron doors on that bad boy, and took a look at the progress made so far. That ocean monument was just around the corner. But first, I wanted to head into the nether to get full netherite armor. So I made myself some gold boots and headed in. Heading into hell, you have to keep your wits about you at all times. I took on the foes that surrounded my spawn and then headed in to my nether strip mine. I was hungry for that ancient debris. I managed to pick myself up some nether quartz on the way, but nothing would stop me, so I got to work. The pickaxe wasn't working out, so I brought the big guns to town. The TNT explosions obliterated the depths of the nether. Not one piece of netherrack could stand a chance. I got to work scouting out for ancient debris that had been revealed by the explosions, but there just wasn't enough. So I headed back to get some more TNT because it was working great. I headed back and found some more ancient debris, then smothered the nether in more TNT. I was finding ancient debris left, right, and center. Now my only goal is to survive the trip back. I finally made it home. Shulker box filled with ancient debris. It was time to make that full set of netherite armor. Cover me in debris. Look at that. We made it. It was time for the next step. The pillager fight. I knew that pillager tower I found earlier wasn't going anywhere anytime soon, and I had to protect the mountainside village, so I got some rest ready for battle. It was time. I glided over the ocean monument and made my way to the pillager tower. The sun began to set, so I decided to set up camp and scout out for the night. Tomorrow wasn't going to be easy. Sunrise. It was time to take on the pillager tower. I spotted the leader. I couldn't believe it. This was too easy. Using my infinity bow, I assassinated the captain of the pillagers, gaining voluntary exile from the tower. I had saved the mountainside village. Wow, what an achievement. I headed back to my survival island as soon as possible. But I didn't head back alone. A group of pillager scouts had followed me home to my survival island. I had to do everything in my power to defend myself and the librarian. Another wave of soldiers had stormed my survival island. And with just one life in hardcore Minecraft, I had to calculate my moves intelligently. The pillagers had taken over my enchantment table tower. But with incredible accuracy, I took out the pillagers. But my bow shots weren't enough. An evoker had summoned vexes and even more pillagers to storm the island. I did my best striking them down with my sword and then had to locate the final enemy. I did it! I defended my survival island! The war was over but our story was far from. Our next step was to face the ocean monument. But before that, I collected a bunch of resources because you guessed it, it was time to build a place for the beacon.
The build was complete, a place to show off my beautiful beaming beacon. But it wasn't just to show off that trophy, it was a place I could use for plenty of storage because that tiny little storage shack wasn't enough. I decided to add a bit of lanterns, activate resistance on my beacon, and then took a little bit of a tour around what I had built. I filled it with chests, furnaces, and more, a place to store plenty of resources. Some serious progress made, but next was the Ocean Monument. Preparation for the Ocean Monument began, filling a bunch of buckets with milk to remove mining fatigue and then making a bunch of potions such as night vision and water breathing. But then I was thrown a little bit of a curveball because a zombie villager had appeared on my island. I treated him with the exact same cure and then I gained myself a villager. This guy was extremely happy so I moved him into his new home with the librarian. Look at us, two villagers on our island. It was time for the Ocean Monument. I made another diamond sword with sharpness and headed out. I was extremely nervous. Taking on an Ocean Monument is no cakewalk, especially on Hardcore Minecraft. I slurped up my potions and then headed in. I was hoping to make a hole in the side of the Ocean Monument so I could dodge the enemies that swam outside. It was time to head in. I took on these fishy foes that were protecting the Elder Guardians, hiding in the Ocean Temple. Depth Strider on my boots gave me a massive advantage to finding the first Elder Guardian. I took aim and fired my bow. The Elder Guardian's targeted laser beam stood no match against my agility. I striked it with my sword and then took aim with my bow, finally eliminating it. I then roamed the rest of the halls and found the next Elder Guardian. Feeling confident in my moves, I aggressively attacked the Elder Guardian, taking its life. I then roamed the maze-like corridors in the temple and found the next Elder Guardian, hiding up in the top of the temple. My power 4 bow was devastating, eliminating the Elder Guardian. I then collected some resources and headed out. I didn't want to run out of water breathing, so I'd come back soon. I'd done it. I'd taken on the Ocean Monument. I sorted out the things I collected into chests and got some rest. Another chapter in our 100 days journey. A villager, a beacon build, full netherite armor, mending on everything. Wow, some serious progress made in 300 days. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. Peace out. They say you can never truly Escape your fate. Uh, uh, where am I? What is this place? <gasps> oh, it's a vindicator. Okay, I've got to sneak past this guy. He can take me out just a couple of hits. Okay, he's not looking. Oh, I've got to move. <sighs> okay, around the corner. Okay, there's the exit. Okay, uh, I just got to run. I just got to get out of here. I made it. I'm free. <sighs> Wait, what's that sound? Wait, no, please! No! I'm going to attempt to survive 400 days on my survival island in Hardcore Minecraft, and I've got a bunch of things planned. So, as always, I'm the Coffee Fuel Genius, and let's get to work. First thing on my list is to explore the ocean monument that we conquered in the last video. Yes, I managed to take out the guardians, but I didn't get hold of that sponge and gold. So I made myself a water breathing potion, upgraded it with redstone, and then headed into the ocean monument. I jumped in my little boat and then sailed not too far away from the island, took a look at the gaps I made, slurped up my potion, and then I headed in. Upon entry, I was greeted by a bunch of enemies. Now, these guys are pretty easy to take on, but in groups, they can take you out, so I still have to play it kind of safe. I then used my Silk Touch pickaxe, chewed my way in through the sides, grabbed a bunch of sea lanterns because I just love them, and then I finally found the gold blocks, which made me super happy, and I got to work mining them up. Following that, with a little bit more exploring, I found the room full of sponge, and you just never know when you're going to need sponge. It's such a handy thing to have. So I dedicated some time to take all of the sponge in the Ocean Monument. I then chewed my way back up through the top and made my way back to my boat. Pretty successful, and goodbye Ocean Monument. I then headed back to my survival island, stored all of my stuff in chests, and then I just went to have a look around, you know, say hello to Sparky, check out the build, and then I headed up to my beacon to plan tomorrow's antics, which would be to get a full set of netherite tools. I'm surprised that I haven't even got them yet, so I got a good night's rest ready for tomorrow. 
The sun blazed high in the sky and Operation Netherite Tools began. I headed over to my mob farm to see how much gunpowder I had collected and well, to be honest, it wasn't enough to make enough TNT. I also didn't have enough sand either, so I headed over to a local island to get ready to mine up some sand. Yay! <laughs> it was as laborious as it sounds. Yes, I just dedicated an entire day to getting sand, but it was worth it. But then nighttime struck and things got dangerous. I was ambushed by a bunch of enemies. Zombies, creepers, I, I didn't know where to turn. And then I got a bit too overconfident and almost lost my life, down to just two hearts in Hardcore Minecraft. Can you imagine if we'd lost everything just two minutes in? Whew, that was close. I then flew back to my island and headed home. I then turned all my resources into TNT, and while although I had like 45, nearly 50, it just wasn't enough. I wanted to head into the nether, and in one foul sweep, collect that ancient debris and make a full set of netherite tools. So I had a little bit of work to go, but it would be worth it. I, I swear, j just stick with me here. Whilst I waited for more gunpowder to make TNT, I started on a side project, and it involved my villagers. Yes, I grabbed as many potatoes as possible because I wanted to start breeding them together. I wanted a community on my survival island. I'm finally gonna have more than two friends! I then made some more TNT and then creeped on the villagers to see if they'd make a baby. But I, I realized they couldn't make a baby because they didn't have enough beds. So I was a nice guy and donated my own bed, gave them a bunch of potatoes, and then finally, they made a little baby villager. Look how happy he is sleeping. I then made some more TNT TNT because I need that for the nether to get that nether right. Look at me being a multitasker and stuff. Before I head to the nether, I just wanted to work on my villager community just a little bit more. So I took me and my buddy here over to mainland. To create a community of villagers, I need a bunch more beds. So for that, I went on the hunt for sheep and oh my god, look how cute this little puppy dog is. And I eventually came across a bunch of sheep and got to work with my shears. After some serious wool collection, I then headed back to my survival island quite gracefully actually. Look at that landing. And then stored all of the beds that I had made. I wanted to save them because I was going to build a big extension for the villagers. But not without my full set of netherite tools. Don't you worry, I haven't forgotten about that. So without further ado, I headed to my mob farm, made a bunch more TNT, then I crafted some fire resistance potions, and then we headed in to the nether. Oh, the nether is still scary. I've got full netherite armor and an elytra, and this thing still is a massive pain in my butt crack. I took on the enemies that faced me as I flew around the nether, and then I got to collecting XP and nether quartz. Because, as we all know, collection of XP is my favorite thing. I then collected a bunch of glowstone because it's my favorite block. Don't ask. I then headed deeper into the nether, and then I wanted to make some space to, you guessed it, place some TNT. I placed rows and rows of this bad boy, lit it up, and watched the explosions happen. The first wave of TNT revealed a bunch of ancient debris. Let's go! I didn't think we'd be this lucky, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. I then continued blowing up the depths of the nether to find that ancient debris. We were on fire, baby. It was time to carry on collecting that ancient debris. I had collected a ton of ancient debris and thought now's the time to head back home. I quickly raced back home, taking on the enemies that faced me on my journey back. I raced back as quick as possible, no time to waste, into the nether portal, back home, so I could make those netherite ingots. I cooked up all of the ancient debris to make a total of 19 netherite scrap. Let's go! I think I had enough, so I headed back to my enchantment church to see if I had enough to make a full set of netherite tools. And well, you guessed it, I crafted a full set of netherite tools. We did it, ladies and gentlemen, finally. Now it was time to move on to our next mission. Whew, busy few days. After grabbing some sleepy sleepy time, it was time to continue with my villager community building. And for that, well, I'd need to build an extension. I also wanted to make a cartography table to take on that woodland mansion. But before we start doing that, it was time to grab resources. I grabbed stone, cobblestone, iron, and a bunch of wood. And then, you guessed it, made a start on building a villager community. <laughs> I made some finishing touches to the extension, added some stairs here and there to like finish off the roof, and then got to work on the inside placing a bunch of beds. I was really pleased with how the final build turned out, like my building skills are improving, no lie. 
I then grabbed some sugar canes, nibbled on some chicken, and then finally crafted the cartography table, the vital ingredient to getting that Woodland Mansion map. Once crafted and then placed, I then assigned the lucky little villager the role of being the cartographer. But we had a long way to go, yeah, I'd have to do a bunch of trades with this guy. So it was time to get to work, you know, get him potatoes, dealing with the villager, oh look, a baby, dealing with the villagers, you know, it's just a classic process. I grabbed a bunch of sugar canes and I just did a bunch of trades, non-stop, it was like back and forth for a good few days. I wanted to upgrade the guy so I could finally get the Woodland Mansion map. I quickly noticed that the villager gives you emeralds for glass panes, and I had a bunch of those left over from earlier, so I headed back to him, made a bunch of trades, upgraded him so he was finally a journeyman, and you guessed it, I collected the Woodland Explorer map. Oh, I was so excited! Hoo-hoo! <laughs> The excitement didn't last long. The cartographer had informed me that the Woodland Mansion was filled with enemies, enemies that could take my life and end this survival island legacy. I told Barry the Golem to look over the villagers while I was gone. I may never return. It's time to head into the- Okay, 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 so a baby villager escaped. Can you believe this? It was just about to get really dramatic, man. Oh, so I made a bow and managed to get the baby villager back into the community. Look at him, he's not even bothered that he ruined that whole hype. Anyway, back to business. It was time to head out and find the Woodland Mansion. During my expedition, I came across some beautiful sights. I had never really ventured this far from my survival island, and man, I don't regret it for a second. I saw so many things. It was amazing. I found this little black cat that I want to tame on my way home. Man, I was in my element. I searched for the Woodland Mansion for days and days. I even found some beautiful underwater areas that I mined up. This couldn't get any better. I traveled across biome after biome in hunt for that Woodland Mansion. After days and days, I finally located the Woodland Mansion. Oh, I was nervous. I set up camp for the night. Things were about to get serious. I waited for the sun to rise. It was time to head in. It could all end here, but nonetheless, I headed in. I found the entrance of the Woodland Mansion and tentatively entered through the doors. The maze-like corridors were intimidating and my first enemy struck, striking him down. The Vindicator stood no chance. Slash after slash, I took his life. It was time to head deeper into the Woodland Mansion. I stumbled across an abundance of rooms, taking on enemies with every corner. But then I was ambushed by a large group of zombies. They stood no chance. With my full netherite tools, I felt like a beast. I found this little secret room with a couple of name tags and a bunch of gunpowder in. It was time to carry on, taking on the vindicators and zombies with every corner I turned. I trawled through the halls, room after room, looking for loot, but I wasn't having much luck. I even found this sort of trophy room in hopes to find some lapis blocks. But once again, nothing. I guess I'd have to head upstairs to find more loot. I stumbled across their planning room and destroyed all of their plans. There was no way they were going to find me on this survival island. After taking down an evoker before he could summon vexes, I drank up my damage potion, looted more chests, and headed deeper into the mansion. But then things got even tougher. I stumbled across an evoker who summoned a bunch of vexes. They could take my life at any moment. <laughs> The Vexes had cornered me. It was time to eat some food, regenerate, and head back upstairs to take on the enemies. I finally took out the Evoker and the rest of the Vexes. I had to really think strategically about my next move. These guys could take you out in just a couple of hits in Hardcore Minecraft. I then took out another Evoker, and then I was chased by a Vindicator. He almost took my life, but through courage, I came out on top. I absolutely annihilated the Woodland Mansion. I stepped over the dead Vindicator's body and into this room. It seems they were planning an attack on my survival island. Thank God I got here in time. I carried on searching the halls, hunting for enemies and looking for secret passages. I had my suspicions about this face above the stairs, and man was I correct. I would located a secret room, but once again it didn't contain any loot, so I carried on hunting the halls. I found a couple of Vindicators, and instead of taking them out, I decided to capture them. I wanted to keep them here to punish them for what they did. They were going to capture my survival island and take out my villagers. And I wasn't allowing that. Whew, I was feeling pretty good. It was time to get out of here. Goodbye, Woodland Mansion. To be fair, you weren't even that bad. I've faced worse enemies. 
I had collected a total of one, two, three, four, five totems of undying. Pair that with the ones I've got at home. I've got a ton, man. I was feeling really good. It was time to head back home and tame that cat. Ah, look at me go. But then I kind of made a mistake. I did that thing where I get a little bit too confident. And then this, like, wizard managed to get me with poison. And for some reason, I was just panicking. Like, I don't know why. And then I tried to get milk from the cow. And then a couple of creepers came out of nowhere. And I almost died. And I was like, ah, I'm going to get out of here. Like, I don't want to lose everything. So I managed to fly out and make my way back home. You know what? Screw the cat. Leave him back there. I finally made it back home and got a good night's rest. Serious few days. The next day, the villagers were absolutely delighted to see my return. I'm back, boys! And I come back with a bow. Look at that. Look, I'm such a nice guy. I brought you a bow to make you feel like more of a community. Anyway, I grabbed a bunch of food for myself and then wanted to make a start on my beacon. Yes, I wanted to change all of the blocks to diamond blocks. I didn't expect to have it finished today, but I wanted to at least make a start. So, as you know me and as you know the channel, I love my strip mining. So I headed deep into the caves to search for diamond. Yes, I went diamond collecting. And with this... Also collect XP. I don't know why I'm doing the voice. I even came across some emeralds. Look at that. I haven't seen an emerald block in my whole journey. I then came across a bunch more diamonds. More diamonds. Diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Diamonds, 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 diamonds. I found so many diamonds, man. Like, loads. Like, I'm talking loads. I then headed up to mainland to look at how many diamonds I'd collected. And to be fair, I'd got about 14, 15 blocks worth, I reckon. Which, which, which is a solid start to the diamond beacon. I then wanted to go and explore the end city loot. Because I didn't really do that in my last 100 days. So I headed to the end grabbed a bunch of ender pearls and headed deep into the endless void. After flying around, I located the end city. Look how colossal this end city structure is. It's beautiful. I flew around the end city and chewed my way through the top to see if I could get some. And I was pretty disappointed with the first room. Just some golden iron, like, it was, it was lame. I then took on a bunch of shulkers, which were pretty tough. I took on the shulkers and managed to get myself a bunch of shells. These would allow me to make a bunch more shulker boxes. I then got into a situation where I just started floating and I thought my life would end here. Look, I was just floating and floating and if I didn't kill this guy, I would, I like, feather falling's good, but it's not that good, you know? And then I managed to get myself in another situation where I was floating and it was just non-stop, like, almost death experiences in the end. Oh, Minecraft, just give me a break. <laughs> I then finally came across a room with some decent loot in. I managed to take the ender chest and the other chest stuff and then kill a bunch more shulkers. Pretty successful in my books. It was time to head back. Whilst on my way back to the portal, I decided that I'd try and find another end city to see if I could find one with a ship, but I didn't have much luck to be fair. So I decided to just head back and head home with chocolate from my last 100 days. Rest in peace, Chip. We haven't forgotten you, bro. I made it back home. But my little buddy didn't come with me. Oh well. I made a bunch of diamond blocks, got some rest, and then the next day got to work adding the diamond blocks to the beacon. It was a solid start, and I was hoping if I had enough days by the end, I could finish the beacon off. Look at that. Pretty neat. I then crafted a bunch of shulker boxes with the shells that I'd collected from the end. I, I made about five, six shulker boxes. Like, I'm pretty solid for storage now, I'm not gonna lie. I then crafted a cup. Wait, we have a cat now? I then crafted an ender chest, stuck it in the castle, then headed over to my villagers to plan my next steps. Yes, I wanted to make a bunch of paper trays, and for that, well, I'd have to make a sugarcane farm. So I collected a bunch of sugar canes, a bunch of resources, laid the ground for the area, and then got to work making the sugarcane farm. It was, it was pretty straightforward. Couple of hoppers here and there, bit of sand, bit of water, bit of sugarcane, couple of pistons, then some observers, a sprinkle of redstone, and then you just put some glass around it to make it look pretty. I had an abundance of like random blocks, so I used them to build the casing. Then I slapped a sign on the front, but I realized I could make more money through other trades. So I just thought I'm going to have to upgrade this sugarcane farm if I'm actually going to make some decent paper and decent emeralds. So I headed back over to the sugar farm, planned it all out in my head, and then got to work upgrading. <laughs> I'd built a three-tier sugarcane farm, which was pretty decent. It makes about a stack every couple days, which you can't argue with. This, with wheat, I'd be rolling in emeralds, man. I was feeling pretty good. 
even though it had been a short amount of time, I grabbed the sugar cane out of the chest anyway, then got to work trading with villagers. I also made a bunch of lecterns and gave all of the villagers random jobs. So I had a bunch of like sort of enchantments that I could add to my stuff. Pretty good progress. Look, whoa, you're all staring at me. What a solid few days, man. We'd accomplished quite a lot on this 400 days journey. As always, I'll see you in the next one. My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. Like and subscribe if you like the video. Have a great day. This is my survival island, and this is what it looks like after 400 days in hardcore mode. 500 days is a monumental chapter. We make some serious upgrades, including multiple farms, epic builds, and even a diamond beacon. But as you can see, the last 100 days took its toll on my tools and armor. So I'm going to head into the nether day one to grab some XP and put that mending to good use. I just had a complete brain fart and forgot how to jump. It's kind of embarrassing. I have like no fireworks left either. I had spent more than enough time in the nether and all of my tools were pretty much repaired. So I decided to head back and make some more fireworks. I had a look at my sugarcane farm and realized I may have sugarcane, but I have like zero gunpowder. So I headed underground to start collecting resources to construct a creeper farm. Now they're pretty simple to make, but being on an island, collecting resources is kind of difficult. Plus other things involved, but I need that gunpowder. So I headed underground and started getting to work as fast as possible possible. I started collecting- wait a minute. Much better. Now, let's get to work. Hey, diamonds, let's go. I spent the next few days collecting wood and all the other resources I needed, grabbed some sleep and then the next day got to work finally building the creeper farm. Yo, the view from up here is wild. Okay, so you throw down a couple of chests, cover them with hoppers, then smother them with campfires to kill the creepers, and then the next step is to create a tunnel system in which the creepers will fall down to their doom. Now that the foundations were finished, it was time to work on the inside of the farm. I used trapdoors and slabs to ensure nothing but creepers would spawn. We're done. I just used slabs on the roof to make sure nothing spawns, then jumped off and crossed my fingers that it would work. Oh my god, it's so ugly. Look at it. Uh, hopefully this thing works. Spent enough time building. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Thankfully, the creeper farm was working, so I decided to leave it for a few days, then check back and see how much gunpowder it had collected. And oh boy, were we in luck. Stacks and stacks of gunpowder. So you're probably wondering, why the obsession with fireworks? You have nowhere to be, Coffee. You can chill out on your island. Well, you're wrong. Okay, I have plenty to do and only 100 days to do it. My next task is to build an XP farm. And the stronghold is very far away from here. So I needed the fireworks and a bunch of other materials which I'll need to construct the XP farm, which I now have. So let's head over and do that. <laughs> Yep, whilst I was flying over the ocean, I realized I was missing two of the crucial ingredients, name tags and wool. So I headed underground to find a mine shaft to get my hand on a name tag, which proved to be quite difficult. I trawled through the maze-like corridors in my hunt for the name tag, but I had literally no luck. The most I did was almost kill this little puppy dog. And whilst I was feeding him chicken, it turns out he's already been tamed. Where did you come from? I'm going insane. Still no sign of a name tag, and I was growing very impatient. Oh, look, it's that stuff I really need. Oh, they grow up way too fast. <laughs> Get it? Because he was small two seconds ago. This was like the biggest mineshaft ever, but after loads of time searching, I finally came across a name tag in a chest. Let's go! The next step was to get my hands on some wool, so I headed out with my elytra on my hunt for some sheep. I wasn't too far from my survival island, so I was hoping to squeeze these little dudes into a boat and head home. Oh, this is annoying. It's night time and I'm surrounded by mobs. Yeah, say hello to my little friend. The next morning was here, so the sheep and I crammed ourselves into this little boat and headed home ready for the next step. Ah, uh, nice and peaceful. I know, right? I made it back home, led my sheep to this poor excuse for a farm, took some wool, then put down a grass block in hopes that it would spread, grow grass, and he'd eat it and grow some more wool. But this didn't seem to be working. Slight change of plan, I decided to extend the farm just slightly and start working on an automatic wool farm. It's pretty straightforward. You make a small cage for the sheep and then dig underground, make some space to place storage, some rails, minecarts with hoppers, lead the sheep in, and then when it grows the wool, the shears in the dispenser will cut the wool and it'll all lead into the chest. I hope. Eh, 
any minute now. So the farm worked like a charm and I'd be collecting wool with peace of mind, but we weren't out of the water just yet. I need approximately two stacks of carpet to efficiently build the XP farm, and one automatic wool farm isn't going to be enough, so I decided to take the time to upgrade the farm for all the animals and add a bunch of sheep farms so I could get as much wool as fast as possible. However, I need a lot more dirt if I'm going to extend this survival island, so I grabbed myself a shulker box and headed out. Oh, I'm going to have to drain that ocean monument at some point, aren't I? Ugh. Operation Island Extension slash Farm starts day 421. So, let's get to work and collect some dirt. Wait a minute. Better. Okay, so it's been a couple days and I have stacks and stacks of dirt, but I'm not done yet. I want to collect way more just in case I'm going to need some to extend the island. Okay, so I'm all done. Time to grab the beacon, head home, extend my island and start working on that sheep farm. Okay, time to collect the finishing touches. Wait a minute. I haven't seen mobs on this island for a long time. <gasps> I forgot torches. I thought it would be cool if I take all my dogs and kill all the mobs on my island, and I'm not gonna lie, I felt pretty invincible. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, what the f I added some texture and walls to the extension, then got to work on my automatic wool farm. It was kind of annoying because I had phantoms attacking me most of the time, but once it was finished, it was time to head out and grab some more sheep to take home. Oh, I slipped. <gasps> uh, this took forever and a day to make it back, I swear. <laughs> That's so creepy. Round day 427, I finally had enough sheep for the farm, so I brightened up the place with a little bone mill and let the little guys in. Ugh, now the annoying part. Okay, so it's pretty simple. They climb the ladder, and then they should fall in. I know, you're probably saying, use stairs, coffee. Well, I want to use ladders, okay? Oh, it's working. It's working. Okay, 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 okay. Now I just need to... How is he not... What? How are you not fitting? You're just floating in midair. Um, mm, let me try... Ugh... Okay, round two. Simple. You're in. Now I just need to slide in there. Tap. Place. What? Are you... Are you, are you serious? Finally, after way too much time, I managed to get the sheep to fit. Is it gonna work? Is it, yes! Yes! Oh, let's go! Three hours later. Okay, so now all of the sheep are in their farms. Now we just have to wait. Day 513 and I was making some decent progress. I left the sheep farms for a couple days just so I had enough wool to make the XP farm. Day 432 and it looks like we have a ton of wool. The automatic wool farm was a complete success as well. I had unlimited amounts of this stuff. We're almost there. I just need to head into my enchantment table room and name my name tag. I'm not going to do anything like beg for subs or anything, you know. I grabbed some paper, gunpowder, made some fireworks, and headed out towards that stronghold. Whoa. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, let's get to work. I found a nice spot, headed down towards the void, grabbed a bunch of leaves, and started building outwards to start working on this XP farm. Okay, now I need to place a bunch of hoppers. So these will catch the ender pearls, and this little contraption will drop them so it doesn't lag my world. Now it's time to head up a couple of blocks and start working on the tunnel system in which the Enderman will drop. I also use a bunch of carpets so Endermen don't spawn. They'll only spawn on the top level. I need to build 13 of these rings, so I'll see you in a second. Now I just need to fill in the top level. This is where the Enderman will spawn. Okay, this is slightly terrifying. I'm placing down some trapdoors so the Enderman will fall, and then I can move on to the next step. Now I just need to build a small cage so I can place a rail, a minecart, and spawn an Endermite so it will draw the Enderman to the middle. Ow. Ow. An Endermite finally spawned, so I slapped a name tag on him, squeezed him into the minecart, then the next step was to dismantle the cage and then sit back and hope the farm works. Okay, I think it's working. Farm's all done, so I headed down. Tons and tons of Endermen were spawning and falling down the tunnel. This is dropping so many Ender Pearls. Yo, the amount of XP I'm getting for this is insane. I'm telling you, this did not get old. I spent days cutting down Endermen, watching as my XP bar filled and filled. Take this, you sons of bitches. Ooh, level 100. 
success. Time to head back. I hope this is gluten free, otherwise I'm going to drop one in my pants. Next day I headed over to my potato. Oh, grabbed a bunch of potatoes and baked them up ready for my next task, which you'll find out shortly. <laughs> but first, we'll need TNT. So I grabbed some gunpowder, headed to my storage castle to see if I had any sand left. And I had barely enough for just a stack. So it's time to head out and get my hands on some more sand. I got to work collecting sand. Wait a minute. Nah, I'm only joking. Uh, wait, wait, why am I drowning? Oh yeah, I'm underwater. <laughs> I collected a bunch of sand, so now I had finally enough for just about six stacks of TNT, which was perfect. I headed back home, grabbed a good night's rest, and then day 441, I headed into the nether. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here, so let me explain. I'm going to use the TNT I have to explode the nether to get some ancient debris to craft some more netherite armor. Then on my way home, I'll kill a bunch of wither skeletons, use their heads to form the wither, kill the wither, get a beacon star, craft a beacon, then build something really cool to store all of it back on the island. Oh, and the deflection. Let's go! I did get a teeny little bit distracted though because I noticed a bastion on my way, so I decided to head over and start exploring it. I cleared the area of mobs and then started exploring the chests and stumbled across some ancient debris. I couldn't believe it. Hey, yo, I hear a lot of piggies. I used my impeccable archery skills to eliminate the piglin, then continued exploring the bastion. Then I was feeling kind of chilly, so I took a dip in the lava. Definitely not an accident. I had no idea why I was so scared of bastions. I was flying through this thing like there was no tomorrow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, this was just too easy, bro. I wasn't stressing. <laughs> I had quite enough of the bastion now, so I decided to head out and try and find a good spot to start exploding the nether. And on my way, I did come across a fortress. I killed a couple of wither skeletons in there, but they didn't drop any skulls. And to be honest, this entire fortress seemed pretty dead. So I decided to ditch it and continue my hunt. Oh, wow. Okay, this is like the worst place to land. And I can't, I can't jump. I can't jump. Okay. Oh, I'm good. I found these guys making a five minute crafts video with string, broke it up and then convinced them to head out with me and kill some hoglins to get some meat. Thank you, you ugly pigs. <laughs> I departed from my new friends, then concentrated on the task at hand, exploding the nether. I grabbed all the TNT I had crafted and started placing it down, whipped out my flint and steel and watched the chaos. spent the next few days obliterating the nether. I was collecting ancient debris left, right, and center. I trudged through tons of netherrack to make space for the TNT. Ooh, 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 nice. I hadn't touched grass for a very, very long time, but it didn't matter because I was getting my hands on tons of ancient debris. I was feeling pretty lucky. Also, I thought I was completely uncovered in lava. A stupid mistake, but it seemed to be one that could end my life here and now. I couldn't believe it. Somehow I survived the entire ordeal and just sat there burning. Oof, that was a close one. With every explosion, more ancient debris was revealed, so I got to work collecting. One step closer to another set of armor. Again? Are you serious? In drenched by lava again? How do you make the same mistake twice, Coffee? Seriously, just quit, man. I was running out of TNT, so I was using it pretty chaotically to explode the nether. It was a fun few days, and I'm pretty sure I collected enough ancient debris to craft a full set of armor. By the end of the whole ordeal, I had found 37 pieces of ancient debris. Pretty good. On my way home, I stumbled across the biggest fortress ever. Time to grab those wither skeleton heads. I headed in James Bond style. Nothing could- oh. All right, okay. I got to work killing wither skeletons, but then things got pretty intense, so I decided to take a breather, head out, and then head straight back in. I was ready to fight. This right here is why totems exist. A fatal mistake, but I was resurrected by the totem. I continued my task at hand, taking out wither skeletons, and I finally got my hands on one wither skull. Oh my goodness, look how many wither skeletons have spawned in this one area. Sorry to break up the party, boys. The second with a skeleton head and the third with a skeleton head. Time to get out of here and head back home. Oh, it was nice to be back on the island. Three with a skeleton heads. Let's go. Okay, I gotta pick these back up now. I grabbed myself another totem, then got to work collecting resources. I grabbed a bunch of wood and stone, and don't forget the resources left over by this monstrosity. I then got started on that cool build I mentioned earlier, but then I ran into a bit of a problem. I'm gonna have to try and drain this thing. I grabbed a bunch of sponges and then started placing them down. Okay, I'm definitely doing this wrong because it is not draining the water. Come on. Hey, you're a SpongeBob. Come on. Do your job, bro. I decided to just fill it in with stone. Ooh, now that is very satisfying. Let's get to work. The build 
was complete. I left space for the netherite armor and of course the giant diamond beacon and then added some finishing touches. And then whilst the ancient debris was cooking up, I decided to check in on the villagers. Well, it seems everybody's uh, pretty happy with the current uh, situation. <laughs> Day 453, lightning struck and a bunch of these guys turned up in civil war. I didn't even have to do a thing. They just killed each other. Then I snuck in and grabbed a horse of my own, which is quite a flex. I've always wanted one of these things, so I stored them inside the castle. I made a bunch of netherite ingots and then headed inside the castle. Ow. But I wasn't going to make the netherite armor just yet. I wanted to finish off the diamond beacon. Now, I did have a little bit of a head start, but I had a long way to go. So I headed into the end and used the XP to repair all of my items. Now, I just had to grab myself a shulker box and lay the foundations for the diamonds I'm going to collect. Let's go. Wait a minute. Hey, yo, I recognize them. I built a small enclosure for the turtle. Oops. All right, time to head underground, start getting my hands on those diamonds. Should be pretty straightforward. I excessively strip mine through Deep Slate and it took forever. Hey, yo, what is, what is this? I continued mining until I finally came across a cave. All right, I don't really know what to do here. Oh, is that a baby zombie? That's a baby zombie. Okay, I'm gonna head down and take him out. Okay, one down. Oh, and another one. All right, you little fills of killers. Excuse me, Mr. Renderman, have you seen any uh, diamonds around here? No? Okay, so... Oh, there it is. The first one. All right, come to Pappy. And you as well. I don't think you're getting away. With the power of transition, I will eliminate you both. I told you, no one stands between me and Premiere Pro. I was making good progress. I was exploring caves, finding diamonds here and there, and then I just concentrated on strip mining up and down levels in my hunt for diamonds. <laughs> yo, what? <laughs> what is that? Hey, yo, check out my speed bridging skills. Do I still got it? Not really. Okay. Oh. It was day 458 and I was still mining for diamonds. I've seen like five mobs in this entire mining trip. Like, have they all just disappeared? Ah! Of course the diamond's on the other side of the pit of lava. I was making good progress. Okay, I've never, ever, ever seen this in my entire life. I decided to head out of the caves and back to strip mining. And when I tell you, it was the best thing I did. Because I was finding diamonds left, right, and center. Listen to that beautiful twinkle. Oh, it just never gets old, man. I even found some diamonds underwater, which were tricky to get to, but I got there in the end. All right, let's see where we are. All right, couple of stacks, but we still got a long way to go before we can get that beacon. Time to ramp up the speed. Jesus Christ. I had been mining for hours and hours and hours. I only needed a handful of diamonds left. This was it. The final diamond. I'm pretty sure I can build a diamond beacon now. Let me check. Oh, look at that. Like a full shulker of stacks of diamonds. The best thing ever. I headed up top as quickly as I could. Hey, yo, I'm pretty sure that chicken's been there since, like, the first hundred days. It was good to be home. I had spent days and days and days getting all those diamonds. So after a good night's rest, I headed up to the top of the castle and started crafting the full diamond beacon. I was in awe. This thing looked amazing and was a perfect symbol for the amount of hard work I'd put in to finish off the build. But I still had to get a beacon. And for that, I'd have to go and kill the wither. So I grabbed myself some glowstone, nether wall, and began making potions of strength so I could take on the wither. I made three strength, two potions, and then the next day headed underground to begin setting up the fight for the wither. Day 490, and this seemed like a pretty good spot, so I turned my shaders on, placed the wither heads down, and then began the battle. All right, you big ugly three-headed beast, let's see what you're made of. I started driving bow shots into the base of the wither. Ooh, you do look good with shaders on, I'm not gonna lie, but still, I'm gonna have to take you down. I continued driving bow shots, but then the wither became invincible, so I had to use my sword to do some finishing strikes, and then finally I defeated him. Whew. You know what? That was pretty easy. I said pretty easy. I said pretty easy. Why? <laughs> I don't know why I said pretty easy so much. Oh, no, wait a minute. I think I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm actually lost in my own strip mine. <laughs> I headed back home and crafted the beacon and then placed it down on that mountain of diamonds. The 
beam burn through cloud and then I placed a diamond in and activated regeneration and resistance. Woohoo! One of our goals completed, a full diamond beacon. Now it was time to craft that other netherite armor and put some of the best enchantments we can get on it. So I headed over to my enchantment church and then started enchanting all of my items. I spent a good couple days doing this and I ended up with protection 4 on pretty much the whole set. This would be perfect backup armor in case the one I'm wearing breaks. Alright, another goal completed. I dedicated the next few days to just finishing touches. I tidied up the old beacon and then placed the remaining diamonds I had. I then started working on touching up my island by building a wall around the entire perimeter. This way it would keep my friends from escaping and mobs from getting in. It was a pretty much a win-win situation. I cannot believe the progress I made in just a handful of days. It was time to get a good night's rest. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the? Dude, get out of my bed, bro. I have no idea how you escaped. I'll deal with you later. Before my time was up, I did want to build some sort of boat or a ship or something in the ocean. So I decided to get to work building a small, comfortable, humble little boat that I could do a bunch of fishing on. All right, the boat is finished. I just want to hop up here and I just want to finish off the chimney. So it looks like the boat has some sort of engine. I don't know. <laughs> With the boat completed, I whipped out my fishing rod and just spent the whole day fishing. I then got a good night's sleep. And then the next day, I wanted to expand my island just slightly. You know, I think I'll turn this into some sort of zen garden in the next hundred days. Whilst placing the dirt back in the chest, I noticed I had a bunch of name tags. So, you guys can comment below what you think I should name some of the animals. I mean, you should name this horse, name this puppy dog, that chicken, this sheep, anything you want. So much accomplished. Extra netherite armor, a gunpowder farm, a fully completed diamond beacon, an XP farm, and a ton more on my island. It's hard to believe I started with just a small patch of dirt. They say your true survival instinct emerges when you face death. Well, I did just that when my parachute broke. CFG to actual. The wind's too strong. My parachute's gonna break. Ah, where am I? I've got to get out of here. I'm going to spend 100 days trapped on a Jurassic Island, surrounded by ferocious dinosaurs, new places to explore, a bunch of amazing mods, all with 10 incredible YouTubers. Let's see how much we can achieve. As always, our tale begins with me, the Coffee Fuel Genius. We start with day one, ambushed by a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yo, a T-Rex! Yo, Josh! Josh, run! Run! Get out of there! Go, 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 go! Josh, you okay? He bit my left nut off. <laughs> Alright, boys, start punching trees. We gotta build. We collected as much wood as fast as possible before the T-Rex could get hold of us. I then had enough wood to finally make a crafting table and make some wooden tools. But we weren't safe yet. Yo! Yo, there's a zombie literally on me. I'm, tr I'm trying to get some stone. With Josh's help, I made a sword. <laughs> nice. Shredded. Guys, I'm on two hearts. Oh, another one, another one. Watch out. Yo, another one, another one. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, oh. <laughs> I knew I had to act quickly, so I grabbed as much cobblestone as possible. I only had enough time to make the pickaxe, though, because we were ambushed by a tiny little skelly. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> We gotta block the entrance, dude. We managed to capture the cave and collect some more resources. This was gonna be an intense journey. I made a full set of stone tools and then we all gave each other resources. Yo! It's our first trophy. That is sick. Where did you find that? Our first trophy collected on this Jurassic journey. This was gonna be fun. After an intense first day, we had to keep moving. The gang and I got to resource collecting and having a lot of fun while we were doing it. It was time to plan for the next day. Day two was here and things weren't getting any easier. Rest in peace, Saw. We lost Sword, but he'd be back later, don't you worry. <laughs> I headed into the cave to cook some food and then Josh gave me a treat. Dude, you're, you're a coffee field genius. Here's some coffee. Beans. Yo! Got you, bro. You've literally made my day. We then headed out. Yeah. Look at a dino. 
Whoa. The spine is so Yo. Much right there, bro. These things blew my mind. Look how beautiful they are. They're massive. Oh man, I can't wait to see the different types of dinos on this journey. I then overheard Sirid screaming, so I went to check out what was going on. Yo, Sirid, what's good? Oh my god. Yo, um, I'm on half a heart, but I just went on a mission. I just killed like a thousand zebras, and now I have a bunch of food. Oh, what? Yes. Yeah, and then and then a T-Rex came in and finished the job for me, so I ran away. Dang. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Sirid came in clutch with the food, and now we all had enough food to keep going for a little while. Big progress made. I stored my food, and then Josh gave me the coolest thing. <laughs> Here's CSG. Are these the new Yeezys? <laughs> Kanye got nothing on my new Jeez. bones. Yeah, check out our bone boots. What's going on, yo? Check out these. Bone boots? Oh, yeah, oh, bone boots. Yeah, I have bone boots. Hey. Oh, oh. After appreciating the shoes, we then shared food among us, and I kind of wrongfully accused Sirid of stealing my food. Where did, they, where did they go? I literally just chucked two at you. Got it. Here's two. All right. Oh. oh, I see. I see where this is gonna. I see what's happening here. Huh? Huh? First of all, I'm the one that got all the meat, so I don't want to hear it. Also, I already had six, and I just gave him two more. Anyway, let's go on a mission to kill some dinosaurs, huh? What do you say? Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's go, guys. And so we headed out hunting for dinosaurs. The only way to kill these guys, well, was to do it in a team. And so we did just that. Let's go. Let's go. Kill the sticker! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! Oh Let's go! Yeah, we finally did it, but we weren't ready to take on the T Rex just yet. We then headed back and made some beds and got a good night's rest. There was so much to come on this Jurassic journey. We headed out to train up our fighting skills ready for the T-Rex, but the weather was insane. Oh, the wind is picking up. The horrific weather conditions were just too much to deal with, so we fought off enemies and then made our way underground. During the night time, I mined a bunch of resources, including fossil and copper, which is perfect for guns. A new day. Dude, it's so much nice when it's peaceful. The morning was here, but Sira didn't seem to be in the best of moods, you know, so I just asked him how he was. I heard you talking about birds and singing, and it made me start thinking about life a little bit. Yeah, man. Oh. It, does this mo can I hug in this mod? No, but you can kiss. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to cheer Sirid up, so we came up with the idea of building a zoo and a town with all of us to live in. Adam then supplied the goods a bunch of food, and we'd need it for the next fight. We were ambushed by the undead. Using my iron sword, I swiped and slashed at the undead, taking their lives. After battling the undead, we headed deeper into the island to see what we could find. We stumbled across a small structure hidden away in the woodlands, filled with loot, gold and plenty of food, all the things we need for this journey. We headed back home and discovered our friends had brought back the coolest stuff ever. Then this happened. Josh had made a secret room. Let's keep it secret. Let's keep it secret. It allowed us to spy on the rest of the gang. This was the coolest thing ever. For about five <laughs> seconds. What? Wait, keep it secret. Keep it secret. Dude, I saw I saw this earlier. Wait, 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 I didn't know what it was. Okay, this is gonna This has gone so wrong. After all the fun, we came back to tell the guys the idea of building a town on the island, and everyone was on board. A devastating hurricane ripped leaves from trees and almost pulled us away from protection. How can you see through the rain? Oh no 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 Yo, what's up, JPEG? What is good? Come on, bro. We got a lot of work to do. Once the storm had passed, we began planning for our Jurassic Town. Yes, job delegation was underway, and my job was to build a wall around the perimeter to protect us. I made a chest, stored my belongings, made some pickaxes, and headed into the caves, protecting each other all the way. Help! I 
gonna die. We were on each other's backs all the time, collecting resources and protecting each other from the evil foes that lied ahead. Yo, behind you, Sirid. Sirid, behind you. Behind you, Sirid. <laughs> Sheesh. We had some close calls, but teamwork made us unstoppable. I also wanted to craft a weather deflector to stop the hurricanes from wrecking the place. And then I found some diamonds. Ah, my favorite thing in the whole wide world. I was ecstatic. I made a diamond pickaxe for myself and then a diamond sword for Sirid. Big progress was underway. We made our way back and started smelting all the stone for the wall. Look at us go. I also finally crafted a weather deflector. This would deter the horrific storms. I planted it where we would build our town. I wanted to ensure our hard work wouldn't be ruined by a hurricane, but then Josh had a genius idea. <gasps> I got a genius idea. We worked out if you put wool in the analyzer, it distributes you string. And with string, well, I finally made a whip. A crucial tool. Siri, look. Nice. String me down. You got one. Boop, boop, you go. boop. The whip allowed us to tame our own pet dino. Like, how can we be on a Jurassic Island and not have pet dinosaurs? That's like the coolest thing ever. So I headed out into open fields with Josh and came across this beautiful dino. I wanted to tame this bad boy, but this happened. Whoa! He stepped on me, bro. No, he got me too. This thing crushed Josh and I, so we headed back. But it was a challenge. He's coming after me. No, I did nothing wrong, dude. I just want my stuff. I finally managed to get my stuff back, but then Josh's life was taken again. Oh, this God. thing was on a rampage. And then I came across this little dino. I snuck up on him, and the moment was right. <gasps> Let's go! I finally did it! I tamed my own dino, and I named him Mohawk. Woohoo! Come here, Mo. Little Mohawk. I headed back with Hawk to impress my friends, and then crucial planning began. Yes, I made sure my dino was secure by building a fence around him, and then started working on the crucial thing that we need before we can build the town. Yep, you guessed it. It was time to build the wall. perimeter was complete and it looked incredible. This would protect us from all of the dinos. It's not always sunshine and rainbows when there's 10 of you trying to survive in such a small space. Yes, there was a bit of a dispute between Sirid and Swidge. I didn't really want to get too involved, but Sirid decided to insult Swidge's building. Don't you ever disrespect my builds. <laughs> After the dispute, me and Switch headed out because we wanted to craft one of the essentials that we'd need to continue our journey. <gasps> Do Bro! Oh. Yeah, I made a grappling hook. Look how cool this thing is. I was having too much fun. Hey, you good? <laughs> this made us extremely versatile. The next day, I grabbed some food and headed into the caves. Yep, you know me. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that I love my cave exploring. It is one of my most favorite things to do. I even made some ender pearls from the ore, and the grappling hook came in clutch. I was having too much fun, man. But when I returned, something was brewing. I don't know what it was, and I'm sure I'd find out. I was curious. But in the meantime, I grabbed Hawk and headed out to explore, and I found a lava pit and a water pool. And, well, I had to do it. So if you guys don't know, I can make obsidian armor. Look how cool this looks. I made a full set of obsidian tools and armor. Woo! I then headed back, grabbed my friends Adrian's and Jpex, and went out exploring the jungle. And we saw these amazing dinos, and then headed back to the cave to grab all of our resources. We even explored the nether for a short while, but to be fair, we didn't have much luck, so we didn't spend too much time there. And then we headed back and regrouped with my friends to plan our next steps. I decided that before we can even face the wither or the ender dragon, we'd have to be a lot more prepared. So I headed out and grabbed myself a bunch of building materials, more resources, food, leveled myself up. And then when I got back, you guessed it, I built myself a place to live. The main structure was complete, but I still needed to furnish the place. And I also added a few nice touches here and there. <gasps> That's so yeah. cool. Josh and I also constructed diamond hooks, which were insanely OP. It was time. It was time to head into the nether and find a fortress. Heat radiated from the sea of lava. It was time to head deeper into the nether.
Josh and I traversed miles of the nether, using our hooks to scale the walls and the ceiling. We continued the hunt for the fortress. After obliterating our enemies and trudging through Netherrack, we finally located the Nether Fortress. But the only thing that stood between us and our objective was the Sea of Lava. We only had one option, climb the ceiling. We couldn't quite believe we were making it. We were traversing over the Sea of Lava, but we were so high up. Oh. We tried not to look down and we powered through to try and get to that fortress using our diamond grappling hooks. Wait, use the glowstone. Genius. That's why your coffee feel genius, eh? <laughs> Let's go. We felt unstoppable. One wrong move and it could all end here. We finally made it to the nether fortress, so we headed in. We entered with extreme care, taking on wither skeletons as they faced us, and then we finally found a blaze spawner, a crucial ingredient to make those eyes of enders. I took them on face on. One had almost taken my life, but Josh's sniper saved my life. You just saved me, bro. We navigated the maze-like halls of the fortress, faced a variety of enemies, traversed back over the ceiling in the nether, over the sea of lava, and then found the nether portal. Whew, I finally made it back. Wow, stressful few days, but I spent some time on my house and I'm also working on a secret layer that I'm gonna work on. Look how cool this is. I then went out and grabbed a bunch of sand to make glass. I then enchanted all of my items. I then went strip mining for a bunch of materials and then I password protected all of my chests. Remember when I said something was afoot in the base and my friends were plotting something? Well, I think I was correct. I was feeling pretty uncertain, so I password protected everything. There was no way these guys were going to steal my stuff. I was going to be in control. Feeling a lot better about my security, I then made an ender hook. Look at this thing. I can literally teleport. This is insane. I then headed out with Josh and Sodi and used the golden lasso Yo, so I could grab animals. <gasps> What? Nice. Nice. Look how cool this thing is. This was massively beneficial for me because I could bring back a cow and then I could have more leather. Then things got intense. Surrounded by a horde of flaming zombies, I chopped them up with my obsidian sword and I was pretty impressed with the result. I had this feeling that the people in this base were planning something. Sarah, Josh or somebody. I, I just couldn't put my finger on it. So I got to work. Yes, I headed into my secret lair. And you guessed it, I crafted a security camera. I dotted these bad boys everywhere. In the trees, in my base, on my house. This way I could observe the entire base and everyone's doings. I collected as much intel as possible on all of my friends. I wanted to find out exactly what was going on in this base. But then Swidger located my camera, so I had to reveal what I was doing. What the heck? <laughs> Yo, keep it a secret. Um, okay, let me yeah, see. No, I got you. Swidge and I teamed up to find out who was scheming against us. I saw Siren and Critic suspiciously talking, but it actually confirmed my suspicion. We think it's Josh. I headed down to chat. Yeah. Do you think it's Josh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I, I came on and I think it's weird that it's just this random watchtower that nobody can get into. It's not just that. Come here. Follow me, follow me. Yes, I'm in. Chris took me to the secret base and revealed something. Look up into the ceiling. Oh. Alright, stop looking. Stop looking. Josh had the exact same plan as me. He was watching us on the security cameras and called us out. He'd been listening to everything. What are you guys doing? Yo! You saw nothing, yeah. right? What are you talking about me? I heard everything. You're you snooping on so us! Guilty. You're snooping on us! We regrouped. Dude, what is going on? Josh was definitely scheming. Yo, yo, what's Josh doing? You know, what's Josh doing down there? I caught Josh and JPEX planning something diabolical. <laughs> Yo, 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 what do you think you're getting up to in here, huh? Oh, yeah, what is this? Is this happening? Yo, ah. where, where are you going, Josh? Where are you, hey, where are you going, Josh? Where are you go? Josh is spying on all of us, and JPEX is, is colluding with no, somebody. No, 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 no. I don't know I... who. It actually turns out Josh was doing the same as me, looking to find out who was plotting against us, and it turned out to be oh, JPEX. Oh, 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 oh. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, get him, get him, get him. Oh, oh, oh. JPEX killed Switch. Oh, oh. Switch! Oh, oh. It's, it's gonna be me. me. We did everything in our power to kill JPEX to avenge Swidge's death. Yes, yeah. Let's go. Things were getting out of hand in the group, so it was time to create some order. I think we should elect our mayor. I agree. After everything I think we've seen is, uh, I vote for Siren. Yeah. We've had our differences, mm -hmm. but. We, I 100% agree. We need some order in this town. If we're all we going to survive in this together. Good leadership skills. 
And so there it was. Sirid was nominated as our mayor, and he distributed us jobs. Mine, well, mine was to build my own coffee shop. So I got to work to provide the people coffee. I built a humble and modest CFG cafe in our Jurassic Park. I provided all the juicy flavors and ground up the coffee beans. This was going to be insane. So I waited for my first customer. Woohoo! The mayor himself was outside. Want a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, sure. I'd love some. Uh, what coffee would you like? I would like the kind that makes me a genius. It seems like you know the recipe. All right. Me too. Leave me it with too. me. Let me let me see. Let me see. I'm going to put my beans in the grinder like this. So, uh, hopefully this works. I'm just going to tap the- Oh, okay. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so now I'm going to place this here. Look at <gasps> that. Let's go. I will certainly yeah. be back. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Did you Did you want a coffee, Ooh. Josh? Or? Yeah. It's a bit hot, I must say. I think I'm having a brain blast. <laughs> oh! oh! Oh, my gosh. What they don't know is that I put speed potions in it. Delicioso. Oh, my. It looks like the shop was a success. Everybody seemed pretty happy when I went asking around. And then this happened. Somebody laid a trap outside my house. Oh, you were the wither, but... Oh! What the... Josh? I'm in a bear Yo, trap, bro. Can you... Oh, no, can can you help me out? I got you. What? Who put that there, bro? That is crazy. Someone's among us. You literally can't trust I'm anybody scared. here. What? You can't, dude. You can't. But I got you. I mean, I saved you. Why would I save you? Thank you. you? Yeah, trust true. Me, bro. Thank you, bro. I reckon that was definitely Sirid. That's got to be Sirid. <laughs> See, it's got to be Sirid. I knew it was Josh from the start. It's time to get revenge. I headed into my secret lair and I made two revolvers. I am now the ultimate CFG cowboy. Look at me. I also crafted a full set of redstone armor to give me super speed. And then I very delicately sneaked around the base and planted a camera. It was time to learn Josh's patterns. So I sat for days observing his movements. What time he goes in, what time he goes out, when he goes to the toilet, when he's reading books. I wanted to know every move. I also snuck into Swidge's base and observed Josh building something. What is he building? Something technical. It still wasn't time to strike, so instead I headed out to grab myself a dino to distract Josh from what I was doing. <laughs> Dude! It's a Coffee Saurus Rex, bro. <laughs> Yo, that is awesome. Okay, so something unexpected happened. What is happening? We all got dragged into another dimension, completely out of the blue. We didn't know what to do. We were trapped in a whole different world. Whoa! A world consumed by darkness. We had to find our way out. We defended the vantage point against mobs. We were attacked by skeletons, endermen, zombies, everything you can imagine. We had to find a way out of here. Oh, it's a baby villager. Look at his forehead, it's huge. After battling our enemies, we headed deeper into this dimension, grabbing ourselves diamonds, and then we crafted warp scrolls and made it home. Now it was time to continue with my mission. I managed to get myself into Josh's base. I couldn't believe it. I had to act quickly. I speedily planted a camera and overheard a conversation between Josh and Sodi that would change the course of our future. Josh ran the panic alarm. All right, everyone. What the heck is going on? My information was correct. Josh had colluded with Sirid. We had to hand all of our weapons in. It was a new law. I couldn't believe it. Anything else? Any weapons, knives, pepper spray? Nah, I'm clean as a whistle. Nothing on me now. Right. Little did he know I had a spare pistol at home, but I couldn't do this alone. This whole martial law and handing in our guns. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Nope. So let's rob the place. Yeah, you're just handing your stuff. And then you come back to me. You tell me when you've done that. I'm going to lay okay. some traps on the door. Whip out the pistol. Bish, bash, bosh. Bob's your uncle. Sally's Ooh. your aunt. We're going to rob the place. Oh, I like the sound of that one. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in, baby. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Switch. Okay. Right. Operation robbery. Roll out. It was time. I laid my traps out and headed in. Everybody down! Go. Everybody down! Oh my gosh. This is a robbery. Switch, Adrian, you can get behind me. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Josh, hand me everything you got. <laughs> I want it all. I whoa! Whoa! Oh my, oh my god. Oh, Adrian. Guys! <gasps> Josh had trapped me! We can't have this. You're going to. Ah, this thing electrocutes you. I was in prison for days with just enough food to survive. I thought we were friends, and I am <gasps> disappointed. <laughs> However, Sirid actually had my back. He broke the window so I could place my bed, wait till the evening, and bam! Let's go! A genius move. I then grabbed my gear, and Adrian's broke me out. The yes! Let's go. Let's go. Yes, let's go, let's go! We're out of here! I grabbed my dino and tried to escape, but then I had second thoughts. Who's gonna make the coffee? 
Who's going to supply the coffee for the whole group? Oh, you're right. I was allowed back in, but then things got really heated. It is time for the battle of the town. Josh challenged Sira to the position of mayor, and they battled to the death. It was incredibly intense, but Josh succeeded in the end. No! 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 At least they fought with honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new mayor of Uga Shaka Kingdom. Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka, Uga Shaka. It was one thing after another. Adrian's attacked us with a T-Rex. But then everything set fire. Oh no! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's gone, guys. It's gone. I couldn't believe this is what it had all come to. There's only one way we can defeat the Ender Dragon. I explained that only with teamwork would we thrive together on this Jurassic Island. Let's go and kill the Ender Dragon. Josh provided all of the weapons and then we headed into where it all started to defeat the Wither. Kill it, you gotta get up there. This thing was extremely tough, but with teamwork and dedication, we took the Wither's life. A true success, but next step was the Ender Dragon, so I threw my Eye of Ender high into the sky. Over land and overseas, we traveled to the stronghold, deep underwater. Almost drowning, I made it to the stronghold and met the gang. We then headed into the portal. As a team, we were unstoppable. Using my sniper, I took out one of its healing crystals and then watched as the ender dragon ferociously swiped Perching. its wings. We collectively obliterated the dragon. Let's go! Let's go! A true success for our team. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at all of that XP. Wow. <sighs> Family. It's been one heck of a journey, and I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anyone else. We headed back. This egg symbolizes the incredible journey each and every single one of us has been through. Beautiful. Wow. 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 That's beautiful. And so our 100 days concluded. This Jurassic journey was incredible. Thank you so much for watching. I've been the Coffee Fuel Genius. Peace. I have told many stories. I have seen so many great things. But there is but only one adventure in which I truly became a hero. Oh no! Ah, there's an iceberg! It won't move! The wind's too strong! I'm gonna hit it! No! I somehow survived the storm, but then I found myself stranded on a tropical island. Surrounded by tropical friends and tropical enemies, it wasn't going to be an easy task. Surrounded by flesh-eating plantation, tribal warriors and airborne hostility, there was nowhere I was going to feel safe on this tropical island. While stranded on the island, I set myself three goals. My first goal is to set up base and construct a giant ship with storage to explore these tropical lands. Second goal, craft the grappling hook and get my hands on some top tier loot to take on the tribal leader. If I am successful, I will be able to free the island's people. And so there it is. I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days on a tropical island in hardcore Minecraft. Can I achieve my three goals? My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. Let's find out. Day one. We start our journey not too far from the giant tropical island. Let's get to work. Eesh, it's absolutely boiling out here. The ocean looks amazing. A tree. Great. And get some wood. And so I did just that. In the blazing heat, I punched the tree until I'd collected all of its wood. I then took a look around at the surroundings, then made my way to the center of the island to make a crafting table so I could craft all of the basic tools I would need. <laughs> I then heard a strange sound erupting from behind me, and it was a small axolotl asking me for help. His island had been taken over by tribal warriors, so I promised I would do it. I constructed a boat and headed out to seas. It's time to find the island. Oh no! A tiger shark! It was on my tail! This could destroy my boat in seconds! He was getting closer! He knocked me off! Oh no! I read that if you boot them on the nose, they'll swim away! 
but he was doing serious amounts of damage. It wasn't working. I'd have to swim away. Oh, I made it to the boat. I paddled away as quick as possible to get away from the tiger shark. Oh, I think I was clear. Whew, that was a close one. After escaping the shark, I knew I was close. The axolotls were bouncing in excitement, and what I found next was mesmerizing. Whoa, what is this place? Yo, this is incredible! We finally made it. This place was beautiful. I approached the shore and was met with a gathering of axolotls and their leader. You there, boy. We axo crew used to rule these lands. Now the enemy tribe have taken over. Will you help us? My mission was clear. Defeat the enemy tribe and help the axolotls claim back their land. It was time to get resource collecting. I grabbed wood, cocoa beans, and made myself a sword so I could head out and grab some food. But it wasn't an easy task. Flesh-eating plantation were vicious, and they could take my life at any second. I managed to get my hands on one more sheep, but the sun was setting, so I headed back. There was no escaping the island. The sharks were back. But then we were ambushed by a bunch of tribe members! Uh oh, I sprinted away as fast as possible, but they were chasing after me. They even started firing poison darts. Whew, I can't believe I dodged it. There was no way out. I had to head down. Oh no, he hit me. It could all end here. Ah, okay, I've blocked the entrance. Ah, I can hear them. It was time to set up a small base underground and cook up the food. This tropical island is extremely dangerous. I headed deep underground to grab myself some oars. I crafted a torch so I could finally see what I was doing and then carried on. It was time to make some serious progress. I headed even deeper and grabbed myself an assortment of ores, coal and iron. Just what I need. I finally crafted a stone pickaxe as well. After I was finished mining, I grabbed the furnace and headed up. Safety. I then spoke with the Axo tribe leader and just before he could tell me where the enemy tribe leader would be, I was ambushed! <laughs> Once again, I was being chased down by the enemy. I ran deep into the jungle, winding in and out of the trees to create some distance. This guy is fast. With nowhere left to turn, we had no choice but to face each other. Oh, we both hit each other. I had to sprint away. Oh, the flesh-eating plants. Oh God, this could be it. Wait, oh, the plant got him. Yes, it was time to get out of here. I began sprinting home as fast as possible, but then I quickly got lost in the jungle. Surrounded by palm trees, no idea where to go, I had to think strategically. But then the flesh-eating plantation was too much for me. They took too much damage. I had to be careful. Another one! I gotta get out of here. Oh no! Oh. After escaping the jungle, I found a cave. I guess I'd have to explore this later. In the meantime, I needed food and I needed it fast. So I killed a bunch of sheep, made myself a furnace and got cooking. Whew, those plants are deadly. I'm sure I'm glad to get some food. Ah, oh, more sharks. Just what I need. <laughs> I finally made it home, planted down my furnace, took a look at the beautiful view, then I made a bed, took a look at the dangerous mobs, and got a good night's rest. No time to mess around. The next morning, I made myself a stone spear, headed into the tropical ocean to grab myself some food. Look how big this spear is. I can finally take out these horrible plants. Yeah. Take that. I then headed into the ocean and started killing fish. It was the only liable food source I had on this tropical island, but then I was attacked by piranhas. It was havoc. There really is no place that's safe on this island. I tried to escape, but then ended up blinded by a jellyfish. I couldn't see a thing, and then finally when my vision came to, I saw the shore. I tried to get there as fast as possible. <gasps> Half a heart! Oh, oh, that was a close one. Thankfully, I have enough food to keep me going. Now it was time to smelt up my oars and start resource collection. I wanted to finally set up camp on this tropical island. So I headed out grabbing stone, wood, and sand. I then watched the sun go down. And yep, you guessed it, got to work building. Considering the limitations of the island, I was really happy with the final result. I then did a bit of underwater building to make it look a little bit more realistic, and then finished off adding a couple of campfires. Pretty good job if you ask me. I then started working on the interior, adding all the things I would need, and then planted a little chest, because this is where I could do a bunch of fishing. I then planned out the area in which I would build my giant ship, but I was nowhere near ready for that just yet. I would need a lot more resources, and I wanted to craft a bunch more weapons before I'm comfortable setting sail. 
Solid progress. I spent the night prepping for a gear hunt. Yes, I made an iron pickaxe, a chest plate, and a bunch of weapons so I could go out and finally get those resources. Let's head out. I would need a bunch of string to make the sails for my ship, so I killed a bunch of spiders. I then ran into a group of slimes, and I need plenty of slime to make the boat, so I got to work slaughtering these guys. You know, I've never really thought about it, but slimes are kind of cute. I wonder if these guys like coffee. Oh, I should go and make some coffee and bring it back to them. Yeah, good idea. Things turned south pretty quickly. I stumbled across a group of tribal members. Oh no, they spotted me. This was way too many to handle. Their poison darts and their speed. It was just too much for me to take on. I ran and ran down the hill, but they were getting closer and closer. Oh no, oh, I fell. It could all end here. This hill was extremely steep and with every fall, I lost hearts. Oh. I felt a little safer knowing that I lost the tribal crew. It was now time to continue exploring. I then discovered something incredible. A giant volcano. This thing was colossal. It was definitely the home of the tribal leader. I wasn't ready to fight him just yet, so I headed deep into the giant cave and started mining up ores. You know how much I love ore collection on this channel, so I got to work and finally found some diamonds. Yes, I mined up as much diamond as I could. I was feeling ecstatic. I needed these resources to craft the grappling hook so I could scale the volcano and fight the tribal leader. I guess my time here was done. It was now time to head home. I was feeling extremely vulnerable. The weather conditions were horrific and there was enemies everywhere I turned. I had to think very strategically about my next moves. I was in the heart of the tropical island and I was finding food and wool, just the things I need. I ran home as fast as possible. I didn't want to lose the wonderful loot that I had. Oh, we did it. The next day was beautiful and I finally crafted a full set of diamond armor. Just what I needed. Look at this. After an extremely busy few days, I finally grabbed some sleep and then got to work making progress on my giant ship. I finally made a sail. This was huge progress. I put it all in the chest. Hey, uh, mate, the tribe's come back. I'll warn the others. My little axolotl friend was right. An invasion. The tribe had hunted where I lived. It was time to face them. There was a lot, but I had no choice but to battle. I tried to create some space between myself and the tribal warriors, but their poison darts were just too much. I didn't know what to do. I was using my diamond spear to keep them at bay, but there was like 10, 15 of these guys. There was just so many. I would do everything in my power to stay alive. I wasn't losing this world now. The warriors' bone clubs were brutal in their damage. I had to sprint away. The diamond spear wasn't enough to take on these guys, so I switched to my dagger. I swiped and slashed at these guys, causing some serious damage, but it all got too much! I could lose my life! Their brutality forced me into shelter to recalculate my next tactics. I ate up some food, headed out, and started taking on the warriors. One, two, three! I finally slaughtered the group and defended my home, and in the process, managed to get my hands on their masks. This way I could disguise myself and head into the tribal leader's lair undercover. It was a close call, but with genius tactics, I managed to defend my home and fight off the ambush. The next day, I decided to build the docks for my giant ship. I just want to take the time to thank each and every single one of you watching my videos. Without you, I'd be alone on these adventures. With the construction of the docks finished, I finally crafted my ship. With plenty of storage, it was finally time to explore the seas surrounding this tropical island. Let's go! But before we leave, I made myself a diamond fishing rod and checked out the storage. I was so excited to finally explore the world. I got comfortable, opened up the sails, and enjoyed the fresh air. It was absolutely incredible. Whilst on my voyage, I came across a small structure, so I opened the sails slightly and headed over. But it was dangerous! This must be the work of the tribal leader. They were under some sort of hypnotic trance. They were attacking me. I took them out. The dogs in here seemed to be okay, but I would need to clear the area first before I could check on them. I spent all night taking on these hypnotized foes. No time to explore the caves. I waited until morning and broke through the small structure. It was Rex. He's a little scruffy, but 
I got you, buddy. I saved Rex's life. When my ship crashed, I never thought I'd see him again. I headed back to my boat. I headed out and got to work fishing. It was nice to enjoy the beautiful crisp air. Every adventurer deserves a little bit of time off. But not for long. While the sun was setting, I noticed a shipwreck beneath the water's surface, and all of its crew members were zombified. They must be guarding something crucial. I swam close to the shipwreck and had a look inside. A Neptinium shipment! No wonder these guys were trying to stop me from getting there. I finally made it home, headed in, and used the Neptinium to craft full Neptinian armor. Look at this! This gives me night vision and swiftness in the water. I felt unstoppable. And then this goose had something to say. Oh, okay. I then realized that I would need redstone if I was to construct the grappling hook. But before I go ahead and get that, I wanted to make an extension to my base. I added the last finishing touches to a small tower. Now, it wasn't the coolest thing you've ever seen, but it was to allow me to look over my area, just in case I get ambushed by the tribe again. Also, the view was kind of neat. Time to go cave exploring. I grabbed my Neptunian weaponry and headed in. If you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I really love ore collection. I do love to go mining in these caves. Also, they're really beautiful and great to look at, so... But then I let my guard down. I was set ablaze. I was on fire. I had to find a water source quickly. I ran as fast as possible. Oh, that was so close, but it wasn't over. Creepers left, right, and center. Almost lost my life. Once I got my bearings, I finally came across some redstone. Just what I needed. I collected it and then started making my way home. But then something crazy happened. Look at this. This colossal creature was incredible. It tossed and turned through the air. Its giant wings echoed throughout the caves with every swoosh. It dealt some extreme damage and then prepared to fire a giant poison blast towards me. This could be it. I could lose my life. I had to run away as fast as possible, but it was following me. I was encased in the creature's acidic throat gunk. I was losing health very quickly. One heart. The could be I'm gonna lose my life! Oh no! I ran away and managed to lose its tail. I guess I'd have to come back and fight this beast and not waste any time. I started sprinting home as fast as possible. I wanted to come back and slay this creature. I trudged through sand, made it home and finally crafted the grappling hook. This was a huge and crucial moment. I then crafted the Neptinium bow. It was time to find and slay the monster. I took a look at my base and then headed back into the caves. There was no way I could face the tribal leader knowing this beast would still be alive. So I faced him head on. Its screams were piercing and echoed throughout the cave. I used the water to get some height. I began firing my bow shots, dealing small damage. I then used a grappling hook to scale the ceiling of the cave. Feeling more versatile and more tactical than ever before, I carried on firing my bow shots. This giant bird was intelligent. It was maintaining its distance. Its piercing eyes and blade-like teeth were incredibly intimidating. I decided to head down using a water bucket. <gasps> yes, MLG Clutch. Now it's time to face this beast. I fired my bow shots over and over. Incredible, its thick scales deflected the arrow shot. I had to carry on, I had no choice. I headed for the water to try and get height again. It spun at me, tossing and turning. But then using the water, I managed to fire the bow shots, pushing it back into the lava. I had slayed this beast once and for all. We did it. I headed home once again and then improved my grappling hook. It was now time to head out and face the tribal leader. It was going to be a long journey, so I told Rex to stay put. It was too dangerous for him. Over mountains and into jungles, I finally stumbled across the volcano. Whew, I was nervous. I could see a soul lantern. He was definitely in there. I used my grappling hook to scale the rim of the cave. I had no choice but to be strategic. One wrong move and I could fall and lose everything.
I finally made it to the bottom and then made it towards the volcano and began scaling my way up. I was nervous for what was to come. I was worried that my tribal mask wouldn't be enough of a disguise to keep the tribal leader from knowing who I am. It was time to head in. Look at this place. Not as many tribal warriors as I thought. I guess I'd been doing a good job. It worked. He really had no idea that I was right in front of him. This was my moment. I had to strike. This was it. This was my moment to free the Axodotls and allow them to reclaim their island. The battle commenced. I began circling around, taking out the other tribe members and getting some height using my grappling hook. I did a little bit of damage, but he was using the sun to burn me. He was incredibly powerful and I had to act quickly. I couldn't stay in the same spot for more than a second or I'd be burned alive. Not many hearts left. I had to pick my bow shots crucially and dodge the tribal warriors. An opening. I fired my bow shots, but then he channeled the sun's energy and started firing at me. This guy was incredible, but then his minions started healing him up. I quickly changed my mask, granting me health boost, and then headed back in to fight the tribal leader once more. He was spawning more tribal warriors and then channeled the sun once again. This was going to be impossible. I had no choice but to fight the warriors that were healing him up. That way, it would leave him vulnerable. After taking out these conjurers of health, I headed back in to finally destroy the tribal leader. I did it. Wow. He dropped his mask. I picked it up to see what it would do, and it turns out I can deploy my own tribal army. These guys would help me. Look at this, he was healing me up. This would be incredible for 200 days. Look at this, I felt insane. With the leader eliminated once and for all, I headed back home to tell the leader of the Axo tribe the great news. He was just as thrilled as I was and thanked me for my hard work over the 100 days. Wow, what a journey we've been on. I can't believe I have my own tribal army. Wow, we achieved my three goals and freed the island. My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace. <laughs> Imagine being sent back in time to ancient Egypt with new places to explore, OP loot to find, and new enemies to take on. This is our most exciting journey yet. I will need to uncover the pyramid secrets and defeat the ancient pharaoh so I can get my hands on their powerful abilities. I also want to construct a giant desert base to stay protected from the barbarian warlord and his people. Can I complete my goals? My name's the Coffee Fuel Genius, and this is 100 Days in Ancient Egypt. Will I survive? Let's find out. Day one was pretty intense. Barbarians had already spotted me and started firing their arrows. I quickly dodged them and then tried to escape, but they were closing in. I thought I found a way out, but the drop was just too steep, and I didn't want to take any risks. I sprinted as fast as possible over the sandy dune until I came across a pack of hostile wolves. Now these guys were relentless. It started chasing me and I had no choice but to run. Its speed was impeccable and it almost caught up with me. But I quickly created distance using elevation climbing up the hill to hopefully lose this relentless wolf. It worked. The wolf couldn't make the jump, so I ran away. My legs were aching, and I underestimated just how difficult this journey might be, but I had to carry on. I chopped down some wood and then made a full set of basic tools. Whilst I was chopping down a tree, I was ambushed by a giant scorpion. He was colossal in size and did a crazy amount of damage. Two hearts. Oh no, I had to run. Barbarians. I had nowhere to turn. I needed food fast. I tried to get my hands on this rabbit. They were just so fast. One down, and then I got another one. Wait, it didn't even drop anything, now I just feel bad. A pack of hostile wolves and even more barbarians were closing in. I had to create some distance and use this time to grab some more food, and then started mining up limestone. I don't know why though, because I don't know what it does. <laughs> so in the meantime, I had to cozy up inside a cave. I lit it up with torches, put down a crafting table, and then I realized you use it like stone. So I made myself a furnace, put coal inside, and started cooking up all that rabbit and quail. Mmm, it's so succulent. 
Peace didn't last very long though, as I spotted a barbarian, and I made the worst cover you've ever seen, but somehow it worked. They didn't spot me. Oh, guess I'm here for the night. I grabbed some more limestone, then upgraded my wooden tools. I was surrounded by enemies, and they were just too powerful to take on. So while we wait, hit that subscribe button, because we're so close to 500k. Sunrise was here, and I decided to brave it and abandon my small cave. I ran out into the vast Egyptian world and did some exploring. I even came across a small mob spawner and grabbed some XP. But then I noticed more barbarians, so I went and grabbed myself some more food, wood, and then I found this small structure. I decided to mine it up because I might use the blocks later for a build. But then I was ambushed by bandits. Look at these guys. They wanted my valuables, but they weren't getting them. I decided to take them on, fighting them with my limestone sword. I tactically picked my hits, but then I still had the archer to take on. Feeling intimidated, I tried to escape, but then I started taking some serious damage. Oh no, two and a half hearts. I dodged the arrow shots, made a small obstruction, then ran away. I think I lost them. That was way too close, and with just two and a half hearts, I had to act quickly. So I spent my night killing camels for food. But it was getting too dangerous, so I headed underground to cook all of my food Gordon Ramsay style, then I headed down and did some strip mining. I then discovered this beautiful dark block that I would use for builds later, so I mined all of it up. I headed deeper and deeper until eventually I found a cave. I then came across some obsidian, which is pretty rare in Egypt, so I'll be coming back here later. And then after some exploring, I came across a stone guard. Now these guys look friendly, but after bashing his head over with a limestone sword, he did some serious damage. With just half a heart left, I thought it could end here. In hardcore Minecraft, I would lose everything. So I sprinted away as fast as possible, blocked myself in, checked out the area, and then I chewed on some camel to restore my health. I then headed back to take on this fiend. These guys are really durable and take a lot of damage, but with a lot of persistence, I finally took him out. I then came across some iron, mined some more and found redstone, but then the cave started shaking and a whole army of stone guards were coming my way. So I had no choice but to block them in and start returning to the surface. I'll come back here later. Once I made it to the top, I took a good look around and amongst burning foes, there was a deadwood forest. In this forest, there was wood for miles, so I took advantage and started chopping down trees left, right and center. Wood chopping didn't last very long though as I was ambushed by a captain. The barbarian warlord must have sent him to take me out, but I was just too quick and eventually took him down. But it wasn't over. I looked into the distance and spotted an assassin. I was marked for death. I quickly started building up to create elevation and distance between us both, but then something unimaginable happened. The assassin can climb! I started to panic. I didn't know what to do. I quickly built an area, but then I slipped and fell off! Oh no! Poison! And with just half a heart remaining, I had no choice but to turn and run. I sprinted as fast as I could, started building up and chewed on some food, and then... <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Once I no longer feared the assassin, I started to strike, dodging his hits and finally eliminating him. Can I not just get a break? I set up camp and then finally crafted myself a shield and battled barbarians most of the evening. But then the sun fell and the undead rose. I was fighting mummies, wraiths, and even bone storms most of the night. Then I spotted a village and decided to risk it. I ran as fast as I could through the undead. I was so scared I would lose my life here. I ran and I ran through camels, bone storms, and mummies in hopes that I would make it out alive. Wooden flooring replaced the cold sand on my feet. I finally made it to safety. I looked out and saw a ruin that I would explore the next day, but it was too risky now. The undead was surrounding me overnight. The cool sandy breeze brushed against my skin, but peace and tranquility didn't last long as the village was being attacked. More barbarians, and with just a limestone sword, I have to be tactical. Two hearts! Oh no, I'd have to use my shield. I dodged the arrows and finally eliminated them, saving the town from this ambush. I was awarded Lawbringer, and the villagers thanked me for saving them and allowed me to stay. The Egyptians traded in golden coins, and so I took to a small well and started cleaning off all the dirty coins I found earlier. But then this strange topless man started approaching me. No thank you. I then almost lost my life with just half a heart, and whilst I was escaping, I was still being followed by this weird dude. I then took out the rest of the ambush, then did some Emma collection, planted some seeds, and then an Egyptian started telling me about a nearby pyramid and also a ruin. This is where I would go tomorrow, so I got a good night's rest. 
Some great progress made, but I had to keep moving forward. I ate some food and headed towards the ruins. I explored all of their boxes. Oh, <gasps> Nebu torches. I can use these to summon the ancient pharaohs. I then tried to carry on raiding the ruin, but it got a little bit too much, so I headed back and waited for the other ambush to calm down. Whew, close one. I sorted out my inventory, got some sleep, and then headed back to the ruin the next day. I got a little bit more successful in the looting side of things, getting things like camel armor and saddles, but enemies were closing in, so I had to hurry up. I even came across a map, which allowed me to look around, but peace didn't last long. A bunch of barbarians were closing in. There was no way I was going to succeed in this barbarian battle, so I had to take a step back and think tactically about my next moves. I decided to close in, taking them out one by one, using the sword I found inside the ruin. The barbarians were infuriated and started rushing me, but I was just too smart and managed to take them all out. I even picked up one of their shields, which is super OP. I then finally took out the spawner, destroying one of the warlord's bases. I then collected a bunch more food and then took a look at the map so I could see what was around me. I grabbed the cooked food and then headed back to the village and got a good night's rest. I then spent the next day cleaning all of the jewelry I found. Once everything was gleaming, I realized I could actually wear this stuff, so I was looking pretty fresh in all this Egyptian jewelry. I then thought it was about time I tame a camel. So I used the dates I'd collected from earlier, fed the camel, and finally tamed a new best friend. I then placed the saddle and diamond desert armor upon my new friend and then took to looking at the map. It was time to head out. I could see an oasis at the top of the map, so that was the way I would go. I traveled through many different biomes and finally made it. Wow, this place is beautiful. This place was breathtakingly beautiful. I just couldn't believe my eyes. The villagers were running around and were happy to greet me. I've never felt more at home. This is the place I would stay. I then found a safe place to leave my camel, and then I stole this small human being's leather and also his bed. What? I'm trying to survive out here, okay? The sun kissed my skin and a new day was upon us. But first, a wonderful cool dip with the fish. I then headed out past the dead mirage into the sandy dunes and started limestone collection. Yep, I collected a bunch of resources because here is where I would build my base. I decided to do a bunch of terraforming. I went through a bunch of shovels, leveling out the land because this is where I would build my giant base. I planted a bunch of flax seeds and then checked on my camel, headed back to the area, planned it all out, and yep, you guessed it, got to work building! I reinforced all four walls with pathways and then started working on a small build on the inside. I decided to use a sort of orange crystal glass alongside the orange Egyptian wool. I then joined everything up with paths and then placed lanterns pretty much everywhere. Then I did the usual storage, beds, you know, all the typical stuff. We'd achieved so much in just a short amount of time, but the next step was to start working on a farm. <sighs> Good morning to me. Oh, I'm pretty. I'm happy with the progress so far. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I have a lot more to do, and the walls look pretty cool. And I mean, I have a lot planned. I kind of want to work on a farm area over here or something. Um, I made some uh, fertile soil. Let's see if this works. Let me just. Okay, so then all I need to do is just put more of this next to it, and I can hoe it down. Okay, sweet. Um, let me go make some more. Hang on. I was worried that it, if it wasn't near water, it wouldn't work. But let me just go make some more. Let's make a small area here. Now this should spread out everywhere. I'm hoping so. Anyway, if it doesn't, I'm gonna be upset. Oh. <laughs> this is annoying. I need to go and get some water. I need to see if I have enough iron. I think I used all my iron up for the lanterns. No iron. I just have cracked limestone. I'm actually like so tired of mining limestone. I cannot tell you. Um. Okay. So I, I really I need a bucket so I can then start moving the water over. Because as cool as this is, I kind of want to put the farm in my base as well. That means I'm gonna have to go and get some iron, which means mining trip. Woohoo! Before I went mining though, I grabbed some flax and turned it into linen. I then checked out how good my base was working, keeping the barbarians away from me. I then used the bolts of linen cloth to make full wandering armor, which was pretty good I needed to go mining with. You know what time it is. If you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I love my strip mining. I got to work collecting that crispy XP, then I came across this weird soily stuff, which actually turns out I can make my own stone guard army. That's awesome, so when I get back, I'll get to work on that. But in the meantime, it's time to carry on mining. Mining, mining, mining. It's my favorite thing. Wait a second. Diamonds! Oh, 
Diamonds are my most favorite thing in the world. There's nothing that tops diamonds in this game, I swear. Gimme, 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 gimme. I mined as many diamonds as I possibly could. I went searching and searching, and then I grabbed other things like coal, iron, redstone, all the usual things, and then I returned home. I then smelted up all of my iron, and then, yep, you guessed it, combined my diamond armor with my desert armor and made a full set of desert diamond armor. I said armor and desert so many times there that's <laughs> remember when i found that weird brown soily stuff well it turns out it's called canoe and with that that's how you craft the soldiers look at this my own stone guard guard this is just so cool i gave him my sword and he just patrolled around this is the most awesome thing ever i'm gonna have a bunch of these walking around my base i decided to do a little bit of a test with an ambush and this guy is relentless <laughs> I then used the iron I collected to craft a bucket and then grabbed some water from the oasis and got to work on my small farm area. I got some sleep and then jumped on my bed for a little while while I waited for all of the soil to fertilize. And then I headed down into my strip mine to grab some more of that really brown soily stuff so I could work on making an army of stone guards. I assembled my army stone guard by stone guard. They were patrolling and so I decided to take a little bit of time for myself. I worked on the farm, planted a bunch of emma because I wanted to work on an infinite food source. I used this device called a quern in which you take the emma and then you spin it. And I mean you really spin it. Like it took me a whole night. I then used the flour to make dough which then you cook up to make emma bread. And then I worked on stairs, some few additions to my base. I then crafted a bunch of this white ceramic tile stuff, which looked really great. So I started working on the bed. Oh no, I was ambushed by giant poisonous scorpions and they were relentless. Nothing was stopping them and they trapped me in a corner doing severe amounts of damage. I tried to escape. The barbarian must have known that my stone guards can't detect the scorpions, so I'd have to face them myself. I took out the first one and then did all I could to take out the second, losing heart by heart. I chewed up all of my bread and then faced the last one. That was just way too close, and in hardcore Minecraft, I can't be taking risks like that. I need to be more prepared for the next warlord's ambush. So I spoke with a local Egyptian, and they informed me of a crypt under this town which contained items in which I could use to summon a god. So I headed out, down into my strip mine, and I finally located the crypt. I had to clear the area of these ghoulish monsters. I cleared the area of these devilish crypt keepers and then took a look in the chest. It was amazing. It was filled with a bunch of items and even a necklace in which I could go invisible when I wear it. This was awesome. I decided to take all of the magma blocks, head home past my stone guard army and get some rest. In preparation of the summoning of the guard, I built a shrine with a burning flame that pointed towards the sun. I really hoped this would work in summoning the guard the Egyptian spoke of. I had to go out and grab some lava and assemble this small shrine. I lit it up, but it didn't seem to work straight away. I couldn't work out why it wasn't working. Was it my offerings? I even tried to damage myself in hopes that it would summon the guard. But then I realized I need to put a fire charge down. And with that, it was happening. It was working! Who dare challenge the god of the sun? You there, boy! You will rain fire upon these Egyptian cities. You will spread hope across these lands. For whoever lets himself be led by heart will never lose his way. Here, take this gift. Destroy the warlord. Success is on your path. Okay, slightly dramatic and kind of aggressive, but if we skip the Egyptian burning stuff, I'll take it. I walked up to the shrine and noticed that he'd left some kind of remnants of obsidian and, and scorched basalt. So I decided to just leave that there to burn and make a small display because I wasn't worthy of this gift just yet. I would need to be more prepared to take on the warlord. So I made a bunch more food and then grabbed myself a diamond shovel and decided to go on another mining trip with my vanishing necklace. I headed underground and found an Egyptian mine shaft. I took on the stone guards, then powered the goddess of Thelema's necklace and stayed well hidden from all of the foes. I then came across this strange ore. I mined it up and noticed it was called Nibu. Similar to the Nibu torches, I assumed it was to do with the summoning of pharaohs. So I grabbed as much as possible, headed home and started smelting it up. I broke it down into something called Nibu Drops, which then makes Nibu Ingots, which I combine with a furnace to make a God Forge, which is super shiny, by the way. I then realized that if I sacrifice my necklace, very sad I know, I can then make God Shards. And with God Shards, I can then make God Torches. 
Whew, that was a lot to explain, but with god torches I can summon whatever pharaoh I like, instead of a random one. So on the topic of pharaohs, I grabbed my camel, stuck some storage on him, and then headed out to try and find a pyramid so I could defeat one. Whilst travelling over sandy dunes, I just want to take the time to thank each and every single one of you for watching my videos. It means the world to me. I finally came across the pyramid. It took a little while to work out, but I realised I need Nibu torches to activate the doors. So with those, I opened up the pyramid, and the undead came flailing. They come running at me, but with the power of the sun, they burned alive. Okay, they're everywhere, they're everywhere, they're everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, break the spawners, break the spawners. Light these bad boys up. Oh, I don't have to waste my torches. He, he's broken. I took on the undead inside the pyramid and then did a lot of looting. I then found a way down deeper into the pyramid. Oh, it's like a maze. Ooh. Okay, what is that? What is that? <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Okay, there, there are traps. Oh, okay, you right-click them. It turns them off. There's another one. <laughs> I navigated the maze-like corridors while surrounded by the screeches of the undead. I must be getting close. Because all I can hear is zombies. Well, mummies. All I can hear is mummies. Yo, I'm not getting anywhere. Ah, This way? No, I'm just going to put the torch on my offhand. It's so much easier for it. Like, oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think I found a drop. Okay, I, I feel like we're getting close. Oh, not good. They give me the wither effect or something. Oh, there's like loads of different rooms. <gasps> oh, I found it. 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 Let's go. There is loot. I know that... Jeez. I had discovered the room in which I summoned the pharaoh. This was it. No, I'm gonna make myself like a mini... What? You can't even place blocks in here. The pharaoh was summoned, Pharaoh Yatamesh. I had to take him on with all my power, using my stone club. But he was relentless, breaking my shield in just a few hits. Drop him in there, drop him in there. Okay, okay, okay. I then used okay, the gift. Do? Don't let me down. Sparks and fire Ooh. emitted from my body. Ooh. I was pretty much invincible for a short time, but it didn't last very long, and the pharaoh started doing some serious damage. I managed to catch the pharaoh in an awkward position and start doing some damage with the dagger. But then he wiggled his way out, so I had no choice but to keep tactically running around uh, the pyramid go, 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 go. and attacking him from behind. Stealth became my best friend, and I was managing to get some serious shots on the pharaoh. And then with enough perseverance, I finally struck him down and destroyed him. Whew, that was a battle. He dropped a sort of hammer that a mummy was carrying. It was called Jeb's Might, and it did some extreme damage. The pyramid was shattered to pieces. I took a look around and even mined up the sarcophagus that the pharaoh was in. I'll build a shrine for this when I get home. I easily dug my way out of the pyramid and then killed the mobs outside with my new mighty hammer. I bet there are more weapons with abilities out there. I then ran past this camel stuck in a tree and then walked towards the village. I then found this small structure and mined the entire roof of it because I had an idea for a build. I then looted the entire village and then found my camel and headed back home. A serious few days. I made my way back to my base, and then now it was time to make some building improvements. Let's go! I'd finally finished the construction of the shrine, and I would use this sarcophagus as a storage for my weapons with special abilities. Pretty cool. A stone guard army patrolling a giant desert base. I was pretty proud of my progress, I won't lie. Day 71, I did a little bit of fishing because I wanted some me time. I then did some exploring, headed out with bones, and found this giraffe structure. I headed inside, but what was there to greet me wasn't so kind. It was Rex, but somehow he had been possessed by some kind of evil god. So I had to find a way to lure him out. I managed to get him out and then spam him with my dusty bones and finally bring him back. Finally, Sandy Boy. We then teamed up to then take on the Barbarians. Used my hammer's mighty strength and abilities to then take out the mobs, with some help of Rex also. I remembered I had some desert armor and a saddle at home, so it was time to head back. I looted the sarcophagus and then traveled over the oasis and over sandy dunes with Rex. We finally made it back and then I gifted one of my stone guards the role of captain. There you go, mate. Cool. I then put down an anvil and had a name tag spare, so I put the name tag on Rex, obviously, along with the desert armor. I can ride this thing, but then we were ambushed by barbarians. 
Now, I am aware I have said the word barbarian about 50 million times this video, but now I won't be saying it so much because my stone guards have now taken the lead on taking them out. Look at this. I just decided to watch the whole events unfold. These bandits and barbarians will never stand a chance. No one will ever succeed in taking over my base. This is incredible. My stone guard army is epic. It's time to take on the Warlord. So I grabbed Rex and then I grabbed a good night's rest and headed out on my hunt for the Warlord. I have to cover miles of land and I searched through tons of ruins in search for that bandit leader. Whilst looting the ruins, I came across some epic gear. I found Ra's Halo, which is an awesome looking helmet. I then killed the rest of the bandits covering this checkpoint and headed out covering more land. There were a ton of bandits near this ruin so I was hoping the warlord would be inside, but I got too overrun. I was surrounded and taking some serious damage. I had no choice but to run. It was too late to lose my life here. I searched for Rex, grabbed his saddle and got running. I then came across another ruin. It seemed huge. I was hoping this would be it. I took out the mob spawner and then the warlord's boss bar appeared, but no sign of him just yet. I took out bandits and looked around the area. I couldn't find him. I looted all of the chests and I was finding some extremely OP gear. Tefnut's rain, a bow with special abilities. I decided it was too risky to stay here. So I decided to grab Rex and head home. I would need a bunch more arrows and upgrade my gear if I was to fight the warlord. I made it back home, sorted out my inventory, grabbed some arrows and then grabbed some sleep. I then tested out this bow. Turns out, like rain, it multiplies with one arrow. This is going to be extremely useful when taking on the Warlord. I then headed back to the ruin. This was it. There he was. He was mighty. His armor thick steel. It was going to be a task. I started striking him with my mighty hammer. And then Rex started doing some damage. I created some distance and then headed back in. Firing bow shots. This warlord was fierce, and he managed to summon more bandits and barbarians. It got pretty overwhelming. I almost lost my life, so started heading out. It was time to strategize. I eyed up the area, thinking of ways to take out the warlord. First, I decided it's time to take out his friends. So I worked on taking out all of the archers, captains, and bandits surrounding him. Perseverance became a crucial part of defeating the Warlord. Myself and Rex did all we could to take him out, and with one final blow with just one and a half hearts, Rex saved my life. I then took out the final bandit. Oh, that was extremely intense. We did it! We defeated the Barbarian Warlord! I couldn't believe it! I continued to loot the ruins to see what the Barbarian was protecting, and yes, I found it, the rest of my armor set, and also some sort of staff, which allows me to teleport back home. This was amazing! I decided to take out the rest of the bandits, taking out the rest of the Warlord's army. And now it's time to head back. Wow, we did it! 100 days in ancient Egypt. Wait, oh, I left Rex. <laughs>